Good morning and welcome to the Steel Toe Morning Show. I'm Aaron, that's Johnny. Hey. Oh, if I look like shit, it's because I am shit. I uh, I woke up I woke up a little a little worn out today. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's April and I uh, going to the gym more often now. I don't know if it's not sleeping enough. I don't know what it is. But um, I have one of those mornings where, like, for the first 15, 20 minutes you get up. Just lagging? You, well, you try to make noises out of your mouth, and you get, like, the, the sound from the grudge. You just go, like, uh, you get that? Yeah, that's not cool. And, uh... I, April made me a nice uh, hot tea. I popped a throat lozenge, and uh, now my voice is a little better. We'll see. Uh, some people in the chat pointing out that uh, perhaps it's just called getting old. I don't. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't have that problem though, so I could. Uh, I can't. Well, then maybe I'm not. Maybe it's not. Getting maybe you're old. just a bitch. Maybe I'm just a piece of shit. Uh, it's all the CTE from the boxing already. Uh oh. Oh, no. Um, I hope not, but I do know a human head is not supposed to be punched repeatedly every week. Uh, so there is that. Oh. I mean, but does it get punched every week? Yeah, every Thursday. Wow. <laughs> That's masochism. Point. Every Thursday I'm getting punched. Well, I mean, I'm I'm giving other people CTE while they give it to I, me. I'm not saying you're not. I'm just, uh, cause I was just going to say how much... How much damage can you take in 52 seconds? Oh, no, it's much longer than that nowadays. Oh, okay. my goodness. Uh, stamina. People are asking for the likes. I like this. We've conditioned people. We've already people. got people going for it. Yeah, we've That's conditioned beautiful. people to hit the likes. We're, we're becoming real YouTubers now. We're conditioning people to hit the like button. And uh, let's. they, they want to get us to 100 uh, likes by 7 o'clock. I think we'll be able to do that. Uh, 100 by 7, 2 by 8, uh, 3 by 9, 4 by 10. That sounds, sounds reasonable. That sounds like a good climb. So uh, hit the like button. Although, if it's anything like YouTube's view counter, uh, it might be a little dicked today. Uh, YouTube's view counter is broken. What happened to YouTube's uh, view counter? People across YouTube... I was kind of panicking because we had the Jesse Lee Peterson interview go up yesterday. Yeah. And it did nothing. I don't mean like it did nothing like for our channel, like what we usually do versus what it's like I literally zero. Numbers. I'm saying it's YouTube went from it was climbing up like in the first few minutes, like 300, 400 views. And ever since it went down to 100 and stopped. So we lost like it's, views. We lost views and it's not counting new views. And then yesterday during the evening show, we had a particular amount of numbers at our peak that would usually indicate X amount of live views during the the show. The show. And it was 700 and has not moved since then. So we're having, there's like a weird, I don't know if YouTube's fixed the glitch or not, but we're not getting views for our Jesse Lee Peterson interview. Like Drew Zilla says, I see 156 and climbing. It's not, it, it can't be 156. That's impossible. It would be the worst performing video we've had since like we started if it was at 156. And it's just simply not that. I mean, it's not because, oh, our interview was so great, but it's a Jesse Lee Peterson associated thing. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be there. Uh, so that's that's kind of a strange deal. Uh, Skeezy says, is YouTube throttling the reach? No, no, no. Th this is like a platform wide thing. Like I... It's I, happening to everybody. I saw somebody. I saw Rich from uh, Review Tech talking about it uh, yesterday. Before I noticed that it happened, like before I noticed that it happened, Rich was already on. Rich it. was already like, "Hey, one of my videos just lost five thousand views as Inget is continuing to drop." And I'm like, "Uh oh, that's not good." But again, I just the whole the pre how do you lose views? I didn't know that was even possible. I didn't either. But then somebody mentioned. So then a bunch of people were uh were writing about it and they said uh that YouTube is now changing the way they look at shorts like they're now monetizing shorts for people so if you get shorts views it's now monetized and when they switched that over and started tracking that they might have fucked something up in the view counter uh oh that's what people's theory is i have no they idea they have been pushing the shorts a lot more 
I've noticed. Okay. Well, that, that could be part of the reason then. I have a lot of those coming through my feed usually. Either way, it does seem like it's getting fixed. People are saying it says the Jesse Lee Peterson uh, thing has over 500, uh, has over 400 views. But, uh, that, but uh, and again, and I don't mean to be like arrogant or anything, but it, it has more than that. See, on my analytics, it's still showing 118, and my analytics are usually higher than the, what the actual... The view count is always behind mm -hmm. on, when you see it on YouTube, and on my analytics, it's current. So there's a good chance I may have to re-upload that interview <laughs> and just have to put it up all over again. Uh, I'm not, I'm not really sure what the hell's going on, but I mean, some of us would think, you know, 480 views is just, you know, a respectable number that we aim for. Like I if mean, shit doesn't get over a thousand, uh, it's bad. Wow. Uh, if it gets, oh, if, if it gets between White one people and, problems, if, over here. <laughs> if it gets between one and 2000, I go, uh, maybe we don't cover that person again. Anything over 2000, I go, okay, that's solid. Great. Awesome. I'm just so humble over here. I'm like, anything over 20, I'm like, eh, respectable. <laughs> You're on your way. Well, you, you know. Uh, I a, also do little, it on two platforms. Yeah, it's a little yeah. different. Uh, Toastmaster says, I just went to your homepage, and it says 400. See, that's still a bummer, and I still don't think that's right. I went to the homepage. It said 300, and then it said, this is Sparta, and kick me in the balls. Oh, that's a really weird. I don't know why they do that. Uh, so, yeah, we got uh, a little bit of a YouTube, because you know what a, a statistics sack of shit i am mm -hmm. and so it already fucked our monday view count so like our monday view count was about one fourth of what it normally is mm -hmm. on a normal monday because youtube just decided you know fuck you and, and fuck everyone. counting views today it's weird because our morning our, the views our morning show from yesterday has this is how weird the, the view counter thing is with youtube the views that our morning show has is more than what YouTube says our total views for yesterday was. So that just doesn't seem possible. The, yeah, there's just a really weird thing going on. Uh, yeah, Truzilla asking if it's enough to get kicked into the pit. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, so if I go to, and I'm sorry that so many people don't care, but uh, if I look at our views for Monday, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's about... Three thirty five hundred less views than last week, but also it's less than what our evening and morning shows were combined yesterday. So there's something fucky uh, going on. Uh, Six string man says YouTube acting fucky. Nothing new. Well, it's it's new to me. God damn it, it's new to me. Well, last week Twitch was taking a shit on everybody. Was so. it? Uh, at least Thursday or Friday. I forget which. I think it was Thursday. It just kept dropping out on me weirdly. You know? Like, people are like, dude, your stream is down. And I'm like, no, everything's broadcasting here. Yeah. And then I go over there like, what the? Mm. That's odd. So you, so Twitch is acting weird. Did it, like, uh, did it, like, ban you without telling you why? No. Because that would be a weird thing for a platform to do. Yeah, but when would a platform ever do that? That's true. Only a, the most retarded platform on earth would ban someone from using their service uh, and then never tell them why and never give them back, give it back. Yeah, that's okay. I hear when Elon Musk buys it, it's gonna. I'm gonna be back in a Does month. Does he have money to buy that one now? I don't know. He's been losing a lot of. But everybody's been losing money. Like him, it's it's funny who the media like decides they're going to go after because they keep like going after Elon Musk, obviously because they don't like that he bought Twitter, mm -hmm. and they've been talking about how much money he's lost, and he's lost a record amount of money for. He's lost more money than any human in history because of the Tesla stocks and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, they never mentioned Jeff Bezos and what Amazon stock has been doing. Because it's, you know, only up, right? Like Amazon, how do you... Oh, no, it's... Get... Yeah, it's through the floor. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's tanking like everything else is tanking. But uh, Jeff Bezos isn't the biggest, dumbest piece of shit on planet Earth. That's reserved for Elon Musk, apparently. I don't know, man. When you fly into space in a cock rocket, I mean, yes, you're my hero, but but I mean... Don't they both have cock rockets, or does ju just Bezos's look like a cock? Bezos is the one that looks like a cock. I think uh, I think Musk's is mostly just like a, I don't know, they might be slightly dick-shaped. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hung Solo says, finally a day where Oz is talking. That's, well, I mean, I don't think we need to get that fucking mean. Jesus. Uh, six, six String Man. 
Uh, it says, gotta love seeing a comment show 40 replies to it and only being able to read two of them. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that would entail. Uh, Ash Fuller says, I'm banned from Twitter for saying Amaranth is a whore. She sells her body to make money. I don't see the lie. Well, aren't we all? Yeah. Aren't we all just a bunch of whores? No, uh, Amaranth doesn't have the courage to be an actual prostitute. No. That would require too much. That that requires a lot of face-to-face. Look, I wouldn't want to meet her fans if I were her either. I I wouldn't want to run into these fucking people, people who send you like 70 grand in a bug-out bag. Yeah, that's kind of a weird thing. That's a bit rich. Because like, if you meet that person then, even if they don't think you do, or even if it's wrong to think this, it's like you still kind of owe them whatever they want. They kind of bought you. Right. Or at least rented. Yeah. They kind of, they you owe them something for that 70 grand. Uh, using the, yeah, Triple N says use the term slag instead. Slag is a good term. I just call them women. I don't. And we know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. They're all. Uh, Scarface says I'm banned from Twitter for calling Kathy Griffin a bimbo. I stand by that assertion. Now. I worry about some of these people who are banned from Twitter and they think it's for certain things mm-hmm. and then it, it's actually for something else. Like Scarface is like, called Kathy Griffin a bimbo, then all of a sudden my Twitter disappeared. Yeah, but there were 17 tweets before that where you were writing the N-word. So, no, and I you were talking know. about how we need to get them together. and just Citizen M says, you know it's not Oz, guys. We're 10 minutes in and the co-host hasn't left to start his car once. What? Does, does that happen? Oh, Not- you don't. Oh, we uh, Corey and I talked about it last Wednesday. There was a there was a moment, and like having uh, having Oz on YouTube reminded me of like when Alan Page played for the Bears. It was like watching an old athlete that you love and everything else just kind of s- stick around past his prime, mm. and then watching him kind of struggle and everything, and um. With, with, with uh, one day on the show, and we were, we were just having some fun with this the other day, I'm ready to get into, like, our overtime segment, which is usually something that's going to be clipped. It's going to go up. We're hoping it grabs some new people. You know, High brings, energy, yeah. Bring some new subs to the channel. And I'm like, well, blah, 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 blah. And Oz just goes, like, and he hadn't been talking much all day that day anyway, and I was kind of carrying the show on my own. And this was kind of the day that that this was the day I started texting him and be like, dude, is your health okay? Are you all right? Mm-hmm. Do you need to take time off? Anything like that? And he's like, no, 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 I'm fine. He wasn't fine because he just as as I'm setting up the overtime segment, he goes, all right, I'm gonna go start my car real quick, <laughs> and he just walked he walked off the show, like he just got up and walked away. And the audience, like a few people, screenshotted. I don't know if they can if they have them and they can send them to me. They screenshotted my face <laughs> when he got up to start his truck. I literally just looked o- I looked over this way like this. I went. And then I looked over where as he was leaving, I go. What the I- I'm just like, look, I'm sta- I- he- and he never looked back or anything else. I'm just staring at him going. What what the fuck? <laughs> it was getting up and starting our ve- <laughs> We're not starting our vehicle right now. We're doing the sh- I'm going to go start my car. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, but um, no, I look, man, I love the guy. But, um, you know, and I I see Brittany saying, bring Oz back. No, I can't. Guys, I'm going to tell you, honestly, it wasn't I couldn't do shows anymore. Like you guys, it's okay to miss him. I'm going to miss him, too. It's fine to like think about, you know, the good old days and all that stuff. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I, I, Tuesday shows were becoming shows that I, I, I would have agita. I would have like anxiety before I went to bed Monday because I was like, I don't know how, and I never get this feeling. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do a show tomorrow. I'm going, because it's different when you're by yourself and you're mm-hmm. doing a show by yourself. You know, you're going to be doing it. That doesn't feel weird. But when you're, when somebody's sitting next to you and they clearly don't give a shit about, what you're talking about or they don't have an opinion or they don't have anything to say your timing is all off and you're rushing and you're like oh shit I gotta you know if I toss it over to this person like if I'm silent for a second are they gonna fill in the the gap huh (laughs) yeah I I just like I said 
I, I tried to talk to him about like, hey man, are you okay? Do you need a break? It was kind of, kind of one of those things where you're suggesting it, mm -hmm. and then uh, then Old Capital left, and I went, well, you know, look, I was thinking we needed uh, we needed to give him time to get healthy anyway, and now this Old Capital thing is a little harder to afford it, so why don't we just call it? Uh, he wanted to pre warm his car engine. Yeah, yes, I understand that, guys. Uh, Make Oz the main host. Uh, sometimes I hate reading the writing on the wall. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, that really sucked for me too. Uh, Rusty Grammar says, to be fair, is that any different than going to take a piss? Yeah, but like, if you see Johnny get up to do something, it's when I'm doing a read. It's when I'm like... Or I tell him before he starts getting into something like, hey, by the way, I got to bug out for a second. Right. It's not like, hey, let's get ready to go. This is our big segment for the day and then I'm going to go start my car. You know, what? And he had gotten up to like go to the bathroom like three or four times. That plus day. the bathroom you can actually I can still hear you so I can keep yeah. up on what's going down. Uh, Tigger next door says for Johnny to go start his car it would take until the end of the show for him to get back. You're not wrong. Uh, Tin Man Taylor says so you're glad Old Capital closed its doors so you had a reason to kick the old dog down the street. You know it's so easy for everyone else. Everyone else. Uh, you know, has it all figured out, but I'm, yeah. Uh, somebody says, give us uh, some time, then we'll be all on your side, Aaron. Fuck off that piece of shit. Again, it's not what I'm saying. Not what I'm saying. But he did, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I just, look, I, my thing is now it's, now it's getting really trolly in the chat, so we'll take uh -oh. a break. We'll go to some other stuff. It's just getting, I, I've got this new thing now where instead of like, hey, let's catch up with the chat. If it's getting a little trolly and people are getting bucky, I'm like, you know what? Let's, I look, I don't want to. Let him run it out. Yeah, I don't want to ruin it for the people who aren't being silly and, and you know, kind of shitty. Mm -hmm. But it's like, well, I'm not going to look at it. It's going to fuck up my show. So what I'll do is we'll take, it, it, it's almost like running a, a daycare. You're like, all right, I'm going to take it away for a little bit. And then everybody, st it works too. Like everybody starts behaving right after that. So you're like, all right, good. Like here, the weird part is people are like, oh, we want you to be open and honest on the show. Then you're open and honest and they, they whine. Or they just make fun of you. Oh, pussy. Yeah. It's, it's like, you're just like, all right, guys, cool. Just I'll, look, I'll move on. We'll do some other stuff. Hope we'll come back to you guys and you'll be behaving again. Uh, so anyway, we want to get to, uh, 100 likes before seven o'clock. I know somebody said like five minutes in, we were at 40 already. So mm -hmm. I don't think 100 likes is going to be a big problem. No, it seems pretty easy by the end of the first hour. Uh, so yeah, just hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And I would be lying if I said that YouTube view counter thing wasn't really annoying the shit out of me today because I got, I got you and I, uh, did some Dalia and some Lizzo stuff yesterday. I really want to put that up. The Lizzo one was good. And, and the Delia stuff always does well. And that's the biggest problem with YouTube. And that, that's what some people get really fucking cunty about. And people are like, oh, this wasn't into the little cow stuff, just like me. I, I, it's fine, whatever. I, look, I do a show. I've always done a show the way I wanted. I've always said, if people don't like something, tap out, come back later. But like the lol cow stuff, like the Delia stuff does insanely well. Like, Dalia stuff does crazy well. Especially right now, because didn't the documentary come out Right. Recently? The Dalia stuff does crazy views. It helps your channel a ton. It helps the show a ton. And if you're a fan of the show, you like that. You want that. Uh, the Lizzo stuff, I always get nervous, because I'm like, boy, that was really funny. That was really good. But Lizzo stuff doesn't do very well. Which is weird. She's such a big target. <laughs> you, 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 think you, can't, you think it would literally be a can't miss. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I just... Um, some people, you know, you sit there, it's like... Do I really explain myself for three people in a chat room? At what point am I? They're fine. I'm the asshole mm. for explaining myself to three people. It's like, and you've done it a million. You've, you've explained yourself a million times. They're like, you don't like low count stuff. I, the man runs a business. I've got to attract new people to come to this show because I already have an over bloated size what show for the amount of audience then? members we have. What? Fruit stripe. She was just a local lol cow. I know. That's the other thing is you're like, guys, we've been doing lol cow shit for 10 years. The difference is, is now the lol cows on the internet as opposed to like, you can walk right. by and just go. Ha, ha. Not only, not only that, but we've been doing it for 10 years. We've been, 
we, we've been doing lol cow shit forever. What it is, is with our fans, mm -hmm. especially the original fans, it's like the Metallica thing. The more popular it gets, the more they have to like dislike the thing we've always done. Oh, like, God, that's funny. Oh, no, it's different now. It's, li it's literally the same thing. We're making fun of people that and following up on them. And they're like, no, oh, it's like, no. And then you point it out and they go, they just stop talking. Like, they, they don't go, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I should just get to know these new characters and enjoy them. They just get really, really quiet. And you're like, God, I wish you'd have the decency to just admit that you, you were being fucking whiny. But they it's don't. It's literally like Misery Loves Company, the whole thing they do with Chad. I don't know about how, like, when that started. <laughs> but we pulled the exact same thing with Princess. Like, we literally brought her into it. Right. And we kept bringing them up. Like, if you liked us covering Derek Lee constantly or JJ constantly, then you're just being dishonest. You're just, you're just trying to find something to complain about. Like, Hulk Amash says, I think it's that you shit on these locales repeatedly. That's what we've always done. We've done this all the time on the show. Like, Derek Lee wasn't a one and done. JJ wasn't a one and done. The how the hell's your coffee people... Uh, that wasn't a one and done. We followed up. So again, I the only frustration I have is that those people, and it's a small group of people, but it still annoys the shit out of me. Because I, I don't like people saying shit about me that isn't true. And I know it's the internet, so you know, like, mm -hmm. you can't control that. But like when people have a criticism and it's valid, it's like, oh, that's all right, that's fine. But when they have a criticism and you're like, no, that you're lying, like that, not lying, but like, you're not, you're not correct. I'm correcting you. I have to correct you on this. And then they go, oh, you're just being silly or you're just being defensive. It's like, no, I'm just telling you you're wrong. Uh, let's go. Yeah. Six string man says, little cows and shit talking is the internet. That's kind of how, yeah. It's also been our show forever. I can't, you can't complain about the lol cows and say, oh, do something different. I can't. That's how our show has always, it's always been our show. When we got that guy to win the radio award, like that was us trolling them and making fun of all of them. That's just the same thing. Right. Uh, some of us original listeners aren't Spurgs, says uh, Sparky Rose. No, I know. And most of you aren't. Most of you are wonderful. It's the internet. Everybody has these moments where they go, yeah, you fucking annoying bastards. Uh, Balls Deep says, I like you because you listen, Aaron. You may not always obey, but you listen. Also, dick farts and polar bear femurs. It's maybe why I don't obey all the time. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. We all right, so we're oh, so apparently by 620, we're already over the 100 like uh, point. Thank you very much. Very cool. Uh, Justin Dabbler says, uh, what did I do? Uh, you did nothing wrong, son. You did nothing wrong. All right, let's get started with things today. And, uh, oh, tonight, very special guest. It's causing our whole schedule upheaval. Mm -hmm. And during the evening show tonight, I will be able to say who the guest is. And I will say, because of this big guest we've got coming up at 8 o'clock, and the guest will not be live. We'll have to record it, put it up tomorrow. But um, because of who the guest is, if this YouTube view count thing doesn't get sorted out, I'm You're going to lose my fucking mind. I'm going to lose my shit. I don't know. Maybe you don't want Kanye getting that much attention right now. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. If it were Kanye, I I wouldn't be able to uh I wouldn't be able to keep it to myself. Oh my god, we'd have him on right now. Uh somebody says let's make it to 200 likes before 7. Ooh. Nice. Uh no, and it's not no, it's not Colin Flaherty. And it's not Nick Fuentes. Now people are guessing. It's going to be a very good guest, so much so that we're moving the evening show to 6 o'clock uh, tonight, and it's going to be it's going to end at about 7.45, 7.50, so it's going to be a little bit shorter. So that means that tomorrow morning, I have very sad news, tomorrow morning will more than likely be the first show where we've had a live goal uh -oh. in about four or five weeks. I thank everybody, including David Chandler and Fred, for uh, getting us there. But it looks like our nice little vacation will be over, and we'll have to rattle some cans tomorrow. 300 bucks away from Wednesday morning's goal, unless like 30 of you just want to throw in right now and just knock it out ahead of time. Uh, TK800 Kilowatt says, hey. Oh, I, I like this. This is perfect. He says, hey, the less time the chat spends criticizing means Aaron spends less time explaining the why, which means more content. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. 
That's I mean, kind of what I would think, but that's not how the internet works. You got to be realistic. Well, howdy, Fred. You'd all be dead now if it wasn't my David. And that's why we've been ahead for so, so long. All right. Let's start with the... Uh, <laughs> You don't really need to think of conspiracy theories anymore. You can kind of just read the news. Yeah, it's depressing. And go, wow, they really are just kind of... out in the open now? Just fucking around with people. Uh, April uh, and I were having a conversation yesterday uh, on the way to the gym. You can imagine what April and I talk about in our spare time by these little snippets snippets I uh, uh, bring up. April and I were debating whether or not another Holocaust could happen. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we were... Well, she said, oh, okay, look, it got, it got into a deep, dark place. It started with April saying, wait a minute. Um, why did they just, I, I can't remember if this was the actual phrase she used, but like, why did they just start killing the Jews? Like, why did they have them in all these camps if they were just going to kill them? And I go, all right, April, I'm just going to let you know. I know this is an innocent question. We're going to talk about it. This is what a lot of Holocaust deniers do to try and make their point. <laughs> and she she wasn't doing that. She was just asking. She's like, I don't understand. Like, if, if you're going to just wipe just all these people out. Start out just whacking them. Why would you put them in a camp? Well, now, the actual answer to this is uh, they didn't start with the idea of they were going to kill them. They started out with we're going to relocate them into ghettos and stuff like that. And then Jews didn't like that and they would riot in the ghettos and Germans were like, well, now let's round them up and put them in a camp. And then the idea was after the war, we're going to figure out what to do with them. I think the original plan was slave labor. Was that because yeah, was... that's never been done before? To right. It was going to be work camps and slave labor and they were going to do Man, all that. Those stuff. would have been cool German pyramids. <laughs> you always get pyramids for some reason. When you like do they only slavery. can do one shape. It's like slaves are all autistic, and they just always end up building these pyramids. So then I told her, I go, yeah, around 1943 or 44, when the, when the Eastern Front started becoming a real meat grinder, mm-hmm. the Germans were like, well, we're using a lot of manpower, money, and resources to run these camps. So it was either uh, Himmler or Goebbels. I think it was Himmler who came up with the idea, well, we could just kill them. And I'm not kidding. The German military was like, well, that's going to cost a lot of money and bullets to just be shooting people all the time. So then they went, okay, well, we have an idea. How about this gas? Like they got really, they were really, really wanting to kill a lot of people. So they were getting really creative. And they're like, I got a lot of people in a box already. Yeah. So then uh, that happens and... April's like, wow, that's so from 43 to 45, they killed all those people. I'm like, again, this is what the ant, this is what the denier people do to like try to make their argument. And they're like, oh, really? So for those two years, they were able to kill that many people. I'm like, look, guys, not here to discuss that part. (laughs) Jesus. Uh, So then she's sitting there taking notes. All right. So we're going to have to do some math later. She's doing the Nick Fuentes cookie monster. Uh, Math problem. Oh, God. So, uh, yeah, Don Lemon's aide says, I hate when economics gets involved in my genocides. Yeah. Um, so then April and I were talking about, April's like, well, that could never happen again. She's like, it, you know, because we were talking about how, like. Do I even want to know who you're suggesting this would happen to? Well, then I told her, I go, you know, the way this country's going, I feel like it could happen again, but it would be thought-based. Like, okay. it wouldn't be re- your religion or your race or anything like that. Okay, I see what you're it, saying. It would be the way you think. Because, like, the way that, like, really big-time lefties are super adamant about their way is the only way. Mm-hmm. And if you go the other way, you're all these... This is why you can't keep doing these isms and these, you know, when someone disagrees with you. Because now you're going to desensitize them. You keep saying, well, if you deny this, you deny that. You're, you're racist or homophobic or transphobic or this and that. Like, if you start giving those words that power, they dehumanize people, and then you can justify doing just about anything to those people. If they, if, well, he was a racist, and people are like, well, I don't want to defend a racist. That'd be horrible, though, if that, if what you're saying happens, because then it's like, oh, he was a transphobe. Well, cut off his dick and show him what it's like. <laughs> just, no. So I was telling April, I was like, yeah, maybe it would be thought based. Or on the other end, like, the right gets into power. And these school boards have been fucking with these kids so long. And there's all these, you know, the the kid, the children's trans clinics and all that stuff. I'm like, I could see the right going nuts 
and going, we're going to cleanse the country of this, that, or the other thing. So I was, I think April's point was I couldn't see like a Jewish, like kind of Holocaust happening again. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I would, you know what? I would probably agree with that, but they'd probably finance it. But I said, if there was one that was going to happen, I would probably say that it's going to be like more of a thought based deal. I wonder where they would stand on that. Who? The Jews? Yeah. I would like to think that would the Jews... Would they bow out and just like, not my not my pig, not my farm. I'm not yeah. getting involved with this. I, I would like to think... One Holocaust was enough. Yeah, I would like to think that the Jews would be against Holocausts. But, uh, you know, hopefully but, we never find out. But when it's not happening to you. Yeah, hopefully we never find out how they feel about such things. We we never we we never have to know. They'll just oh shit. We got a lot of people to thank real quick. Look, guys, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to start the show with. Let's talk about whether or not another Holocaust could happen. Six million. <laughs> uh, let's thank a bunch of people. We have a new VIP. Oh, uh, Brian. Just became a VIP. Thank you very much, buddy. Brian, I'm going to need you to get in touch with April. Send her your information so we can get all your, your merch and everything sent out to you. If you, are a, if you become a Steel Toe VIP, it means you gave 250 bucks in one week. Uh, you get all three of our T-shirts, the hoodie, two of our five-and-a-half-inch vinyl stickers. You get two tickets to every comedy show, including the one now on January 21st, a week from Saturday. And if you guys want to put the uh, link to the event right there so people can buy their tickets if they're not a VIP, we're going to be doing a live stand-up show on Saturday, January 21st at uh, Partners, Partners Pub in Sartell. Johnny, Jonah Maddox. Wait, did you ask um, Tom? Tom, or am I supposed to ask Tom? I don't know if either one of us asked Tom, but I know he's on the poster. <laughs> Tom will do it. We'll get Tom. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Jonah mentioned it to him. Okay. In the group thing where he made the poster. Awesome. So uh, we'll have uh, all four of us. Uh, April will be there. It'll be a really fun show at Partners Pub in Sartel, uh, the Steel Toe Comedy Show. If you're a VIP, you get two free tickets to that. Brian can now get two free tickets. All he has to do is contact April or myself, and he's in. And he's now become a VIP. Congratulations, Brian. Also, thank you to Brad for buying... Uh, well, he must have bought a, um, a a sticker. Thank you very much for that, buddy. And Patrick with 20 bucks over on PayPal. So that's going to knock 180 off of tomorrow morning's goal. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we're, maybe we're not going to have a live goal tomorrow morning. We are 120 away from tomorrow morning's goal. Thank you guys very, very much. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, there's the uh, eventbrite.com link for the comedy show. Uh, Balls Deep has it right in the chat. Thank you very much. David says, what's up? Found you guys from Jesse Lee Peterson. Awesome, buddy. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that Jesse and I can share some audience. Jesse did a great job. Go ahead and watch and like our Jesse Lee Peterson interview that we just put up on the channel. King of Clubs says, I'm Brian, the new VIP. Well, great to have you, King of Clubs, and you're a member. Wow. Remarkably, Thank you so much, man. remarkably supportive guy right there. Holy shit, you uh, you you humble me, sir. All right, so talking about what are, are you talking to Tom? Yeah. <laughs> Usually, if I saw the co-host on his phone, like in the middle of the show, I go, "You motherfucker!" But then I looked over at his phone. I'm like, I think he might be asking Tom if he can do the comedy show. Uh, no. Well, what I'm telling him is, do you know you're on a show on the 21st with a question mark? <laughs> Amazing. Just, you know, might as well get that taken care of. I can multitask. So Jesse Lee Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking dick. <laughs> Bumba Close says, I want JLP to be my therapist. Dude, he is good. Yeah, I was going to say, did really you guys good. book another session yet? Or Dude, it like. Like, how much is he by, by the hour? It's been so great since we talked to Jesse Lee Peterson. Because, like, you just have these honest conversations afterwards where you're like, neither of us had any idea that, like, that was a thing. And then we talked about it, and there was like there there was like some oh shit, you know what? Yeah, he was right. No, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, a lot of us were right when we sat there saying your relationship just needed to bring in a black man. <laughs> I don't think that's what it meant. By the way, good morning, Pontiva, <laughs> with his uh, regular uh, Johnny criticism. Sit up straight, retard. All right, fine. I oh, know he's talking about me. Oh, but um, April, uh, April, and I afterward, we were like, 
wow, I'm sorry. Didn't I? And then we're both like, so how do we do this uh, forgiving the parents for being pieces of shit thing that Jesse was talking? That was the weirdest part we had to talk about. We were like, so what do you want to do for this? Because we were like, it's a re we were both like, it's a really good idea. Like it would be something really awesome to do. But uh, I don't know. That's that's kind of an awkward conversation to have with people. Uh uh, Gordy says, yes, but your honest conversation last night were causing a lot of divorces. Yeah, go back and watch the evening show last night. Oh, my God. April and I started, like, having a lot of fun recanting a conversation we'd had on a, a date we had last week. We were, oh, we were out for dinner. And the two of us started sharing stories about, like, when we were dating in our early 20s. Oh, thank God. Okay. Well, we started sharing these stories with each other, and we were laughing our fucking balls off the whole night. So we started bringing some of that. It, the story came up about this study about women who can smell single men and smell taken men. And that got into this conversation that we had had. I have to sniff had. your dick. What's your social status at? Yeah, and then April and I are laughing. We're having a great time. And then all of a sudden, we decide to go into the chat to see what they're thinking about us talking about all this stuff. And they're like, married people shouldn't be talking about this. You shouldn't be discussing. We should move on to another topic. And then what are you guys trying to get divorced? And this, and I'm like... We were having fun. Like, we were watching all these people have these existential crises in the chat, and we're like, do you guys not talk about this stuff? Do you do you not have security in, in, in your schwanz? To well, be like, that, I can talk about this shit. I'm not worried. Like, what is it? Like, oh, no, I told the story about how I hooked up with this drunk chick one night, and even though she, like, puked all over herself, I still tried to finish. Like, it's like, ah. Eh, I mean, pi make me pi pissed yourself, but I get it. Yeah. I understand. No. Lube is lube. <laughs> <laughs> so April and I, like, almost, like, there was a moment, you'll see it in last night's show, where her and I, like, almost got gaslit, but we're like, is this wrong for us to talk? And then we kind of snap out of it. We're like, no, fuck you guys. You learn how to talk about shit like this. It's fun. Uh, yeah, Omega Dreads Gaming Channel says you triggered those who are not happy with their mate. Yeah, uh, Drewzilla says pretty insecure chat. Pretty insecure. That's kind of what I was thinking. Is I was like, you guys do know that like if you're in a relationship, like you're if it's good, you can talk about shit. Oh, yeah, but some stuff you got to keep secret. If you tell them how you, like, you know, disappeared and disposed of the other ones, they'll get on, like, catch on. April did talk about killing me and eating me uh, yesterday. I could see her doing both. She was things. going to solve my murder by, uh, by cannibalizing me, uh, specifically saying she was going to turn me into a salami, th slice me thinly, and then eat me that way. That's, uh, yeah. That's, that's vaguely reminiscent of a line from a, from a show, which is uh, kind of funny. It's which a, which please share with the class the uh the, it it was on sci-fi and I, god it was with jay uh melanani from law and order i was trying to remember christopher the name. maloney christopher maloney yeah. yeah trying to remember the fucking name of it it had pat oswald playing a fucking invisible unicorn it is the stupidest <laughs> weirdest show but at one point a serial killer is going to kill christopher melanani and he's like a homeless bum down on his luck uh, detective. And he's like, I'm going to slice your penis into small concentric slices at, like salami. And he looks at him and he goes, <laughs> we're going to be here for a while, if you know what I mean. And then he looks at the other guy, he knows what I mean. Like, April, just, sa April says, in my defense, the lovely chat came up with that solution for me. Yeah, I mean. Uh, happy, there we go. And Boom. then, you know what the word, oh, happy, I've heard of that one. Uh, and then the worst part about it is, I say, oh, that's nice. You're going to eat me after you kill me because you would regret it and you'd want me to be a part of you. She goes, no, no, no. It's to cover up the crime. I'm like, oh, it's, it's a little. Now I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on you. I just feel like a decent hole in some lie will solve a lot of problems. And... Uh, Trucker 18 Wheeler says, I'm pretty sure you've talked about that before last night as well. Oh, her murdering me and eating my essence. I don't think we've talked about it that directly. <laughs> But uh, perhaps she's just a black widow and none of us know it. And she's just sitting <laughs> in the background like it only works if they think they're safe. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, April and I talked about uh, other relationships and whatnot. And people were thinking that's the death knell for your relationship. But as uh, as the mood said a little bit ago, uh, the mood said, I listened uh, last show before this show and I did not get it. But I'm in a stable relationship. Yeah. And actually. Them making a, like them trying to be shitty about the stuff we were talking about oddly made us feel better about ourselves. We're like, wow, we must be a lot more secure than we think we are. Because apparently a lot of people are losing their fucking minds over this kind of talk. 
I don't know. You're either secure or you believe you have options. Uh, April will end Aaron and mount his torso on the wall as a tribute. You're like a bustier. Just be sitting up there on the wall. So like just like head and no arms or just how do we? Yeah, just like a not a bust, but like what would be below the bust? Could we go like crazy taxidermy with you and like turn you into a centaur? Just put like, wow, you on a horse. Holy shit. April shoots a deer, puts my head on it. There we go. Everyone's, you know, after I'm dead, everyone's like, oh, man, this is a cute chick. I'm going to go back home. With her. Come back here because, of course, she's living in this house still because she doesn't give a fuck. She killed me. She doesn't. There's no emotional attachment. Brings a guy home. He runs out the fucking door because he sees centaur me right in the living room. And April's like, she's cursed now because this is what she wanted to do. But now she can't score dick because every guy comes in. He's like, no, uh, come on. I, Dude, centaurs. Guys are guys are pretty like, well. I'm not going to call her again. I have to believe that it would cost my wife something if she murdered me and mounted my head on a deer carcass. I mean, you're allowed your delusions, but I'm saying... It's I would like to believe that there would be some kind of cosmic punishment for what she'd done, and that would be... Internet fame? The little hornball gets no dick. Like, I mean, I feel like it would be a news story, and now she's got all sorts of strange coming her way. That's true. People love the psycho fucking criminal shit. Don't not they? even that. There's a whole slew of people out there like, I'm never going to meet a chick. I like to take dead animals and mix them together. Is like I took a dude in a Daniel. That's my hero. Uh, yeah, balls deep. Pointing out, she would get a week suspension from Twitch. <laughs> That's true. That would be her her punishment. Uh, April says, Johnny, you can have the ass end of Centaur Aaron. <laughs> what the? So you can fuck it. Uh, obviously, some uh, things aren't worth the work. Tin Man says, fuck, that's funny. April would go for a shoulder mount of Aaron in the living room and the bottom half in the bedroom. Oh, that, so she'd squat on my dick still and she'd go, at least he's still useful for something. Rigamortis. Oh, man. She's got to get you like mid-erection so that stays there. That's going to be hard to do. Apparently, if she's willing to kill me and turn me into a centaur, that she'd be willing to put in the work, I think. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't want her... Getting we, laid. We could put a saddle on me. you so the kids can ride once in a while. Oh, so now the kid, the kids aren't going to miss their dad. I mean, like, you know what? I liked her better anyway. <laughs> well, I feel at least. <laughs> Man, I want there to be some kind of cosmic punishment for her murdering me, and I want that to be well, no dick. You got to go lesbo because they'll justify it in their brains because they're weirdos she's never able to eat venison ever again the real john doe says oh she'd have a fresh dick waiting that's wonderful news thank you very much that's oh omega dreads gaming channel with a great idea just be a cock blocking ghost i, I have no go. idea how hard it is to pull that off <laughs> i'd figure it out uh april says the kids think i'm a pushover i'll need your life insurance policy to pay for all the toys well that's yeah but what are the kids getting uh, she'd st God, you guys have some weird fan fiction about my murder. I tell you what, is this what we're doing for the rest of the hour? Apparently. We're doing uh, April murdering Aaron fan fiction. Mad Max Mardigan says she'd stick Aaron's torso on a doe carcass instead of the buck since she has the bigger cock. Well, now that's just mean. And I, I just want to point out, completely untrue. Only wears the antlers for role play. <laughs> Uh, Chris says, uh, so deer urine instead of Dracar for cologne. I have two different colognes. Neither of them are Dracar. Thank you very much. She'll put it on the pillow. Uh, we'll send Steel Toe a beer tax so your spirit may rest in drunken peace. Oh, thank you. Uh, the Aaron fan fiction murder hour, says Darth Mode. Yeah, it's uh, kind of what it's turning into. I didn't realize people had so many theories about uh, so many excitable theories about April murdering me and then the aftermath of such. Uh, Terry Nee says she'll have a lower credit score. She'll miss that. I mean, that's only if she starts dating. No, that no. then I'd like learn to writer. haunt. I would fucking learn to haunt. <laughs> there would be haunt learning going on in my afterlife. Yeah. As soon as the door opens, it's like the poltergeist begins. It's like, yeah. what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry. This is a you thing. <laughs> Hulkamasha baby says your gay lover will kill you and then himself once April finds out. I'm not Todd Crisley. Jesus. Besides, I already tried suicide. I suck at it. 
This is how I know I got a down-ass bitch right here, though. This is how I know I'm a lucky man. April's not concerned about the dick after she kills me. She just says, how did I kill you, though? That's the fan fiction I want to hear. Yeah. What a great gal. That's how you know you have a wonderful gal. So many women would be like, yeah, if you're dead, you know, just fuck all the time, you know, fuck whoever I want, you know? Not mine. Mine just goes, no, 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 no. Give me the dirty details about how I murder the fuck. I like that. Let me get a pen and paper. Let me draw you a diagram. And the best part is, is I regularly go to Home Depot to buy cleaning supplies, so that won't seem out of place. All right, you come by, you grab this linchpin, biggity bam, the whole set falls down, kills him. Is there a sign on the front lawn that says dead air in storage? <laughs> oh. <laughs> April, yeah, oh, God, I love my wife so much. Oh, she is the best. I'm going to the doctor today. I'm getting a reversal. I'm putting a baby in this one. Uh, she says, I don't think I'd ever need dick again after all this excitement. I mean, yeah, there you go. What? The way it ended with me, she could never be satisfied again. I or, mean, look, it took my murder, but still. I don't know. I think that's just uh, that's someone who's not ready to admit that that would just be the first in a string. Like That's like, I didn't realize, but that's kind of hot. I really, I didn't know I was into that, but. April says, no reversals for you. Deal break. Well, jeez. Just trying to blow a hot load into you. That's the motherfucking thanks I get. Uh, Tin Man Taylor says it was April in the bedroom with a candlestick. Well, then it's up my ass for sure. So, April, apparently you're sodomizing me to death with a candlestick. So I hope you're ready to get still your... lit. Hope, you, <laughs> <laughs> hope you're ready to get your, uh, your hands dirty. Literally and figuratively. And the candelabra. Uh, definitely stabs Aaron to death with a mic stand. Now, isn't a candelabra the one with like five or six things? Yeah. Yeah, that's not. That's going to take some work. To quote Hulk Hogan, that doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work for me, brother. Uh, Just Aaron, you and a few of your friends. If, if I get done with the show today and I find April upstairs watching true crime shows, I'm going to be a little nervous. Uh, April can hunt and cook. She wouldn't have a problem finding someone new to replace Aaron. She's my down ass woman is not concerned with replacing me. She's just concerned with murdering me. And that's possibly what's, eating him. That's what's getting her off right now. So how dare you? Uh, Buzzsaw Lightyear says statistically she would poison you. A poison is a woman's weapon. Uh, I'm just saying, April, you might want to watch the show Hannibal. Don't watch Hannibal, babe. Let leave. Leave the Hannibal thing alone. Give me a week or two. I'll give you like an episode list of which yeah. ones you should look into. Uh, Nick, uh, Doorman says, been a listener since the Radio Whiskey Pete days. Have some good times listening to you from youth to adulthood. Thank you, Doorman. Doorman has become a VIP today. Holy damn. shit. And now we are, what, 220 away from Wednesday evening's mm -hmm. goal. So you guys have knocked out Wednesday morning. I was wrong. Wednesday morning will not be our first live goal uh april says i don't prefer poison kind of a pussy and gross death yeah she's gonna want to stab you yeah now she's saying jokes all jokes yeah i'm sure i'm sure you have gone far too far for this to be all jokes i'm growing eyes in the back of my head yeah good luck growing eyes in your tomato sauce the only charming uh part that this makes my heart melt for my lovely bride is that she wouldn't need anything else after me because she would be so excited from the killing that's just, like I said, that I actually know. choked me up a little. Maybe I'm just speaking for me, but I feel like that high won't last. You're going to need another, you're going to need another stooge. Probably Bird, one after that. Bird Collector says, not worried about replacing you, so she has one lined up already. Oh, my God. Jeez, it's just, uh, I'm finding out more and more that this, uh, I thought we were talking about a murder fantasy. We're talking about a murder plan. Mm. Uh, April wants to know what the hell would excite someone after all that. I just want to doing cry. it again. <laughs> she just becomes a murderer. She's like Hannah from Dexter. <laughs> she yeah. just starts killing people. Oh fuck me! That is funny, you guys. Thank you very much for uh, <laughs> the wonderful start. Oh my god, we're almost at five hundred before the first hour is over. Thank you guys very much, uh, Turtle. Uh, he says 150 likes. Well, shit, maybe you guys were right. Maybe we are getting to 200 before 7 o'clock today. That would be awesome. Oh, my, they're calling her April Warnos. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's funny. 
Uh, everyone hit the like button. Let's get to 200 in the next 10 minutes. And that'll be a crazy start to today's show. And thank you to our two new VIPs. Jesus Christ, what a, a crazy beginning to today's show. Thanks, guys. Uh, Mad Max Martigan says, April's more of a man than Aaron. She'd strap him to the bed face down, hook your nipples up to the power uh, main, and ride your ass as the electricity makes your ass muscles contract around her lady cock. All right. Now I've allowed too much. I now mean, if these guys go any further, we're going to start getting, like, you know, Fabio covers sent to us. Only it's April with, like, you know, like a low My head. Top. And then, yeah, your severed head. She's going to pull, uh, she's going to pull the whole, uh, God damn it, the comedian. Now her name's the Twitter one with the head, Donald Trump's face. Oh, Kathy Griffin. Yeah. God, I hate brain farts. If we keep getting to all these different ways to kill me, we're just going to feel a, a, a rush of goo on our feet because the carpet's going to be soaked from her upstairs enjoying herself to all this shit. Are you allergic to anything? You got like a nut allergy no, or something? I got, we can no, take? I got no, no allergies. Uh, John says it was April in the dungeon with the anal beads. Twist is why she strangled with him, him with them instead of the sodomy death mentioned earlier. Again, you guys, this April asked for fan fiction of my murder, and now you're I mean, it. autoerotic asphyxiation is one of the ways that you could, like, you know, take somebody out and make it look completely like an accident because. Who's going to be like, yeah, he wasn't really doing that. Buzzsaw Lightyear says Aaron is the first victim in April's murder gallery, like in Dexter New Blood. Uh, Citizen M says, I can't wait until they interview me for the docuseries so I can give rise to the theory she discovered you were gay. See, now everybody's getting themselves involved in the fan fiction now. Yep, Mary's uh, doing all over the place. Uh, she'd give them a shot, then tackle the shit out of him. Uh Drewzilla says Aaron knows talking about it now will only help the authorities later. Shh, don't tell them. Maddie says, what other sites are you on for the big like count? YouTube only has 65. No, you have to refresh it. Uh, we're at 176 likes at the moment. It's because you haven't refreshed. Uh, April, can I get my lesbian hoodie, says Brittany Martin. Yeah, don't worry, Brittany. That's something you can write, April. You don't need to have it in the chat. We, did you see... Did you see the the role we were on there? Did you see the fun we were having? We can text or message April directly instead of ruining our fan fiction moment. We yeah, were we were hypothetically dismembering his body. Yeah, exactly. I was busy being murdered here, and here you are trying to shout out people in the chat. That's what DMs are for, my friend. Oh, it's all about you, isn't it? <laughs> OMG says, uh, Aaron and Gino are gay. Kevin Brennan, probably. Uh, 182 likes now, says Fettuccine El Pupu. Hit the like button. We'll get to 200 before 7 o'clock. Uh, good old JR says she will lock Aaron in a room with a knife and a speaker playing Johnny Rock. No blood on her hands. That's true. Uh, yeah, Johnny Rando, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that if I read that, it would ruin the fantasy for her and she'd vomit. Uh, Ian says, yeah, I had to refresh yesterday too. Yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, John says, steel beard. The story of April's murder of her gay husband. Just, you know, look, some people, they need it to be gay or it just, it doesn't do as much for them. Uh, Citizen M says the obsession with Hulkamania, Adrian ending the friendship after he made a move. <laughs> Jesus. Good Christ, man. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about the Tucker Carlson thing. That's a weird segue. <laughs> From, uh, you know, analyzing my potential murder at the hands of my wife to now. I like Citizen's M, Citizen M's twist, though, where he wants a documentary made. And it, he only wants a documentary made so he can be involved and, and make sure that the, the world believes I'm gay. <laughs> and that's why April murdered me. I mean, I feel like that part is pretty easy to get across. Yeah. Uh, April says it works if I went with Tucker after the death. Oh, so now you are. Oh, you fucking... Money chaser. God. See, April, I thought it was adorable, and I thought it was lovely, and I thought it was very poetic when you were like, I'll never need another man after all this excitement. That's great. But now to find out you're just going to be some fucking sack chaser afterwards, now you've taken the romance out of it. Congratulations. You've removed all romance from my murder. Appreciate it. Take it all, you dirty girl. Oh, she says, no, I just want to go fly fishing with him. Oh, okay. April's just platonic the rest of her life. <laughs> Again, I'm telling you, once you've had long pig, you just can't go back. <laughs> once you've had long loaf pig, <laughs> ain't no going back. 
Uh, Turtle points out 10 more to go until we hit 200 this morning. Oh, very exciting. All right, hit that like button. Let's get to 200. Ryan, the garbage man. Uh oh. Ryan, the garbage man, what's going on? I agree. I, I, I'm driving, so I can't type. Uh, Aaron, you will be blood eagled and hung in a tree out at April's hunting ground. Wow, blood eagled. All right. Well, thank you, buddy. I appreciate the, uh, the, the fan fiction theory there. You're welcome. All right. The bloody eagle at the camping grounds in Litchfield. Wow. Uh, Toastmaster says, well, you were talking about how you're gay and then you're going to transfer into Tucker Carlson, who's also kind of, you know, so it makes sense. <laughs> uh, hey, man, he's a real man's man. He's like done true. light therapy on his balls. Truezilla says, all you had to do was put the bow tie on, Aaron. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Aaron, you're just another step on the ladder. Yeah. Aaron married Grizzly Adams' daughter. Apparently so. Uh, Alexander Trotsky says, I can make a short story about it. It's kind of what I do. Blood on the steel toe. Oh, shit. Oh, man. The, the chat goes nuts when we talk about my murder. Yeah, apparently your imminent yeah. demise is exciting a lot of people. Slamming69 says, Aaron's body found in a barley field. Oh, man. Uh, will she turn your nuts into a coin purse? What do you mean turn them into? You don't know what we're into around here. Where do you think he hides all his money? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so anyway, all right. So we've hit the 200 likes. We've planned uh, how April's going to kill me. April seems to be getting uh, an obscene amount of enjoyment out of it. So what a fun, sh what a fun show we've got on our hands so far today. What a weird way to start off the program. I get, <laughs> you know what? No, I'm done. I'm just, I, you know what? I'm, I was going to come up with another idea, but I'm going to cut my losses here. I've already been butchered six ways to Sunday. Uh, Nicholas, thank you very much for the five bucks. Thank you. Via PayPal, sir, 215 away from Wednesday evening's goal. All right, April, you don't have to come up with fucking uh, names for the book, too. You're already doing all the killing. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm sure she probably has a. She's going to grab me before you even head out the door, and she's going to be like, just give it to me right now. Oh, man, why are you so horned up? I'm thinking about murdering you. <laughs> it's like, I'm for, like, for some reason, I get harder. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. This is one of those situations where I'm like, God, I really need to move faster right now. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be here. April's all done. She's ready for me to finish up, and she just whispers in my ear. She goes, give it to me, dead man. And for some reason, I just blow one right through her back. Like, how did that excite me? No, I'm finding out a and bunch have, of bad things about myself. Including you apparently have Superman jizz when someone discusses your imminent demise. Yes, if someone says, fuck me, fuck me posthumously. Ah, fuck. Uh, all I have to worry about is that I have captive penis like a dog, so I'm forced to cuddle, says Monkey, Mr. <laughs> Monkey Pox. Uh, this isn't nice. Fauci's penguin says to kill a mocking gay. <laughs> That's a beautiful title. Not even trying. SC Motorsports says he had it coming by April Imholt. Fuck me, dead man. And then I blow and she stabs me right in the back and twists the blade. I'm like, oh, this is both fun and terrible. I really hope I'm not here long enough to witness all of that. That's just... <laughs> New VIP doorman says, give it to me, dead man. Undertaker music hits. Dun. B. Joggin says, April is going to make Aaron into one of her skin-tight shirts. Wonderful. A Aaron will be chopped up into a half loaf of bread. <laughs> April's custom lampshades, they're saying. Oh, my God. She's going to make an Aaron suit. Would you mock me? I'd mock me. <laughs> I'd mock me hard. I know an Aaron. And that wasn't an Aaron. It was like something was wearing Aaron. Like an Aaron suit. <laughs> that name is so perfect April, for that character. Your skin's hanging off your bones. April, your skin's hanging off your bones. <laughs> calling now they're calling her April Gein. Yeah, there we I was waiting till when we'd get to the Ed Gein comparisons. Uh Aaron will be tattooed on April's shoulder. Oh boy. OMG Wolf says, this talk turned dark. I need to see April. We need proof of life. She's killing me. Yeah. I, 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 we need to see April. We need proof of life. We, are you going to say that after the crime? We need to see April to know she's okay. She just murdered her guy. Yeah, but is she okay? Right. That's what everybody's concerned with. She's like, yeah, but her hands might be cut up from her murdering him and everything else. 
Uh, by the way, I need I need to show you this. Um, don't leave your Allen wrenches by your humidifier. Yeah, that's a horrible idea. Check this idea. out. Holy Jesus. Look at this. So this end got left by the humidifier. You see that? This end did not. I've never seen a half and half rusting like that. It's kind of fun. April's going to shove that through my neck. Uh, Joe Blitz says, Aaron Chad is destroying you on MLC. Oh, I'm sure he is. Oh, you mean his uh, videos that get no views unless they have my name on it? Meanwhile, we're kicking the shit out of him. Joe, stop it. Scoreboard, baby. It's been over for a long time. Uh, is she killing you, Aaron, or are you establishing an alibi? Wouldn't you like to know? I don't know. Maybe I am. Maybe I really am terrified of being slaughtered. I'll let you decide. Uh, I've been right. taking boxing this whole time. I just need to be able to protect myself from this wily. <laughs> Uh, let's go into the Tucker thing finally. I think they're all good. I think they got it out of their system. Why do you stay with her if she's going to kill you? Because it's so hot. Oh, God. She just whispered. She keeps calling me dead man. Uh, Drusilla says, great. The JLP show leading to double murder now. Oh, uh, yeah, apparently so. Wait, double murder? Who's the... Are you guys are taking each other? Oh, out? wait, yeah. No, there's only one murder. Uh, April says, starting a moccasin company from all that tanned hide of yours. Y you're getting too horny. Way, way too horny. She's just like sizing up your butt. Like, I can make three three shoes out of that. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, uh, I don't, I, you know, a, a man faces his mortality in this way. It's very strange. Very, very strange to face your mortality in this fashion. All right. Uh, it's why Johnny stayed with danger is exciting. Who's Amber? Who's, yeah. Do you have an Amber in your past? No? No, I'm trying to... I don't know an Amber that I would... Because it was, it was my ex, and then they're just that one lady. The Jap name, the no Amber. Japanese lady? No, no, that's just a wish. Um, No, no, the, you you remember this one. Her name was Erin. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. You enjoyed that a lot. I remember that broad. Uh, Joe Blitz says, challenge him, pay-per-view, cage match. I already challenged him to a fight. He pussed out. I challenged him to a boxing match. He offered. To, uh, he was offered money for it and everything else. He pu He pussed the fuck out. So, Joe, the next time you're on uh, that show, let him know in the chat. Send him a little five-buck super chat and say, hey, you got offered to fight. You bitched out. Aside from that, you've been losing on the scoreboard. Kind of a cuck. Kind of a cuck. Uh, Tucker Carl. All right. Tucker goddamn Carlson. But I mean, to be a cuck, don't you have to have a woman? Well, that's true, yeah. I mean, I, I mean cuck in more the uh, pejorative sense, not I the see. literal sense. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's go on here. Tucker Carlson, this is, uh, like I said, this is a little one of those um, uh, quiet part out loud things. Although I don't think this was ever meant to get out. This was discovered. Uh, Louisiana's attorney general has gotten his hands on some very interesting documents that sh uh, that show more of what we saw revealed in the Twitter files. The United States government used social media companies as their speech watchdogs in order to bypass the First Amendment and squelch non-government approved ideas. In this case, Rob Flaherty, who's the director of digital strategy for the White House, mm -hmm. was writing to Facebook and Twitter and asking them to remove Tucker Carlson from the platform because of his opinions on the vaccine. What were his opinions on the vaccine? Exactly? Uh, that it seems a little iffy and it doesn't seem to stop uh, people from getting it. Oh, Joe, thank you. He says, uh, then you won. You're right. I know. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you saying that. A lot of people on the internet don't uh, walk it back like that. You're a big man. I appreciate that. And April's thanking you guys for the entertainment this morning. Yes. I hope, April, that it stays entertainment because now I'm starting to get a little nervous. I don't yeah, know if she I'm wrote gonna, it down on a piece of paper called to-do list. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to go upstairs today and I'm going to be fucked or killed or both. I plan to leave before I find out. All right. Uh, I just hope that it's the order I want it to be in. <laughs> killed and then fucked? <laughs> oh, yeah. I want the last thing I feel to be a woman lowering herself onto me as my body seizes up and my brain shuts down. Oh, fuck. What a disgusting group of people you are. Uh, April watching <laughs> watching Basic Instinct right now. Uh, I feel like she's watching Xenia on a top from GoldenEye. 
Probably. More than anything else. Yeah. Okay, guys. Let's enough. I mean, already. if you gotta go, that's probably one way to do it. I understand. I look. I get it. So the document shows that the White House went out of its way to pressure Facebook to censor Tucker Carlson and Tommy Lahren because they weren't on board with the COVID narrative. Now, what's interesting about this to me is that they're trying to pressure Facebook. It's like, why don't they pressure a relevant social media company? Why don't they just pressure Tucker Carlson? Right. Why don't they go to Fox or anything like that? But, well, probably because Fox would tell them to go fuck themselves, whereas Facebook might go, oh, yes, we'll censor that conservative for you. Uh, Rob Flaherty tells Facebook to censor Tucker Carlson. Here's the email. Actually, it might be easier to read this way. Yeah. Uh, since we've been on the phone, the top post about vaccines today is Tucker Carlson saying they don't work. Well, now, wait a minute. Let's before we get to the rest of his email. If you mean vaccine in the classic sense of it prevents you from getting a disease, it creates an immunity to a disease, then no, the COVID vaccine does not work like other vaccines do. Uh, I don't really know what it does. I'd have to go read up on it. But I, I know that, uh, you know, we know for a fact it doesn't stop you from getting it. Uh, we know from a, for a fact that uh, in all cases it says, doesn't stop you from dying from it. And uh, you can't sue anybody over any adverse side effects. Yeah, so there's, look, there's, I mean, that's the craziest part to me about the whole COVID vaccine thing and Tucker Carlson and all that is like, how can we have evidence of all this stuff and still not be able to talk about it? Like, how is it that this is just a thing that's true, but yet you don't want people to talk about it? It's not controversial. It's not like, oh, there's an argument to be made here. Everything Tucker's saying is correct. And uh, you can't you can't do anything about it. Like none of us can do anything about it. Congratulations, the vaccine yeah. didn't work. You well, won. We can't fucking sue or anybody. Like I, we all have to worry about whether or not we have an enlarged heart now, and we're not even. <laughs> here's can't talk about that. Here's all we get to do. We get to go, ha ha, and then you guys win everything else. But you don't even want us to be able to have that ha ha. You want to ban people if they do the ha ha thing. What's going to happen? You can't unvaccinate someone. So it's not like they're going to unvaccinate people for God, them. I wish you could. Uh, yesterday was Tommy Lahren saying she won't take one. This is exactly why I want to know what reduction actually looks like. If reduction means pumping our most vaccine-hesitant audience with Tucker Carlson saying it doesn't work, then I'm not sure it's reduction. So Rob Flaherty sends this email. He's the director of digital strategy for the White House. He sends this uh, email to Facebook, and correct me if I'm wrong, Johnny, it's almost coming off like he's a mafia boss. Yeah. And like Facebook isn't in charge of Facebook. I don't know about Facebook, whether or not they're in charge, but he's definitely coming off as someone who's like, look, I want a service, and that service is you shut that son of a bitch up right, right. now. Right. This isn't your fucking company. I thought you told me you were going to do something about shit like this, and you're not doing it. What the fuck is wrong with you? And you're like, bro, it's... I mean, isn't it kind of their company? And the White House just looks at you for a second and goes, <laughs> look at this fucking asshole. Hey, guys, get in here. This guy just asked me, well, isn't Facebook their company? <laughs> fucking guy. I love him. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, so they want Tucker Carlson and Tommy Loren silenced on Facebook just because the things they said got popular it wasn't they didn't push it on anybody they weren't pushing it on facebook or like it just got shared a lot and it started trending and people wanted to talk about it and because there were you know plenty of people who agreed right and then the white house writes to facebook and goes wait a minute i have an idea you know all these people who think we're really dishonest smear merchants you know how we're gonna get them on our side and convince them we're gonna force you to ban the people that they really like and take that away from them Oh, well, I mean, that, that, that should work perfectly. I mean, that should do exactly what you want it to do and totally not the opposite at all. I mean, there's no uh, example in any kind of history where when you take something away that's very popular, people find a way to enjoy it underground and usually become uh, more, uh, what do they call that, um, more uh, fundamentalist about that belief it, it never happens look smart ass if you want to give me a history lesson that's your problem but i'm just saying we don't want this son of a bitch talking anymore just saying cut kill, like cut tucker carlson off of facebook because he's saying things that a lot of people enjoy 
Yeah, but if we take that away, that's not going to stop those people from enjoying it. I said remove him. It'll work fine. We're the government. We've planned this out, and it's going to work efficiently. Aren't you worried it'll backfire? Only way that could happen is if some sort of transcript of this conversation were to be made public. <laughs> and how could that ever happen? It's an encrypted email. Those never get out. Edward Snowden has entered the chat. <laughs> The White House pressed Facebook to censor Fox News host Tucker Carlson for saying vaccines don't work. Uh, they also wanted him banned off of Facebook for reporting the blueness tint in the sky and that rainwater was indeed wet. Uh, all things that they were hoping to get him And out there's of there. crime in Gotham. Yes. Uh, so this is according to a document released by Republican Attorney General Jeff Landry of Louisiana. Since we've been on the phone, the top post about vaccines today is Tucker Carlson saying they don't work. Blah, blah, blah. That's the, the email we were talking about. In response, the unidentified Facebook employee reportedly told Flaherty that they were running this down now, according to the document posted by Landry. What that means is they weren't going to do shit about it. And uh, they were just trying to make the... Uh, I mean, it's got to be a little intimidating when the White House guy writes, about, writes to you. I don't know about this White House. Uh, not much is intimidating there. Well, I mean, still, if you're like a Facebook employee and you're probably of that political persuasion. I suppose. And that White House contacts you, you're like, fuck, I've got the White House telling me to do some shit. But it's like, you're a private company. You tell them to go fuck themselves. And it seems like that's what they did because they didn't cut that off. They didn't delete it. They didn't get rid of uh, Tucker Carlson, anything else. They just kind of went, um, you guys should probably like, you know, ho chill, you know? Uh, I think Tucker talked about it last night. Tucker Carlson, Facebook. Uh, this story may have prevented Biden from becoming, oh, maybe not. I had heard that, uh, Tucker had talked about it. Uh, well, the story preventing Biden or from becoming president, wouldn't that be the laptop thing? Yeah, he's, yeah, the thing he's talking about in that video would be the laptop thing. But, uh, I, I thought I had seen some articles where Tucker was talking about, uh, here, Tucker Carlson Facebook. We, we can find it. If it exists, we'll find it here. Uh, this morning. Uh, yeah, there's the story. Biden tried to silence Tucker Carlson on Facebook. Maybe Tucker didn't talk about it last night. Oh, maybe we did. It was never really a secret that there were huge problems with the COVID shots. And we knew this because the Biden administration's own VAERS database indicated that from the beginning, a lot of people were being injured. A lot but of the people. media suppressed that news. We tried to point it out more than a year ago, not because we have a problem with vaccines or anti-vaxxers, but because if you're going to force people to take something, you probably ought to know what it is and what effects it might have. That's the most basic right of all, to know that what goes into your body, to know something about it. Unless it's a baby. But in trying to say that, we were censored, and now we know we were censored directly by the White House. In April of 2021, the White House's director of digital strategy, a character called Rob Flaherty, sent this email to Facebook. Quote, the top post on Facebook about vaccines today is Tucker Carlson saying they don't work, he complained. He then pressured, the White House pressured Facebook to follow its policy of, quote, reduction, meaning censorship. That is kind of a New World order -y type of word, isn't it? It's like a yeah. really nice way of saying, silence this fucking guy. It's not called silencing. It's not called censoring. It's called reduction. It's amazing. It's the Communist Party in China, but in here, it's democracy. Right, exactly. In China, it's communism. Here, it's uh, watching out for fake news. <laughs> We're quoting, if reduction means pumping our most vaccine has an audience with Tucker Carlson saying it doesn't work, then I'm not sure it's reduction. In other words, censor more. <laughs> Facebook employee responded by promising that the company was, quote, running this down now. We asked Rob Flaherty to join us tonight to explain, but of course he's a coward and he won't. <laughs> what a little dick. Of course he's a coward yeah. and he won't. So we only know this, by the way, because of a lawsuit from the Attorneys General of Louisiana and Missouri. Jeff Landry is the AG in Louisiana, and we are honored to have him join us tonight. Mr. Landry, thank you so Holy much shit, for that looks coming like Kevin on. Spacey. So yeah. you're the chief law enforcement officer of your state. You're the Attorney General. Th this would be illegal, would it not be? Well, it's certainly a violation of your First Amendment right, Tucker. Yeah. Uh, and, and I wouldn't say that Facebook, I mean, that the White House pressured Facebook. I would say that the White House demanded uh, that they do something about the video. Yeah, that wasn't really pressuring. That was just like, hey, why is this motherfucker part of reduction? 
Why is this guy on there? This is not what you and I talked about. And how about the fact that our private companies like Facebook and we found out Twitter and others are having conversations with the White House and the government about on how what's to control okay. the narrative? Yeah. I mean, we all kind of knew we, we kind of thought that that might be happening to some degree. But I mean, to know it is like, oh, man, I didn't want to be right about that. I want that. That's the that's the saddest part about all this stuff is you usually end up going, come on, tell me I'm wrong, tell me I'm crazy, please. And the only reason we're finding out about it is because John Milton here decided to pursue it in the court of law. John Milton. Can anyone say the first half of this administration was entirely mine? I was thinking um, the guy from the uh, Pinkerton Detective Agency in Red Dead Redemption Two. You put the hat on him <laughs> that you had posted. Look, this suit is about whether or not this suit is 100 egyptian cotton has basically suppressed american speech as those americans go about debating the very policies that the government has us under right and if the white house did not like your position or if your position did not agree with that's the, the, and that's the end of the clip so the white house did indeed contact youtube so that they could shut down tucker carlson because he was saying well, Facebook, not YouTube. What I'm sorry, what did I say? You said YouTube. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, on uh, Facebook, they wanted to get rid of him. Not because he broke the law or he did anything terrible, but because he said, hey, I'm noticing that these vaccines don't really stop you from getting COVID. And they were he like... He wasn't even lying. They're just like, hey, we... Right. It's detrimental to my case. And he wasn't really... This shows that how much of a bubble these people live in. He wasn't even saying anything... Like, that controversial because... Everyone in there already thought that. Everyone already says that. They're like, wow, that didn't uh, that didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. Ugh, boy, well, you know, forge ahead, I guess. That's the thing. is like there's no, there's no redoing it. You know, there's no going back and trying again. It's just like, well, uh, like Louis C.K. says about uh, raising kids. Well, permanent damage done there. Moving on. <laughs> Uh, I guess it's another therapy bill I just got. Drewzilla says, tell me I'm wrong. Me for the last 10 years. Yeah. Uh, this is why private companies should not have the ability to violate rights as Aaron thinks they should. I understand what you're saying there. I think if we find out these companies are actively um, uh, working with the government, then there should be some kind of Supreme Court case uh, someday where the Supreme Court votes, oh, if we find these private companies are working in tandem, if we can find a connection between them and the government, then it is a violation of people's First Amendment and you're not allowed to ban people or whatever. I don't know. Uh, they always did it with radio and the FCC broadcasting license. That You know what, Toastmaster? That's true, too. If people got all... Uh, if a radio station was doing stuff that the government didn't like, they tried to do this with Stern. They would find the shit out of the stations. They wouldn't find Howard Stern. They'd find the stations like th uh, like $35,000 per station per occurrence of indecency. And in order to get Howard under control and not let him talk they'd the way he spoke, his they'd try platform. to strangle the affiliates, the smaller stations that couldn't afford those fines. And, th and Howard finally had enough of it, and he said, well, I'm, fucking, I'm going to Sirius then. I mean, that's... What, what happened, so yeah, you're right. The FCC kind of did the same thing. Now we just have more technology so the government can interfere that way. Man, if we were still on radio, we'd have to be worried about that, you know, because we'd be still growing so big with all of the, all the other stations. All the effort they were putting into syndicating I us, know, you mean? yeah. Yeah. Uh, White Ad says, now Howard is one of those NWO commies. I guess him and uh, Trump had a back and forth over the weekend. Like, like Trump big time shit on Howard Stern and how his show is irrelevant and nobody listens anymore and he's not who he used to be and he lost his balls. Yikes. It's got to be hard. Got to be hard that? to hear. Yeah. From Donald, from a guy you hate so much. Well, and it also not wrong. Yeah. I was going to say, where, where was the lie? Yeah, exactly. Show me where he's lying. Uh, so one other thing the White House did recently, and uh, this might be a good thing. Uh, the White House, uh, Johnny, has cleaned up the immigration problem. They did? They cleaned it up, at least in El Paso, Texas. 
Well, I mean... You, you know how we've been having this big border crisis and everybody's worried about illegal immigrants and stuff? Well, the White House came to town in El Paso and they cleaned up the streets. Really? Yeah, oh. because the president was coming there for an event, so they just went and hustled all the uh, migrants into oh, facilities. Oh, so they just... They just yeah. mont they like three card monted them. We yeah. just threw them the other street. That's yeah. precisely what they did. Or they rounded them up and put them in a facility that they will be kicking them out of as soon as they leave. If you need a look, if you need to save the country, they can't really help you out with the border. But if you need a photo op, Johnny on the spot. God. Everything is fake with the Biden administration, one person tweeted. Uh Texas El Paso yesterday versus today. So this is uh this is El Paso, Texas, before and after the Biden administration. So before they got there for the big uh, big event, for the big appearance. Just people covering the wall. These are migrants covering. And by the way, what is it about like Latinos that even when they camp out on sidewalks, they're cleaner than Americans are? Like you don't see a bunch of Coleman tents and needles and shit. It's just a lot of blankets. You Necessity know, looks, stuff. Yeah, it looks like they're camping out to get concert tickets. More than anything. Looks like they could pack up everything they have into like a Walmart bag and go. Right. They're mobile. Uh, so then, but then you look the day uh, Joe Biden's going to be there and magically, wow, look at that. Clean streets. That's incredible. You know, in uh, Seattle and Portland, they're having all this problem with these homeless encampments. But boy, golly, by gosh, they just don't know what to do to clear them out. I, I have an idea. Bring Biden in. Tell the cops the president's coming. All of a sudden, you'll be old-fashioned billy clubbing people and knocking them out of there, cracking a few skulls, and it'll be cleaned up by the morning. So, God. Biden, what are we going to do about this immigration problem? I was in El Paso. I didn't see a problem. Looked perfectly fine to me. <laughs> you dumbass. You're right. That's exactly what he'd say, too. Yeah, there you go. El Paso Wednesday, El Paso Thursday. There's another one. Just fucking... It's enraging, isn't it? Because you're like, there's so many of these cities that are being strangled by shit like this. Yeah. There's so many cities where there's just entire areas of their downtown where they can't go because it's not safe because there's uh, homeless encampments, migrant encampments, all this other shit. And then you find out that the White House could clean it up tomorrow if they wanted to, but they won't. Well, it's again, I don't really think they cleaned this up. They just like they shuffled the shit under the rug. Yeah, for that's five true. minutes while the company came through. Wow, look at that. So this is the El this is the border by El Paso before Biden got there and then when Biden was there. So that's the border. We can't control the border. We don't know what to do. Meanwhile, the president's about to be there. Fucking armored Humvees are sitting there on the border. Scaring people off. Yeah, scaring people away from coming across. Boy, that is it's that is really bullshit. something. And the worst part is there was a story I did uh Colorado uh, agreed to stop sending migrants to Chicago and New York. And they're like, look, we're, we're, our, our resources are taxed to the limit. We can't keep taking these people. And it's like, yes, that's the argument the southern half of the country's been making for a couple of years now. Decades. Decades. Well, and it's also one of those things where, like, the Biden administration, diversity is our strength and the migrants are so wonderful. Unless we're coming to town, then get these dirty pigs out of here, is their attitude. We don't want to risk one of these undocumented people just hauling off and stabbing the president. Yeah, I mean, some of them can be violent. What? Wait, what? That's But you said that the people who said that before were... Son of a bitch, that is convenient for you. These people are the salt of the earth, and when they get dropped off at my mansion, I want two security guards per each one, because you know they're thieves. That is that kind of not in my backyard kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. diversity is our strength. Immigration, uh, there's no such thing as an illegal. And then you're like, oh, okay, good. We'll send them to live with you. Oh no, they might rape me. <laughs> so, like, wait, what? Hold on a minute. That was. Uh, here's a local El Paso reporter talking about the cleanup work they've been doing ahead of the president. Of course, this area uh, it was had a lot of police presence. We've been reporting in the past couple of weeks of police coming here. Uh, they've been arresting people for maybe paraphernalia. They had uh, access to, to marijuana, those types of arrests. We spoke to one woman. We asked her, have people been cleaning this area in preparation for President Biden's visit? One woman did tell us that, yes, the city, she has seen city officials or city employees out here cleaning the area in preparation to President Biden's visit. Okay, so they have seen people just going in and like, again, imagine you live in this place 
Nobody does anything about it ever. And then as soon as the president's coming, they go, oh, yeah, we'll have it cleaned up by tomorrow. Yeah, see, I feel like all those people they cleaned up should have been bussed to the White House. Right. They yeah. got room over there. Hey, you said you like this diversity so much and all. You said illegals are welcome here. We just thought we'd bring them to you so you could take care of them better. You said there wasn't a problem at the border. We've been having trouble getting you and especially Kamala, who's supposed to deal with it, out here. So how about we send them to you and you can deal with it on your time? There you go. Posterior attention says it's like painting over the mold to sell your house. It's not fixing shit. Exactly. I just, it's just got to be, I, I would hate it. I know personally I would hate it. If I've been sitting there going, God, these migrant encampments and these homeless encampments, they're so gross. My city's been telling me there's nothing they can do. And then one day the president comes to town and they're like, oh, hey, look, the streets are clean. And then you go, oh, are you going to keep it that way? They're like, no, no. Just, that would require work. Yeah, just for today. You know, we just got to make it look nice for the dear leader. Look, um, if we have too many people out here, grandpa will start sniffing. Ex yeah. Right, exactly. That We did it for him. Uh, remember that Walmart video we watched yesterday of that uh, the black kid who was like yelling at all Losing the white people, shit? calling them racist, and yeah, breaking all the computers. Someone who needed a good slapping. Yeah. Well, I found out what that was about. Uh, he had written a uh, a forged check. Oh, but he works hard for his money. Yeah, it was a it was a phony check. Excuse me. So you have a toddler temper tantrum. Because they won't cash your phony check? Yeah. Dude, do you know how lucky you are that you're not arrested? That's a serious federal offense. Yeah. Forged check. They wouldn't cash it. So he threw a fit and started to say, well, then nobody's getting money today. It's like, dude, how in, like how insecure and, in a, and fearful can you be that you did the wrong thing? You know you're doing the wrong thing, but you're still being like, uh, what what's the word? You're not arrogant. You're still being not pious, uh, prideful enough, pompous, pompous enough, I guess, too, to think that, oh, no, I still deserve my money, though. And you guys are clearly in the wrong. Well, and you know how we were saying while well, he was cash my forged check, you're a racist, yeah, which he did say. So, you know, how we said, well, why doesn't anybody step in and stop this guy? Yeah. You know, we're like, why doesn't somebody in line step in and stop this guy? If something like this were to happen at a Walmart, people should step up and, you know, and stop Stop it. the crazy guy. Well, you got your wish today. Uh, here's a guy with a knife inside a Walmart. Oh, and uh, that's not the same guy. I, no. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll take what we did. Oh, here we go. I want here to quit him. I'm talking about clean scoop, scoop ball is in. Oh, 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 So look at He's got a knife. You can see it right there in this hand. He's got a knife, and he just kind of took a swing at that guy. And uh, now shit's gotten real in the Walmart. Oh, this, he do a Dave Chappelle. Oh, 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 oh. Bravo, sir. Bravo. Ladies and gentlemen, heroes come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. That, my friend, is a hero. He swung that thing like a double-bladed axe. I mean, that was just... Who, like the Warhammer, like he's fucking Robert Baratheon. He says, yeah, not in my Walmart. <laughs> he actually went, um, it's it's not good food or good food. It's good food. Watermelon. <laughs> Bam, Gallagher. Just walk it out. Drive in, drive out, drive through. <laughs> Oh, here to quit. I'm talking about clean scoop, scoop ball is in. Oh, 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 oh. All right. You thinking drugs? I'm thinking a lot of things. A lot of weird, like, I thought he had, like, cerebral palsy or something for a second, the way he was all curled up like that. It was just drugs, mental illness, alcohol, uh, no dad. Just look, I'm, I'm playing the odds on this one. That's all. He do a day for this So this guy... Okay, I want to watch him, see how... Oh, yeah, that's when he's... He grabs that thing early on. I want to see if he's got it before, no. like, when he decides he's going to take action. I want here to quit him. I'm talking about clean scoop, scoop ball is in. Oh, 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 oh! Oh, he's going over now. Yep. Oh, this, he's doing Dave Chappelle. Wow, so he's, like, calm. He's, like, walking over, like, I'll take care of this. Don't worry. Like, he's, like, picking up spilled milk. He's Only like, one person here knows what's about to happen. Yes. 
Only one guy knows how this ends at this moment in this video right now, and it's this fella right back here. Oh, yeah. oh, shit. Oh, shit. oh, shit. And that guy just picks it up like, all right, and we're done with that. Oh, ho, ho. that is going to fucking hurt for a while. Not only is that going to hurt for a while, I don't think anyone feels any sympathy for him. No, that was a wonderful shot. That was great. Plus, it didn't hit the guy right in the head. Yeah, it so was like head didn't explode, so you can cut, you can enjoy it fully. You know, you're like, oh god, that's kind of gruesome. You're just like, aha, fuck that guy. But nobody told him. You never, you never start off down. You, you hit him in the head. They get all fuzzy and right, they can't feel the next. See, see. Oh, 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 oh! He does it right in front of him too. The guy's too stupid to even see that this guy's going for something. Well, he's too busy making some sort of what, like peacock display about it's, his act knife. Actually, it's Tommy Davidson in Ace Ventura Two. He's oh, uh, doing a tribal no. dance before he kills somebody. Oh, this he doing oh, Dave Chappelle. Oh, 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 the thud. Oh, By God! By God, they killed him! By God, as God is my witness, that man is broken in half! <laughs> By God! Oh, shit! All right, who wants. And now he's spinning like a turtle. And there's just like three Michelangelo people. is a party dude. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just fighting the urge to replace one of the words. And <laughs> Teenage Mutant Turtles. <laughs> oh, my God. That is terrible. It is. Teenage Mutant Turtles. I don't think you could get that show on the air. I don't think so. Not anymore. Drake. <laughs> Lil Wayne. Oh, uh, hey. All right, now let's let's take a quick uh, poll of the room. Who wants to see him get hit again? I do. Okay. Oh, this, he doing oh, Dave Chappelle. Chappelle. I don't remember the the bit where Dave Chappelle has a knife. I love that he's winding up and nobody's like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Like that. We're just watching. Oh, 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 there was one person who went, "Oh shit!" Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, he dropped the knife before. No, he'd be a horrible DJ. Yeah, he dropped the knife beforehand, old fumble fingers. Uh, oh, man. I mean, but what are you going to do if you're the other guy? Cancel, like, at the very, very end of the swing? Because you see he's now unarmed. Like, yeah, I know. you got to follow through. Yeah. He... Absolutely. It's a good way to stop a guy. I like that guy. That's perfect. I hope he got some free shit from Walmart. Stopping an incident. See, that's how we could stop a lot of this stuff. Like, we, we decided the last few years that we should have, like, a, a policy of, well, let's get our, you know, let's hands off. Uh, let's... Look, let's not involve ourselves. Get get them in, get them out, so nobody gets hurt. Uh, if we just did a thing where it's like, oh no no, uh, once some shit goes down, we allow full vigilantism here, and then you wouldn't see anybody fucking around like that. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure a lot of people are like, all right, time to beat your ass. Yeah. Uh, Crack Rock Calhoun said, oh, now they're trying to make Teenage Mutant N-Word Turtles. Oh, Jesus. Um, uh, it's uh, Crack Rock Calhoun says instead of Raphael, it would be Raekwon. Six string man says great form, full overhead swing. Oh yeah, no, he that was that was great. I mean, he yeah, that was perfect form. He couldn't have swung that any better. Uh that's a stream deck drop. If I ever heard one side note, April is watching this taking notes. No, no, no. April, I don't think April's gonna kill me that way. I don't I don't think uh She's not April gonna wants be able to, to haul out. off with that big ass thing. It's just, just fall over. Drew Zilla says, great working shot. Oh, no, that wasn't a work, my friend. That was a shoot. That was that that man is a shoot fighter. Uh, I just wanted Jeff Jarrett's music to play afterwards like he broke a guitar over his head. I just wanted him to whack him in the head with it and then go, in my world. Hold on. We, you know what? We can play like a few seconds of that and not get popped maybe. Hold on.
Uh, wow, fantastic numbers, guys, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, hit the like button. Let's see if we can get... What, what, what's our next one? 300? Let's see if we can get to 300 before 8 o'clock. Hit the like button. Uh, here we go. Just, we got... Uh, I'll move this over here. You need uh, more screens. Yeah, I know. I need a third screen now all of a sudden. We need to start stacking them. Well, you know, they here. make the little monitor tree things you can put and mount them on there oh so now i'm an asshole is yeah kind of is that what you're trying to say well i'm not trying to you're saying it i just was now i'm the piece of shit i'm just putting the dots on the paper you connect them how you like all right here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna get my music ready i've got my screen ready here we go oh 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 this he's doing dave chabelle oh oh <laughs> I one here to quit. I'm talking about clean scoop, scoop ball is there. Here we can do it here. I'll, oh, we'll do it again. Oh, oh, oh. We'll do it at another point in the song. Oh, this he doing Dave Chappelle. Oh, shit. I one here to quit. I'm talking about clean scoop. All right, one more. We got it again. Oh. oh. My God, what's going to happen? My God, somebody help this man. That man's got a knife. Wait, wait. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, you start letting people do that in stores. I feel like that solves some problems. You're going to see that shoplifting shit go down pretty quick. Pretty quick. Uh, okay, they say we're at 254 for likes. That should be an easy 300 by 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah, dude. All right, hit that like, like button, hour. guys. If you're having some fun with us, hit the like button. Let's get her up to 300. And, of course, uh, with the chat, keep me updated on where we're at. Uh, by God, that man. Oh, no, Crack Rock Collection. By God, that man's got a family he never sees. <laughs> he's got a family he's walking out on. <laughs> by God, by God, King, that man has children that he's never paid for. Uh, Tom Dick says, why you got to yell everything? Because that's how, that's how the Aaron broadcasts. Do you want me to talk? Like, wouldn't this, like, let, me, let me be very honest with you. Wouldn't this be a really boring show if I spoke like this? I think we could have a good show, Aaron. Yeah. Like, do you really want a guy who has this level of energy in the shit he's about to tell you? Do you listen to gay shit like this? There's no way this is enjoyable to anybody. My balls are made from a secret sweaty Ex recipe. Exactly. Who are we? The BS show, for Christ's sake. No! If you have a guy who goes, holy shit, guys, you got to see this thing I got for you next. This is going to be amazing. And then it's a guy whacking a dude in the head with a big post. And you're like, well, that deserves a certain level of energy. Uh, well, so At the very least, an obituary. Yes. Tom, I hope that that little display I just did kind of shows you why we do the show uh, the way we do. Uh, Celtics fan says, Mersh covered this last night. Well, then Mersh beat me to it. Son of a bitch. I covered a bunch of stories we've talked about last night. None of it. Oh, saw them. so apparently I'm a giant piece of shit then. No, well, I don't have I'll... any viewers, so it's the same thing as not talking about it. <laughs> That's like I remember when uh, David Letterman was talking about the uh, the late night stuff when Leno and Conan were having their thing, and he was talking about Carson Daly having a show at one thirty in the morning, and he was like, you know what the difference is between having a sh uh, uh, show at one thirty in the morning and not having a show. Eh, that much, Letterman said. I got to see if I can find that. Letterman, Leno, Conan. Uh, well, wouldn't he be ripping on Carson? No, no, no. This was the this was the second one. Okay. Uh, there's. Uh, I want to find the one. Two, nine, 1982. Two, yeah. That's right. And and then then what happened? We came over here to CBS. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna Jay. I'm gonna fast forward. This is worth watching. Uh, this is kind of like the last time Letterman was good because he kind of got old and he gave up. Yeah, and then he did his weird show. Yeah, but then like when he got into the Conan and Jay stuff, he so liked that drama 
and he so liked uh, the low calorie of it. If you guys uh, don't like it when we do it, uh, he it just fueled him and it brought funny, funny shit out of him. Because Letterman was great at just talking and conversing instead of like doing wacky bits and shit. I always liked when Letterman just shit on people. I always felt like Leno was only good at just reading the newspaper. Just the, yeah, yeah like you reading read about jokes. this. You hear about this? Yeah, he was a great. He was a good writer. He had a good writing team, and he could do a monologue. So they said, uh, "Sure, Conan, you can have uh, the Tonight Show in uh, 2009." You think we can play this by now? We could probably put this up Hopefully. on the screen. Yeah. 2009 was that what they mm -hmm. said he could have it? Yes. yes it was. And so they went to Jay Big Jaw Leno and they yeah. said, uh, "Jay, uh, we're we're taking your show away from you." Yes. And uh, Jay said, "Yeah, okay, well, that's pretty good." Right. Uh, yeah, I was gonna suggest that. Right. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, Jay now uh, decides he wants to go on at uh, 10 p.m. They said fantastic, and he did a wonderful variety show on a variety show. Big variety it show. It bombed terribly. Dave's being a dick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On at 10 p.m. there at yeah. NBC. Yeah. And and uh, one thing leads to another, and it didn't quite uh, work out the way uh, the geniuses in programming thought it might work <laughs> out. So so now the. By the way, do you, do you sense any bitterness uh, that Dave has towards NBC still all these years later? NBC, Jay Leno, and, yeah. Uh, do you sense office bitterness? executives that maybe yeah. like do you think the 15 years salved those wounds no 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 okay. this is literally like you if you were still at the station and you were talking about the shit that you put up with like i mean yeah you'd be the same way yeah it's that carry the nbc uh, shows they said you know we're out of here we're going to telemundo leave us alone don't call us <laughs> you, you, you know put a camera on a birdhouse we can do much better we we don't care get us out of here so now NBC said, well, uh, everything's fine. Uh, Jay Big Jaw Leno is doing great at 10, and uh, Conan will settle in. And they said, no, we can't take it anymore. So now they pull the plug uh, on, on Jay. They pull the plug on him, yes, and they said, okay, your show is canceled. You're going back to 1130, and Conan's going to 1205 to do The Tonight Show, which, as somebody pointed out, really, at 1205 is no longer The Tonight Show. No. It's <laughs> tomorrow's show. It's the tomorrow. Really. <laughs> it's the next day show. So, <clears throat> all this to get so to the Carson Daly part. What will Conan do? Will Conan stay and do the Tonight Show at 12.05? And then uh, 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 Jimmy Fallon gets pushed back to, when does he start? He would well, start then at 1. Yeah, he would and, and, then, and then at 2, uh, the other guy, Carson, Carson Daly, Daly yeah, what his show would have started at 2. Yeah. And I, I called NBC and they said, well, we've never heard of Carson Daly. <laughs> <laughs> so there... Um, but now here's the deal. Anytime there's a big stink like this, and believe me, there hasn't been a big stink like this in years, it's money. Don't kid yourselves. It's all about right. I want to see if and, I can. And that's big dough. That's big dough because this whole mistake for the cash. I want to see or if I can find. they wave his <laughs> You know, he. He's not going to do that. He want, he's in there for the cash, or they wave his non compete clause so he can go to Fox or come here and take my job. <laughs> Here's a kid who had a show at what? what, what oh, here, here it is. But it's very exciting. And uh, and Carson Daly, whoo, this is kind of, you know, he, here's a kid who had a show at what? what when did the show go on? 1.30? Yeah. Yeah, well, 1.35. <laughs> having, having a show at 1.30 is almost exactly like not having a show. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Carson Daly. So you got this beef that Dave obviously has with NBC and Jay, and it's very personal. It goes and back a while. Carson's just taking friendly. He's just taking fire. For, he's just taking, like, ricochets from Dave. He's like, ah, having a show at 1.30. That's like not having a show. Yeah, Carson's still around. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the difference between having a show and having one at 1.30, eh, just about difference. like that. What hey, about hey, what about me? Yeah. I'm, hey, what about... I'm, I'm Pluto. Remember me? I... <laughs> So Dave went on like, it was like two weeks of that. Every day, Letterman would start his show. With just shitting on NBC. He was so happy about how awful the 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 NBC people were handling the Leno Conan, Conan thing yeah. that he would just take his, the first 15 minutes of his show and just shit on those guys. And it was some of the best TV I ever remembered watching. Uh, Brittany Mar uh, Mar Martini says Lily Singh was pretty excited about that slot. If you ever want to find out how fucking bad late night was for NBC, I don't know if she's still on, but they got this girl, Lily Singh. 
She was a YouTuber, and they gave her a late night show. Oh God! Because they thought, well, she'll bring all these young people over, right? And, and they'll start watching regular television again. What she did was one of the worst fucking shows I've ever seen. I mean, criminally unfunny. If you want to watch uh, great coverage of the Lily uh, of Lily Singh's show, watch the Revenge of the Sis stuff on it. Okay. Uh, the Revenge of the Sis guys covered Lily Singh's show a couple of years ago, and it was fucking dreadful. I mean, their coverage of it was very funny, but her show is really, really bad. Uh, do, should we show Johnny a little bit of Lily Singh? Honestly, folks, I kind of want to see some Lily Singh. You want to see some Lily Singh? All right, Lily Singh show. I don't even know if it's still on. Oh, dear Lord. A Little Late with Lily Singh. That's the name of the show. And yeah, she's uh she's an Indian YouTuber. It must be over because she hasn't put any there's nothing on the actual channel for a year. Okay. Oh no, now that's what I call Lily. Okay, here's a, I'll just pick a random sketch from her show. Here's a little the late. people who brought you now. That's what I call music volume one, volume two, and for some reason another seventy six more volumes. Introducing now. That's what I call Lily. Get it, Johnny? There's a lot of that's what I call musics. Remember the nineties? You know those things don't find you. You have to go looking for them. Like I. You've seen Lily sing, but have you heard Lily sing? Featuring oh God, some no. of Lily's classic onset masterpieces, like Crusty Legs. I crusty legs. My legs are crusty. My legs are deep I'm so tired. So they're taking like outtakes. So this show is remarkably unfunny to begin with. They're now taking outtakes of stuff she just sings to herself when the cameras are off and going, oh, this will be a really funny bit. No, 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 it won't. There's a reason why people just mutter this shit to themselves when nobody's filming them. Because it's garbage. It sucks shit. And like, I'm not going to blame her for this one because she wasn't, the cameras weren't on, she wasn't performing for this. But to actually turn this into a bit on the show, you know what would be funny? If we took me just kind of doing my random singings in between sketches and put them up on, on this TV yeah, show. Yeah, I was about to say, there's no way she didn't okay this. Right. So, like, your show is funny to begin, or unfunny to begin with, and you're thinking, you know what would be a great idea? If we took the shit that wasn't good enough to be on our unfunny show. Hey, at least you're staying it. on brand. Yeah. My legs are deep I'm so tired. I'm so tired, and she don't let me sleep, and she don't let me sleep, and she don't let me sleep. Doing a good sleeping. I'll get right to do sleeping when I go first. And my uterus is dying. My uterus. everywhere i love how we've got all these face masks and face shields and then she's completely up there and nobody sees like and the stupidity singing of yes outwardly uh well that's not a sketch johnny so that look that's not fair because johnny that's not a sketch if we went and we watched a lily sing sketch it might be i'd better. understand what everyone saw in this why thing. don't we hear let's sort by most popular videos then you'll see what's really good uh, John Cena does John Cena dance challenge with Lily. Uh, I don't, I don't want her interviewing people. Oh, Gen Z and millennials squash the beef. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. This is late night mm -hmm. with Lily. So far off to a good start. No, but well, no, I mean, if you want it to suck. Yeah, yeah no, but you know, you don't understand the, the premise behind it. I don't think you see, um, there's Gen Z and there's millennials. Right. And they're going to squash the beef. But they can't really communicate very effectively. Right, because they use different words. You know, this is like if if, if the boomers were going to squash the beef with the greatest generation, they came in saying groovy, am I right? Well, like, wouldn't that be funny if the, right? Like the baby boomers started saying groovy at the greatest generation and they didn't know what that meant. By the end of this bit, I'll be fantasizing about killing you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> What do you mean? It's like if they said, oh, this is trippy. And then the greatest generation was like, ah, trippy. I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. Oh. I don't speak this jive turkey language. But they all have PTSD from World War II, so they just shoot the boomers. <laughs> like, that's a way a So you're saying that there won't be any skull emojis used during the making of this segment? 
Oh, okay. Well, I was just, I see, I was just wondering. How do you keep pausing it where that nose ring is just staring me in the face? She's always making dumb fucking faces. I want to just why. yank that thing out of your nostril. Like, what's it there for? You, you want to be like uh, Quentin Glass in The Punisher. I mean, kind of. I, I just, there's sometimes, here's, there's a remarkable specialness to Lily Singh, and it's this. Sometimes things are so unfunny that you laugh at them and how bad they are. Lily Singh's shit is so bad that you can't, that there's no laughing ironically. It's not ironically bad. It's just you're watching it going, I, I wouldn't put this on TV even ironically. Who the gave this chick a show? And why can't they Again, find me? This is television executives uh, going, we're panicking because TV is dead. So we're going to go grab someone who's popular on the internet and we're going to give her a TV show because the TV networks still have old money so they can still throw money at people. Whereas the internet, you got to make it on your own. So they go, we're going to throw her a shitload of money and we're going to give her a late night show. And if we put her with writers and professionals, then she'll make it funny. Oh, man. If, if you guys think that TV has their finger on the pulse of what people want, just remember for the last three years, they thought Lily Singh was the thing. I mean, if they have their finger on the pulse, someone needs to tell them that pulse is dead. Here's the pulse. Here's your finger far away from the pulse jammed right up your own ass. Say, would you like a chocolate-covered pretzel? <laughs> Jane Silent Bob Strike Back? Yeah. So wait a minute. You, you, uh, yeah. you thought it would be funny to point out how you suck as a person? I mean, like, no offense, owning property is not a high bar. See now, Johnny, you're breaking down this bit as if anyone who made it knew what the fuck they were doing. I, I, again, I feel like they just wanted two dark-skinned ladies with nose rings. Right, exactly. It's just, hey, can you give me two dark-skinned ladies with nose rings? What do we have them do? Uh, ah, fuck Gen it. Z versus millennials. It's like, oh, you guys got anything funny pl uh, planned for it? Not at all. You know what would really make this bit hilarious is if a boomer I came out. Or like a greatest generation came out. Like say like a German guy came out and he just opened a door and he shoved the two of them in and then like hit a switch. Oh, I have an idea too. I would love if this bit ended with a Pakistani with a suitcase running in yelling Allahu Akbar. Like right as they're having this discussion, just the yeah. cockpit of a plane lands between exactly. the two of them. And then whoever did that, I would call them the greatest generation. <laughs> I can't, I can't do this. I, I, it's, it's not ironically bad, even. It's just the, it's just the regular bad. This is like an advertisement for why we should just start, I don't know. Not allowing women to be comics? No, that's the Chelsea Handler special. Oh, um, okay. All right. Yeah. God, that's a piece of shit. Otherwise, watch the Whitney Cummings one. You'll be just as convinced. Oh, fuck. I, I promised I would watch it because I did the like the trailer on Netflix. I'm like, yeah. oh, this looks bad. Ah, watch it and see how bad. I couldn't get through the whole thing by can 30 I guess? minutes. Can I make a guess? What? Does she talk about her pussy? No. Uh, Wait, no. Not. I. She's remarkably unfunny without talking about fucking in her pussy? She would be funny if she could drop the one punchline in her joke that I don't get where, I'm famous. You don't understand. I'm a celebrity. Oh, God. And, and, and I can't do this thing that you can all do because I'm famous. Like, Oh, fucking. Like, I just, at a certain point, I'm like, who are you trying to fucking convince? And right. a second question, why? Why are you famous? <laughs> well, I mean, she did fuck network executives her entire career. Chelsea so, Handley? Yeah. Oh. I think the head of it. Nobody ever laughed at this. How many views does this have? 1.8 million views. I, do, I, I, you know what? I blame the people who watch it more than I blame the people who did it. I kind of want to take that girl's clip about, uh, you know, sad girls and hot girls being the same thing. Like, see, when you cry after sex, it's only helping. Ugh. I mean, again, like there's stuff you can watch where you're like, oh, this is so bad. It's really, really funny. That's just so bad. It's fucking bad. Like, I mean, it's just sad. I mean, I could make a show that bad. Why didn't they ask me? Uh, mods, if you could start getting on that clicking the show button on these comments, comments that for some reason are getting held and they shouldn't be getting held, it, I would appreciate it. Then I don't have to go back and do it. I want to make sure our listeners get to uh, get their uh, their thoughts in. So, Mods, if you could, uh, please work on that. Otherwise, if you'd like to apply to be one, I can take one away from someone and hand it over to you. Uh they're saying it's bot views. No human would watch this voluntarily. That's the, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and believe that even if it isn't true. No. Because I cannot believe, like, I, I can't live in a world 
where I believe that Lily Singh got those amount of views for such a dog shit bit. No, dude, I, I believe real people watch that shit. I believe there's plenty of people who literally don't care whether or not it's funny or entertaining. They're just like, it fits all the boxes I want, and it doesn't question things. But, uh, I, but like, how, how can, like, I, I don't care what generation you're part of. I don't care how old or young you are. How can you watch that? Like, show me a punchline. Like, I can watch stuff that's not funny to me, but I can recognize where the punchline is. You can recognize the actual, like, setup of comedy in there? Yes. Tell me where people were supposed to stop to laugh in that sketch. Her face. Uh, with the avocado toast and the La Croix was reference? She known, was she I, known for being funny on YouTube? She was known for being, like, funny to stupid teenagers. Like where you do wacky stuff on oh, YouTube God. and it's like, oh, watch as I put shaving cream on my dog. You know, like just so wait retarded shit like that. Was never a comic, was never a, a comedian, nothing. So they gave a show to a YouTube stunt boy. Yeah. Who, who had no idea what it takes to do a show. Yeah. They thought that they would just grab all... They, honestly, in their mind, they went, well, if she has 5 million subscribers, we'll 5, million, 5 million people will watch her show. 5 million people don't even watch her channel. And does she still simulcast it on YouTube? I feel like if you're someone who discovered no, she her on does, the internet... she does her own independent content on YouTube. Okay. Like, if we go... I think Lily Singh is still around. Uh, yeah, she has 14.6 million <laughs> subscribers. And she just uploaded 11 days ago. Ugh. Oh, but my God, look at that view count has died. Yeah, you're down to 23,000, 23,000, 21,000, 30,000, 60,000. And then a year ago, when she was, I, I guess she must have taken Still a nine on, month break. Yeah. Uh, 540, 364, 363. So Lily Singh's done. Yeah, the, the, the career has come to an end. Yeah. Oh, Blinding Likes, a parody by Lily Singh. What do you think? I think I, I think we should do this. Um, oh, also, her other big thing was she's bisexual and Indian, so she's all kinds of mysterious, Lily Singh. Again, if you want really good... I'm a Lily woman, and I'm interesting because I fuck everything. Again, if you guys want really good Lily Singh coverage, go watch uh, Revenge of the Sisses uh, coverage of Lily Singh. It's... Pretty, pretty good. But here we go. This is Lily Singh Blinding Likes, a parody. Oh, boy. So this is while she had her late night show. She made this. Because she could afford to. Yeah, right. I mean, good for her to get the YouTube money and the NBC money at the same time. Lily Singh. I have no idea what this is a parody of. Isn't this a weekend song? Oh, Blind, yeah. yeah. Blinding Lights. It's a weekend song. Yeah, yeah I yeah, know this song. It's the weekend right. song. So far, it's fucking dog shit. So there's that. We're about a minute... So this is her saying she's going to read the comments section and like on her social media posts. And she's going to, you see, because we all like to get likes and comments on our. It's just if, if you want. How many people are retarded? I need to know. We need to start keeping track in the census. I need to know so shit like this doesn't catch me off guard. If I know that there's 93 million retards out there, I can go, oh, I can expect a few Lily Sings now and again. I mean, I'm one, and I, I've seen a lot of my kind. No, I, mean, I don't mean physically and, and psychologically. I mean socially. I mean, like, dumb as fuck and doesn't know that this is horse shit. Uh, pretty much, that's, like, most of that generation. I'm, uh, I'm going to be honest. I, it's like this someone, is our generation, though, isn't it? I, I, I don't they know. They like her. I, but I'm, but uh, am I on that? I thought I'm, because I'm 40. Oh, I'm 36. Yeah, I think I'm. You're think I'm, 
You might be a late an late Gen Xer, early millennial. Yeah, one of those two. 82 is the cutoff for millennials. I'm not very punctual, so it's hard to know. Were you born in 82? Half black. Just made it. Yep, you're half black. They could turn me on just to text, baby. I post a bit and my screen is bright and tempting. Everyone's here to judge me. No, I can't live without my phone. Oh, Get it? It's oh, art. She's, you know. Oh, get it? She's doing a commentary on how we can't live without our phones. Wow. That's fucking good. Man, if she gets any deeper, she'll be in her own cunt. Uh, Atomic Citizen with two bucks says, uh, what the fuck chat do, Aaron? NBC inbox full. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just bad. It's just garbage. Uh, she didn't even sing her own parody song. Yeah, yeah that's, no, that's true. that's not she, her voice. She wasn't even singing it. Uh oh yeah, B Jog and uh, Diamond from Diamond and Silk died uh yesterday also. If uh if you were a diamond and silk person, I wasn't. I didn't, you know, it, they they were just these two black ladies who said based shit, so people liked them. Kind of like there was this thing when Trump became a thing where like anyone who liked Trump and had a little bit of charisma, all of a sudden everybody felt like they had to love them. Or they were, like, not a real Trump fan. Yeah, that's where it's like, oh, you're on this team, so you have to go for everything the team's for. It's like, ah, but I wanted to be a person. Yeah. So, like, this diamond and silk would come out. And here's, here's the thing conservatives really have a weird problem with. They're really worried that if they don't have a black person or they don't have a gay person or they don't have a trans person that they'll get called a name. So what happens is instead of being patient and waiting for, like, a black conservative or a talented trans person or gay person or something to come along they'll just find one that says based shit and go all right here look you're our new mascot for gay black trans shit now your name is token yeah like conservatives have that this terrible thing where they're afraid to just be white or they're afraid to just be men or they're afraid to just be women like they get so they they um they bother like they get bothered so much or they're bothered by liberals uh like doing this thing where like oh we have to have representation of absolutely everything and they're like oh liberals just want to turn everything into a checklist blah, blah blah but then conservatives will go and do the same thing they're like oh shit there's a trans woman saying that um you know there's only two genders <laughs> like, quick make her a big thing like blair white there's no reason blair white should be famous Blair White has lukewarm takes, basic bitch takes, like that your your aunt on Facebook has about politics and stuff like that. But conservatives saw a chick with a dick saying based shit, and they're like, oh, quick, make her really, really famous and give her all our money so people don't say we're transphobic. And then they'll get like a Candace Owens or somebody or a diamond and silk, and they'll go, quick, make them famous. They're black. Quick. Then people won't call us racist. It's like, first of all, they're going to call you racist no matter what you do. Number two, stop being so desperate to have a black friend. It'll happen. Are you implying that Kamala Harris isn't the greatest vice president of our time? <laughs> Ugly Fuckling says we are transphobic, though. Oh, well, I mean, so I am, but that's because I don't know how to work a manual. It's always automatic for no. me. Uh, the Artilex says you are describing Democrats. No, 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 it's both. It's 100% both. These people who get really into politics, they all play the identity politics game and they all shit on other people for playing identity politics. It's wild to me. Uh, Brittany Martini says, so true, Aaron. That's the only reason I banged a black chick. We'll see, there you go. It's, uh, it's your guilt. Uh, not being sarcastic, let's do You're yay. You're just trying to check a box? <laughs> A dark one. <laughs> a mother box. They're all pink on the inside. Yeah. When Superman dies, all the black boxes start shaking. And it terraforms the earth and shows us the anti Oh, lordy, lord, we lost the man of steel. <laughs> oh, lord, here come dark side to terraform the earth. Dark side are coming, and he is going to be really mad at the anti-life equation. You're a comic book guy. I say it, but I don't know what the fuck it means. What's the anti-life equation? I have no fucking idea. All right, cool. I couldn't get into dark side because I'm like, isn't it dark seed? Like weird names. So that's the thing that hung you up. Yep. Boy, you are an autist. Mm -hmm. Proud of you. 
Uh, Brian with 10 bucks over on PayPal. Thank you very much to Brian. That's going to put us 205 away from next Wednesday e- or uh, this Wednesday evening's goal. Uh, so we're uh, a little bit ahead again. We bought ourselves some time. Thanks to two new VIPs. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, so yeah, Lily Singh, uh, if I may, complete dog shit. Also apparently can't sing. No, not at all. All right, guys, apparently uh, it's 8.07. We got to 298 likes. That's very cool. Let's just do two more. We'll count that hitting 300 by uh, 8 o'clock today. Sounds good. And then you know what I'm happy with? 400 by the end of the show. It doesn't have to be by 9 or 10 or anything else. 400 likes by the end of the show makes Aaron a happy boy. Uh, Hit hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, I know YouTube's uh, counters and shit have been uh, really fucky lately, but I'm sure they'll fix them at some point and you'll all get your credit. Uh, thank you very much. Make sure, again, you hit the subscribe button. You hit the like button. Yeah, my views still aren't moving on our channel. The Jesse Lee Peterson interview is at 143, and uh, yeah, it's not, it's got way more than that. A lot of people don't want to listen to, you know, a beta. No, that fucking like counter is, uh, is all fucked up. Uh, Chevrolet JB says it's at uh, 318 likes now. Oh, there you go. Great. Thank you. Warden Gordon said, Darkseid is obviously a Jew that shortened his name from Dark Seidelbaum. <laughs> All right. All right, then. I see now that's helpful because I didn't know that. Yeah, I was, uh, I was unaware. Yeah. Uh, a man's bondage sex date turned deadly when the partner he met online took offense to being bitten on the genitals, according to the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. I told you I was going to bite your dick off. No, I think, was it two guys? I have no idea, but I mean. I thought maybe he bit her pussy. Uh, that's, uh, that's hard to do. Oh, no, it was gay dudes. Okay. So two gay dudes were in a bondage date, and one of them decided to bite the other one's dick. Look, I don't care how much freaky shit you're into. You always ask before a dick biting. It's just common courtesy. Somebody just can't wait to get that cheddar worst. <laughs> don't you don't just go in there. And by the way, if you do bite a dick and you get some cheddar worst effect, you call a doctor immediately. Don't listen to him. That's not supposed to happen. I'm I'm just used to a lot of hot gooey cheese. <laughs> so if you're doing a bondage thing, like that's fine. You're tying each other up, you're doing all that. You still gotta ask for the dick biting. Yeah, Mr. Pelosi. It's not what he thought he meant when he said he wanted to get hammered with the guy. (laughs) Uh, A man's bondage sex date turned deadly when the partner he met online took offense to being bitten on the genitals. Yeah, weird. A guy was uh, upset that his dick got bit. That's uh, it's not that uncommon. Investigators discovered a motive when they tracked down the last person who had been in contact with the victim. It took four months to arrest the 34 year old suspect who has been charged with manslaughter and possession of methamphetamine. So... You got with a gay meth head to have a bondage night, and you and he got tried your, to eat your wiener, and he tried to eat your dick. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say I think what the other guy did was wrong, but I also don't feel sympathy for you. I mean, can we be? And this is to the gay community in general. You you can do whatever you want, obviously, but may I make a suggestion? Be a little pickier. That's it. Because they met online. There's stringent background look, checks in there. They ask you if you have a name. The eight sums that spread monkeypox uh, would hint to me that maybe we're not being as discriminatory as we possibly could be. I think you be. just don't realize how dangerously, uh, you know, transmissible monkeypox is. I mean, that uh, thing is going like wildfire to everyone. I mean, if who's a homosexual? Yes, and has multiple partners. Literally, it's if even just, affecting their dogs and their kids. And that's when we don't stopped, read into it. And that's when we stopped talking about it, by the way. Yeah. Monkeypox. Oh, my God. It's terrible. What are we going to do? We love plagues. We can maybe lock people in their houses again. Oh, it turns out it's only gay people. Oh, well, that's still something we can use. There's more gay people than ever. Yeah, it's ones that only have degenerate, like, five people group sex. It's like, okay, America's going to be fucking All disgusted right, so by we, that. We, we soft sell that. All, All right, right, we soft sell that a little bit. Uh, kids got it. All right, hang up the phone. We're done with monkeypox. We're not going to get into that conversation. Uh, wait, so it only can be uh, contracted by gay men? 
Well, that's funny because underage uh, boys are now getting it. All right. Uh, we're not going to talk about this anymore. Wait, you don't want to do a news story on, uh, you know, how there might be a little more tolerance for pedophilia in the gay community? No. Nope. <laughs> look, I- look, it's just it's transmissible surfaces. It doesn't mean anything unpropitous happened. It also is getting to the dogs. All right, for fuck's sake. All right, enough. I don't. Last time I depend on the gays for a story. That's all I'm saying. Don't we have something about, like, can't we call vaccine people uh, conspiracy theorists or something like that? Jesus. Where are we at with te- canceling Tucker Carlson? Yeah, right? can we get back on Tucker Carlson or something like that? Because this is not going the way. We wanted to make this a new plague, and all of a sudden now we're all homophobic, and we didn't mean to. And we're about to spill the guts. Uh, and, we're, <laughs> and we're about to spill the, or spill the beans on uh, the whole, you know, teenage boy thing. So we're going to go ahead and just down a lot of this one. Uh, so anyway, underage kids and animals are getting this year. Shut it down. Yeah, ex- exactly, Buzz. Uh, it took four months to arrest the 34-year-old suspect charged with manslaughter and possession of methamphetamine. I mean, yeah. how hard are you trying for a toothy blowjob? <laughs> I'm just saying that maybe it's time for gay guys to be a little pickier and patient and not so goddamn horny because if you're picking someone off the internet and you want to do bondage, and you pick the 34-year-old meth head, uh, you can't be too mad when he tries to bite your cock off. He probably hasn't eaten in four days. I mean, bondage, sex get, date. Did you guys not discuss safe words? Right. Like, don't bite my cock. On September 5th, 2022, the Osceola County Sheriff's Office responded to an address in Kissimmee, Florida, regarding a suspicious death. The deceased victim was wearing bondage gear and appeared to have trauma to his body. The medical examiner's office ruled the death was caused by blunt force trauma and strangulation. All right, so wait a minute. The guy died? Wait. The, no, I think what I'm to understand here is the guy who got his dick bitten went ape shit and, and killed? killed the guy. So the guy who got his dick bitten was oh. the meth head. So they were having gay bondage meth sex. One of them bit the guy's dick, so he snapped and beat that guy to death. Ooh. Wow. That's, uh, got to tell you, that's it's not very gay of him. Malevolent bystander, not yet. I, maybe I haven't taken enough. <laughs> Did you bite me on the dick? Yes, I bit you on the dick. Bam, bam, just beats his ass to death. <laughs> How do you like it when someone bites your dick? You're not biting my dick. This doesn't seem commensurate to what I did to you. <laughs> Shuffleboard, shuffleboard. I have monkey box. <laughs> tries to spit on him. He just tries to give him something. Tries to scratch him like the outbreak monkey. Oh, nothing worked. Uh, well, you know, you got to, like you said, Johnny, you got to have those safe words if you're going to do that bondage stuff. You never know how it could end. I mean, who gets, who gets like, fucking knee-deep kink on the first date? Like, you haven't even met the person yet. Gay like, people. I just, like, I feel like some safety is needed. Like, it, it, some of this stuff, you know, yeah, it's fun to, you know, dress up as a cowboy and pretend you're plugging an Indian. But, I mean, you got to... <laughs> who hasn't? Who hasn't? Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, but... <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to actually commit. I'm a pussy. Uh, but, yeah, so it it just... Oh, Lord, Mr. Johnny, we's got to find you your confidence. You could come with me down the yellow brick road and we is getting a wizard to give you some balls, baby. Shock, I just wanted to give you a pep talk. Yeah. Anyway, finish your thought. I'm just saying overall, it's, you, you, you got to get to know somebody first before you're like, all right, now I want you to stick this spoon up my ass. Like just, <laughs> And it doesn't have to be a spoon up the ass. It could be anything, you know? Uh, you should just fucking smile and blow me. But no <laughs> teeth. Shut, yeah, do it, do it like Mel says. Uh, I'm lucky to be alive. I have fucked so many women the first date. I met them. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, fucking on the first date is fine, but I'm saying going like full tilt, like freaking freak sex on the right, first date. Right, tying each other up and like smashing each other in the face with tennis rackets. That's something you save until, you know, your first Christmas together. Uh, detectives identified Brian Scott Demolo as the last person to see the victim alive, officials said. Uh, Demolo was arrested January 3rd in Seminole County, and he was uh, since given detectives detailed information about how the bondage sex game went bad uh then they go on in the story to explain what bondage is and if you don't know you shouldn't be reading the story uh demolo told detectives that he and the victim met on an 
online chat group for sexual encounters, and the two arranged to meet in person. According to Mr. Demolo, during oral sex, the victim bit down on his penis, which caused Mr. Demolo to beat the victim. The victim suffered severe injuries and was knocked unconscious. I do have to say, at this point in the trial as a juror, I'm saying not guilty. I, I, I you know, you're, you're not yourself when someone bites you on the dick, you know? Just- right. You get your dick bit. It's one of those things you don't know who you are until that happens. You don't know what kind of man you are until another man bites you on the dick. That's right. Once a man's teeth breaks the skin, I believe all bets are off. Uh, Demlo then left without calling 911 or rendering aid. Yeah, he had a dick to take care of. Yeah, he did. Got, he had to fix his cock. He had to get some disinfectant on it. You know how bad that's going to burn? I have an idea how much that stings. <laughs> At least at the time of arrest, uh, he was in possession of methamphetamine, the sheriff's office said. Well, you know, painkillers, you know, for the dick biting scenario. I don't know. I, uh, it, to me, I think you got to let the guy go. You bite a guy's dick, you get what's coming to it's you. It's self defense. I mean, it really is. If someone, uh, you know, stabbed you in the dick, would you be able to beat him to death? Maybe. Before no, different. you die of blood loss? Exactly. You're going to try. That's for damn sure. Uh, Crack Rock Calhoun says meth fuels the gayness. Yeah, I mean, it can. Especially if there's more meth being dangled as the, you know, the carrot. Fuck, it's meth now? I thought it was Adderall. Now I got to find meth. No, they said meth. He had methamphetamine on him. It's just, he likes to go in gay chat rooms, do meth, and get his dick bitten off. That's uh, that's what he's into. I want to smoke a rock while you suck my cock. That's all I'm looking for. Uh, Coltrane says Florida is a stand your ground state. He stood his ground. Well, there you go. That dick didn't retreat. That's right. That dick stayed there and it beat that man to death. Look, he's boy. just a, he's just a hard swinging dick. Oh man. Uh, we've got, uh, by the way, do you know who uh, chase Suey is? No, I thought that was a system of a down song, but, uh, Pete Davidson is now dating this chick. It's all over TMZ yesterday when I was prepping the show. And I'm one of these people who's like, I have no fucking idea who these, this person is. I start feeling really out of touch. They're like, oh, yeah, he's dating Chase Suey. And you're like, oh, yeah, obviously. I mean, Chase Suey. We, uh, who the fuck is Chase Suey? Yeah, so, who is Chase Suey? Chase Suey wonders. Wonders what? Uh so there she is going to... Wonders what she sees in Pete Davidson. Like, no offense, he's funny, but dude is ugly. Yeah, and apparently she's dated Charles... Mel- she's dated this guy before. Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, I don't you have just that have up horrible on. taste. That guy's not bad looking. I wouldn't fuck him. Don't, but, well, you know, neither would I, but I can understand why someone else would, you know? Kind of like one of those bands where you're like, ah, I'm not into it, but, uh, you know, I can tell they're talented. Uh... Oh, oh wait. and then another old guy? Generation HBO. So is that is that what she's on? An HBO show? Wonder. Uh oh no, her name is Wonders. Chase Suey Wonders. Charles Melton and Chase Suey Wonders spark dating rumors. Yeah, you're right. I don't oh, there's An- and then she dated a guy named Angus Cloud. Of the Clan McLeod. Of the McLeod clan. Uh there's there she is with Charles Melton. Now I guess she's with uh Pete Davidson. I mean, she's okay. She's not great. I mean, you're into Asians, though. So you might have a better uh, take on this. I mean, I, like, that's just a, that's like a blonde hair thing. I'm like, all right, you know, you, you got a winning point there. I feel like a personality needs to show up, too. But uh, yeah. So is this officially the, uh, is this like the downfall of Pete Davidson's uh, pussy getting days? Because you oh, got yeah. you to gotta admit, he's done very well for himself. Oh, yeah. He batted so far outside of his league, he deserves yeah. a trophy. Skeet did very well. He's uh, Skeet's had Ariana Grande. Skeet's had Kim Kardashian. Skeet's had, um, oh, what's her name? Not Mila Jovovich. Um, Kate Beckinsale. Oh, God. You know, they both. Kate Beckinsale went yeah, to Skeet? He, he fucked Kate, Be- Kate Beckinsale, yeah. God damn it, she's on my bucket list. Yeah. So, Pete Davidson's done all right by himself. And then now he's got this Chase Suey Wonders, but that's like you take what he, where he's been. Like that, that. Look, if you're on your way up and you date her, like, hey, nice job, good work. Yeah. But if you're where he's been and then you go, it's like, let's say you're Justin Jefferson and you're having a season where you had almost 2,000 yards. And now next year he has like 1,100 yards receiving. That's a great season. 
Yeah, he's moving on up. It's just not very good compared to, you know, where he's been. To the east side. <laughs> that and and that's the problem for Pete Davidson is that his his reputation has been up here with women. Like we're kind of watching him like all ugly guys kind of watch Pete Davidson and go, "Oh man, it's it is possible if you're funny." It is. Cuz he's a goofy looking fuck. Oh yeah. He's a real goofy looking fuck. Yeah, but I mean like for her, is she just kind of using him for a little bit of clout chasing? Because, again, neither one of us had any clue who she was. Okay, in fairness, what is Pete Davidson known for other than where he puts his dick? I mean, people say he's funny. Okay, but from where? Like, what do you know him from? Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. That's all he's done. He did a movie that didn't do well. He so, did a movie? Yeah, it was called Staten Island, I think, is, oh. is what the name of it was. But... uh he hasn't really done much other than fuck a lot of hot chicks. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, at this point, is he a comedian or a porn star? I gotta go with porn star there. I feel he's done more fucking famous women than he has movies or TV shows in the last couple of years. He's just living the dream every man wants to. Just, you know, yeah, be in his dick. I say good for Pete Davidson. I'm not going to be one of those guys. Who, why, the, why is he fucking her? Why does he? Look, it's not like you were going to. Shut up. Don't ruin my dreams. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, man, I fucking hate him. He's fucking Kim Kardashian. Yeah, it's not like she had a choice between Pete Davidson and you. I was next on the list. Yeah, and you and you were right there. Like, I understand she was on the rebound from her marriage and everything, but I don't think she was at that point. Look, everyone knows when you leave Kanye, you have to fuck the anti-Kanye. I am the anti-Kanye. Chode Mode says, maybe I would have. Omega Dreads Gaming Channel says, I'm going to try. See, that's the problem. I'm trying to talk sense into this whole situation. People don't want to hear it. See, this is my chance. Oh, Stevie Lou points out he was in Suicide Squad. I forgot about that. All right, my fault. He was in Suicide Suicide Squad. But didn't that bomb terribly? Didn't the Suicide Squad movie do poorly? Well, it was, it was okay. Oh. But uh, most of the cast didn't return for the second one, so let you figure out how that means. Oh, man, I hate that guy. He's dating this really hot chick that I totally would have fucked if it wouldn't have been for him. Uh, easy for Aaron to say, look at who he married. Look, I, I am a funny guy. I married a very beautiful woman. The point's I, still the same. If he didn't marry her, do you, does, does that mean you were next? Like, I just, it's not Look, man, list. let me tell you something. For those of you who are married to ugly people, let me tell you the thing about being married to a very beautiful woman. You got to treat them right all the time. It's not like you're uggos that you can just keep in a basement and throw them a waffle every once in a while and call it a day. Yeah, but it's so easy. I, I know, but you got to treat your really hot ones right. You got to love them all the time. Working on training mine to clean the litter pan. Yeah, see, I can't. I can't do that. You know, we have to make decisions. You have to pick up her poops for. Her. We have to make decisions together. It's terrible, right? All these guys who just get to go, yeah, ah, dude. fucking I mean, fuck. I don't know. Yeah, sure, she's hot and all, but you got to, like, listen to her and respect her and shit. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. It is a lady. I've learned how to respect and love and appreciate and take care of and all of this other stuff, you know? I've had to learn to be a good man. See, you'll be a piece of shit if you marry an ugly chick because you won't be pushed and challenged to do well. But if you marry a nice hot chick, then you got to push yourself to be a better man. I, I don't know. I just, I just said yes to the deal because I got two donkeys out of it. I mean, it's just... <laughs> I shot huge tracts of land. <laughs> uh, Kane J uh, saying that... Uh, hold on. let's We'll find it here. Beta! There you go. Uh, if you want to be happy the rest of your life, never make a pretty woman your wife. Oh, come on. It's one... I can tell you right now, it's lovely. Uh, JJ says you uh, have to have no jealousy either because whenever she is out, especially alone, she is definitely getting hit on and stared. Yes, that's the other thing. You have to be a very confident, uh, you know, aware person because if you have a hot girlfriend or you have a hot wife, people are going to look at them. Have you ever looked at a girl while, uh, that was very attractive and not really given a shit if she was with somebody or not, but you had to look at her? Well, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say I didn't give a shit. I did try to cut his brakes. But I mean... Yeah, other than that, you know. Yeah. Just, no, yeah, no. I'll, I'll stare at a sweet piece of ass if it walks by. We were uh, we were at the liquor store the other day, and some... I think I, I got a little peek at him. I think he was an older dude, because it seems mm -hmm. like an older dude thing to do. Um, 
one guy whistled at April. He gave her like the old whistle. And you look at that, and that's where that guy was saying, if you have a hot wife, you got to be secure uh, in, in all of that stuff because he whistled, and I just, instead of me going, who the fuck, who is the fucking guy? I just kind of did one of these. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> Same fucking guy. Just driving by a chick. I mean, I'm standing right there. What? I can't whistle. Sorry, guys. Yeah, get one of those. And April looks back. She goes, huh? Oh, that guy just whistled at me. And you're like, motherfucker. <laughs> that's when you got to jump up. And, yeah, that's mine. Yeah, man. that's. See, now, yes, but you're right. See, you're already prepared. You're already ready. You stand up there and go, I touched that with my dick. <laughs> I'm so happy. I holster my heart on in that harlot. <laughs> that is a classy way to say it. Yeah. That is a very classy way to say it. Fun to enunciate. Uh, yes. It's like, uh, I, I almost feel like when they compliment her, I almost want to say, oh, thank you very, that's very nice. You know? I do the, the Ace Rothstein. I go, thank you. Thank you very much for that compliment. Cocky fuck. I fired him the next day. <laughs> Looking good, toots. Yeah, I do very well for myself. Thank, Thank you. you. I've been known to, you know, it's my jokes and my dick. It certainly ain't my abs. Am I right, my friend? <laughs> uh, I, you know, it's kind of like uh, sending the the dick pics to women. I doubt any successful relationships uh, have started with the whistle. You know. Well, I, I knew it was love at first blow. If you get the whistle and you go up to a guy, you go, oh, thank you for whistling. He's like, ah, fuck. I didn't have anything planned past the whistle. You weren't supposed to come here and talk to me. Ah, girls. And they shit. Just starts vigorously masturbating. I don't know what else to do. Shits himself, starts whacking it, and takes off all at the same time. JJ says, you take it as a congratulations, like after you win a trophy. Exactly. Because they're possessions. Yeah. Uh, right. They're women, and they belong to you. <laughs> Oh, see, April starts uh, getting... Are you the head of your wife? <laughs> are you are you the head of your wife? Beta bear. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, Shane F. says, Aaron gets embarrassed and says, not in front of my wife. <laughs> oh, you mean her. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I get, I get confused at times like this. Uh, by the way, it's very interesting to note, April... All over the chat when it was about murdering me. Yeah. Not all over the chat when I'm calling her smoking hot. Uh, there's that's I, I, that's like a an analytical moment. Well, she I doesn't think. she doesn't need to affirm something she already knows. Oh, okay. Well, she, oh, that means she doesn't know she's going to murder me yet. <laughs> Zilch says, "What you do is you hold your fingers out for the dude to sniff." <laughs> See, it's nice to have other guys that have attractive women so they, they can understand what you're supposed to do. If you're a guy who goes, oh, I don't know if I want to be with someone who's really hot. People would hit on her all the time. It's like, oh, then you're not. You can't do it then. You can't do it. Uh, Triple N says, oh, she lurking. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Man, your see, wife is really hot. Yeah, dude. If you're going to ride, ride quality. That's what I say. Uh, Brittany says, uh, now we know what gets April going. Exactly. My my murder. My murder at her hand. Uh, she can only <laughs> come to the CSI theme. The mood says if they... <laughs> I have it on my phone. I hold it up to her ear. <laughs> and then I go, all right, I'm ready to wrap it up. So here you go. <laughs> Uh, she puts on sunglasses after sex. No idea why. Yes. Uh, Brittany <laughs> says, my husband laughs at that kind of thing when it happens to me. Right. <laughs> I always, I hear it and I just turn around like this and go, still got it. Curly Adam says, your third wife is going to be the one that murders you. New boot goofing. No, I am only one wife. Just this one. That one hasn't been born yet. We can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No. Absolutely not. Why would we say something so horrific? Uh, Triple N says, chicks do like murder porn. Yeah, I mean, we we learned that today. That's for sure. Uh, hey, you know, uh, I'm not going to say our boy because uh, of what he's associated with now. But you know we've uh, watched a lot of Andrew Callahan's videos and mm -hmm. enjoyed them. I think he's the Channel Five News guy. I like that. Yeah, Channel Five News guy used to be all gas, no breaks. Um, I will. I, I don't know how many of you have heard it yet. 
Uh, uh oh. Well, we've got an uh oh for Andrew Callahan. Oh no. There's an oopsie out there. Uh, <sighs> any guesses? Don't read the chat. Any guesses? Did something inappropriate with a lady? Allegedly. Oh, shit. And not a lady. A dog. No, <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, a multiple women. Oh. Uh, no, I mean, uh, you know oh, what? Because yeah. I didn't read gay off of him, so I'm like, all right, if it's not a lady, then he's going uh, pooch pounding or uh, something. No, 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 no. See, I, I'm sorry. I may have led you the wrong way. Uh, right. No, I wasn't saying uh, worse. I meant worse than that multiples. Oh. I thought you were going to accidentally go to dude, but you just kind of. I just. uh Jumped over the. I mean, he's a big thing. name. Maybe he's gone. Well, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Andrew Callahan, who is not, by the way, an attractive man. So, how did he pull it off? I well, the well, the, allega- the allegations are that he didn't have to pull it off. He just <laughs> did. Uh, misconduct allegations against all gas no break star Andrew Callahan have come to light. A TikToker don't fuck anyone with a TikTok. Also, that's a new rule. Uh, new rule, okay. If you fuck anyone with a TikTok, you're gay. Uh, Join us like next everyone time. Everyone has a fucking TikTok now. Yeah, well, gotta get rid My of it. My dick has a TikTok. I gotta can't get, jerk it. Gotta get rid of TikTok. No fucking anyone with a TikTok. It's just... Ugh. <laughs> no. Do you really want to have a partner who's sitting there filming shit and they're cutting it up and posting it up on the... Stop. No TikToks. So uh, a TikToker recently took to the video sharing platform to share her experience with the 25-year-old content creator. Because you see, uh, Johnny, what we do now is we uh, we just go to TikTok to make our accusations. We don't go to the police anymore. Yeah, we just let it happen in a court of public opinion. Right. You just do it on TikTok, and then everyone can judge the guy, and then you don't have to go through a trial. It's really great. And you don't have to actually prove that you're not full of shit. Right. You just go ahead and you make your accusations. I have a lot of respect for women who go to the police. I think it's incredibly brave. I think it takes a lot of balls. It takes a lot of courage. Um, Or I have a lot of respect for people who just like, look, I'm going to get through this, whatever. There's this middle way of doing it that I don't. I respect the shit or get off the pot thing. Like if women go, look, I don't want to go through it. It's too embarrassing, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go and report. Okay, I'm going to move on with my life. I'm going to get past it. Or if they go, fuck it, I'm going to go to the police right now. Those two things Perfect. It's the people who are like, you know what I'll do? And then these are the people who make me believe that there's more to the story than what they're saying. It's like, I'm going to go to a place of public opinion. I'm going to let them know this horrible thing happened to me. I'm going to blame that person publicly, and I'm not going to file any kind of criminal charges. Wait, are you implying that maybe these people are curating their stories to put their best face forward, and maybe it's not all? Right. When you go to TikTok to report that a guy's been a sex pest, I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I feel like for me, it was like, hey, this guy is a perv. Like, you are a TikTok whore. Yeah. Like, the Chris D'Elia thing I get because he didn't really, I don't think there's any crimes, like, actual law breaking that he did. Other than maybe the age stuff. Mm. Depending on how old they were. And there's always a blurry line on that. Uh, depending on how old they were. But in terms of, like, him, it's not illegal to text a girl and say, get on all fours right now and send me pictures. Because you can just tell that person to go fuck themselves. Especially if you do it on Snapchat, because those don't get saved. Oh, Chris, you can save those. <laughs> that was his reaction, too. <laughs> he just sat there just, silently. Just kind of eyebrows raised, like, oh. oh now, fuck. since then, several other women have claimed that the internet personality... Uh, violated them yeah but it's Let's easy to say. jump on the bandwagon at this point there's already a freaking mob and flaming torches you just light one up yourself i to me when it's one i go okay these two had a bad experience like the aziz ansari accusations aziz ansari was tra- uh, accused by some woman of being a me too guy and then when he told his story you go oh Okay, uh, this makes sense now. They had a Netflix and chill night. He kept he went for it. She said no. She stayed. They kept watching the movie. He went for it again a little later. She said no again. And then after the second or third rejection, he went, Do you, uh, can I just give you some money so you can get an Uber or a cab and get the fuck out of here? Made it very clear that, like, oh, we're not doing the thing I wanted to do, right. so I don't know what you thought this was for, but no. Yeah, Aziz Ansari is one of those guys who was unfairly me too because it was like he wanted to fuck a girl. She didn't want to, so he sent her packing. 
Which, by the way, is fine because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, you. Uh, we don't. This this weird thing too now, like with the trans people. You, you got to accept us. You have like you have to let me stay in your apartment, even though I have no intention of putting out. Like you forgot what the whole deal was here. Um, right. If if she says no, wouldn't you rather have him send her packing than like keep her there and try to force himself on her? Yeah, and if she says no repeatedly, isn't it clear that both of you need to find someone else to hang out with because you have right. different ideas of a fun time? So TikToker cornbread casserole. See, this is why you got to, if you want to report someone, you got to go to the right places. Because when I hear that cornbread casserole is making a TikTok about Andrew Callahan, I'm like, okay, how serious are we? Uh, TikToker cornbread casserole was the first among many women to come forward and comment on the issue. In the video, she claimed that Andrew Callahan wore her down and coerced her into getting intimate on the night of the alleged assault. So, okay, we've got to be careful about shit like this. Wore her down and coerced her into getting intimate. So, he tried to fuck. It's kind of like the Aziz Ansari thing. Tried to fuck. She said no. Tried to fuck later. She said no. Tried to fuck again. She went, okay, sure. Well, he broke me down and he coerced me. Well, the minute the guy wants to fuck and that's what he's there for and you don't want to, this is the advice I would give women. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Uh, at what point, like, if if he's throwing out the uh, the move and you have to shut him down, why are you not just like, hey, that's not going to happen? I'll tell you why. Because they're like, well, I still want to hang out with him. He doesn't want to hang out with you. Yeah. Don't hang out with people who don't want to hang out That's with exactly him. what I'm talking about, though. It's like, I want to hang out with him. I want to be around him. Like, yeah, but he's looking for a very particular thing. Right. And if you're hanging out with him, he assumes you're going to do the thing. Well, I don't want to do the thing, but I just want to hang out with him. Well, he can't find someone to do the thing if he's hanging out with you. I don't care about that. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, wore her down is the epitome of never having to take responsibility. All right. We've all been in high school. But who wore it better? We, we've all been in high school. We've all been in college. We've all had those times where you're hooking up and you're, you know, you're kind of, you're trying to finesse it. You're trying, you know what it's called? Trying to get laid. You're trying to get laid. Now, if she says, to me, if she says no after you try, you stop trying. And then if you, you know, things, you're hanging out and then an hour later you want to see if, you know, things have changed a little bit and she's uh, in my opinion as long as you stop at no it's fine it's okay i mean that 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 sounds reasonable but what would i know oh i'm gonna go start my car <laughs> you piece of shit you son of a bitch uh, he asked too much and she got pissed. Yeah, get the fuck out of there. If you don't like him asking so much, leave. He's not into you. He doesn't like you as a person. He wants you as a trophy. He wants to fuck your head off. I mean, he'll probably be disappointing. He won't. Every guy's like, oh, I want to fuck her brains out. Whether or not you fuck her brains out is kind of up to how she's enjoying how you fuck. You technically don't have any control over whether or not you're going to fuck her brains out. That's like her saying, I'm going to stick it in them so hard. Like, if that's the case, we better have a discussion first. Uh, I will tell you that he did eventually get consent. And that's the main point is that he eventually got consent because he wore me down. This is not, this is not something, I'm sorry, but this situation is not something that the public needs to know about. This is something that, here, here's what this rises to. This doesn't rise to the level of a crime. This doesn't, rise to the level of prosecution this rises to the level of you two having a conversation about hey i gotta tell you you were a little aggressive aggressive the other night if we're gonna see each other again you gotta fucking back it off because that wasn't cool that's what that is but also i would say that if a guy keeps trying to finger blast you and you said no to him twice you go hey you know what let's call it a night maybe we'll go out again maybe we won't you get the fuck out of there you just leave uh he told me he needed a place to stay for the night. He had some sort of falling out with one of his crew members or whatever, and I was very clear about the fact that we are not hooking up. Okay, that's good. That's great. And, and, I, and I will say this. As we read this, he does seem like a creep. He looks like a creep. 
Andrew Callahan looks like a creepy dude. He kind of wears it on his face. So, again, be mindful of the company you keep. If you see a creepy guy and he's saying creepy shit and he's doing creepy things, he might be a creep. There's a good chance that he's a creep. Uh, he gets in my bed and wears me down to the point where I eventually do agree to do things that I wasn't proud of, and I wasn't proud of them and thought it was my fault for so long that I continued to be nice to him. Oh, boy. Oh, we have the actual... Uh, we have the TikTok here? All right, let's oh, check wow. it out. Uh, he... Yeah. Well, what do we want to... Well, let's hear. Let's let's play first and then decide. I never in a million years thought that I would be making this video, and I'm shaking because I've tried a couple different times and haven't been able to get my point across. But um, I don't like seeing abusers get platforms. And my abuser, an abuser, Andrew Callahan, also known as All Gas No Breaks, Channel Five, and whatever his new HBO show is called. I forget. By the way, I can see that HBO show going away now. Oh, and I, uh, I totally... This, by the way, this is creepy. Like, don't get me wrong. He is, like, those guys who keep going after two, three, four no's at his age. Like, look, high school, early college, people in their late teens, early 20s, they don't have a lot of experience. Guys are trying to fuck all the time. You know, I, to, again, to me, if you stop it, no. Okay, there, there is aggressive behavior, but it's not illegal. To me, you just got to make sure you stop it. No, and you don't go unless you get a yes. Well, I completely agree with that, but I also want to say for me, I, uh, personal experience and stuff, I have trouble just believing a lady is like, well, this is what happened. It's like, it is? That is that's what happened? Because I could totally see what happened to me, her just kind of playing it off a little bit, and she doesn't want to, she doesn't really want to push it too hard because, you know, I don't want to chase off this guy. He needs a place to stay. You're just going to be super nice and let him stay at your place? Yeah, you can't. The guy's got fucking money. He can get a goddamn yeah. hotel. And we're not, look, we're not doing this to attack women. We're doing it to kind of educate in a way. Well, like, I these guys are fucking creepy. These guys are going to lie and cheat and steal to try and get what they want. And if they look like Andrew Callahan, they're probably a creep. And like I just said, for me, the problem I have is that it's like, oh, Channel 5 and whatever his new HBO show is called I Forget. Yeah, it's called You've Got a Lawyer. <laughs> Get. Um, has been plastered all over my news feed, and I've tried to come to him person to person and try to get him to take accountability for what he did, but his version of what happened the night that he assaulted me is so skewed. So okay, so we've got two people with two different stories. You know what this kind of strike? Because I'm kind of going back and forth between... He tried really hard to get laid. She relented. She regrets it. And then I'm going between that and he's a creepy guy who's a little too aggressive with trying to get it. Where I'm at now is I think things went bad after they fucked and now they both have different accounts of what happened. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you that he did eventually get consent. And that's the main point is that he eventually got consent because he wore me down. He told me he needed a place to stay for the night. He had some sort of falling out with one of his crew members or whatever. And I was very clear about the fact that we are not hooking up. Then don't, then don't, then don't bring him, him into your don't. house. Don't. don't I bring need a, a place to crash for the night. We are not hooking up. Don't bring someone of the opposite sex into your home if you're saying we're not hooking up. Especially, Unless they're like a relative or close friend or whatever. But yeah, like, especially if one of those people very much has an interest in you or... Right. In the other person. Gals, most of the time, if a guy goes into a house or a room with you, he wants to fuck. Not even saying he's a bad guy for thinking that. But most of the time, if he goes with you Just somewhere alone, he wants to fuck. Uh, that, that, we could save ourselves a lot of uncomfortable situations. We could save ourselves a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of inconvenience, a lot of miscommunication. If we just remember this one simple rule. Just because a woman takes you somewhere doesn't mean she wants to fuck you. Mm -hmm. But if a guy wants to go somewhere alone with you, he wants to fuck you. I mean, guys I have to remember that not everything from women is a sign they want to fuck you. And women have to remember that most of the things from guys are signs they want to fuck you. I just really like playing checkers. And Johnny's a homosexual. <laughs> He gets in my bed and wears me down to the point where I eventually do agree to do things that I wasn't proud of. Okay. Kick him out of your fucking bed. Tell him, get the fuck out of here. Why is he still in your house if he eventually gets in my bed and wears me down? The, 
The getting in the bed thing. I yeah, no like getting in the bed. If he needs a like, place to stay, he doesn't need to stay in your bed. He can stay on the couch. Yeah, he can crash on the couch. And if he doesn't understand the couch crashing availability thing, like I said, I don't know if you're aware of this, that guy can afford a hotel. And like you said, Andrew Callahan, yeah, he can afford to stay somewhere. Yeah. Right. I don't know, man. I, I think she got, I do think she got duped. I do think he was overly aggressive, it sounds like. But it also sounds like there's a second side to this story that would illuminate a lot of things. I could easily believe her thinking that there was a relationship in this and him thinking it was a one-night stand. Yeah. And then the next day, when reality rears its ugly head and he's like, oh, I'm not going to talk to you ever again. And she's like, oh, well, now this is rape. That's happened before. And I wasn't proud of them and thought it was my fault for so long that I continued to be nice to him after the situation. He wouldn't leave my house the next morning. Um, and then as time went on and I processed things, I thought, you know what? Just because eventually I said, okay, whatever, because I was trying to just get the whole night over with so that it could be morning so that he could leave. Um, it's it Kick him the fuck out. Girls yeah. need to be meaner. You, you girls need to, I, and I understand it's not in your nature as much. You need to be meaner. And I understand like it's a big guy and you're scared he could hurt you or something like that. But a, a guy like that, you got to kick him the fuck out. You just got, she should have kicked this guy out. And, and told him, look, quit trying to fucking finger blast Am me. I the only guy that's ever been told to fuck off? Like, I feel like... Right. Oh, am I only finding the, like, the really mean women and, like, all the ones that I guess are pliable are just evading me? Like, what the... Doesn't discount the fact that I told him no. So um, I told him no so many times prior to this. I said, I'm tired. I'm not really feeling it. I came up with any excuse that I possibly could to just get him off of me. And he still found a way to coerce me into things that I didn't want to do. And this is really hard for me to say. I never thought I would come forward, but it's even more hard to have to relive the trauma that I endured every single day by seeing this man as a social justice warrior, as someone who cares about human rights. That's true. Like he is, I didn't realize this until I watched some interview with him. He is like a, and you so, wouldn't, he's like a big time lefty. Oh. And it's really funny that all these big time lefties end up being creepy dudes. Like, they end up being weirdo. Not a lefty, creepy. just saying. Yeah. Just, just saying. Not a lefty. <laughs> yeah, like, I would really like to see, because, you know, and, and April and I have had this conversation on the show before. Men are, look, look, the right answer is men should behave themselves. Absolutely, 100%. They shouldn't cross the line like this guy did. They shouldn't do it. But they're not going to. So we need women to be sharper about how the game is played. I think we need to teach our our daughters, our our sisters, our wives, whatever, how the game is played to stay away from these kind of tricky situations like this woman found herself. Yeah, I'm going overboard. I'm doing self-defense classes. I'm like, she's going to learn taekwondo. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, She's going to break your dick off and choke you with it if she doesn't want to do that. Thing. We're going to give you a fucking bow staff. How's that? You're going to know how to use it. But yeah, you got to... I, I wouldn't have let him in in the first place. Yeah. I mean, I've had friends who needed a place to stay, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, man. I got a family and all that shit. And they weren't and, trying to fuck you. And they weren't even trying to fuck me. They just needed a place to sleep, and I'm just like, I, I can't do it. I just, just know you snore and you fart in your sleep, and I don't want to put up with that. Get a platform. You shouldn't be supporting him. And at the end of the day, like, I've told close friends of mine, I've tried coming out about this before, and he texted me saying that it basically ruined his life and that his life was over now because of things that I said, and other women have come forward to me, but this is my first time publicly talking about it on a platform like TikTok because I hope it gets traction. I hope people listen to me. I hope that if something similar has happened to you, that you know that that's not your fault. It wasn't my fault. He's not. Like, the reason I believe her is a lot of it's because he's fucking goofy, gross, and creepy looking. And I can see him being Asperger's-y enough that he sees the no as not like a no in totality, but a no one time. Because think about it. Aziz Ansari got a no, and he said, well, then get the fuck out of here. Yeah. If we're not fucking, you got to go home. Well, I mean. Whereas this guy kind of weaseled his way into her house. Yeah. And then he went in there, and he just kept, you know, Picking away, picking away, picking away until he, he fucked her. Again, maybe it's because I'm a guy, but I'm sitting there screaming, like, as the chick, like, why did you, like, where did you see this going? It just at a certain point, I'm like, uh, you got to send him packing. Like, he's got to leave. Yeah. I mean, I, I think so, too. Don't get me wrong. But, like, could you just, 
like I said, I, I just I would like it if guys would just fucking behave themselves, but I know I know that's not going to happen. Uh, by the way, our chat is going, going uh, nuts. bananas over this right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, Marshall McMarshallson says, oh, this guy, yikes. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> kind of the point I was making. Um, oh, I, oh, please, I refuse to believe any adult woman doesn't know how a dude who wants to get laid operates. This chick is mad because she was promised something she didn't get. Look, I'm not saying that is the scenario. I'm saying I could see that being the scenario. Yeah, I, look, man, it's hard because this is why this shit should be handled by the authorities. Well, I guess there's no authorities. He didn't break a law. Yeah. But, like, this is why this shit shouldn't be handled on TikTok. That's what frustrates me. The court of public opinion. We're all experts. Right. Get the black light. I want to see what glows. So, I yeah, it's the ugly fuckling says a retard took advantage of another retard. Yeah, I... Union Jack says, you think this is a unique thing that happened to you, lady? Uh, actually, no. Other women have come forward and said this is kind of his thing. He kind of just kind of pushes and keeps pushes going and, pushes. and keeps going and keeps going. And you finally say, all right, fine, we can fuck. He's a thrill of the hunt kind of guy. I'll say this. Can't, can't. And maybe Andrew Callahan can't. Maybe he's not a real big ladies guy. Maybe he's not into chicks, man. But um, when we were younger, like we've had fucks like that. They're not good. You don't feel good about them. You, you worked can, way too hard. You for worked it. way too hard. You can kind of tell she's not totally into it. I, I don't. I don't like that kind of shit. It's not fun. Like, don't you? You want the other person to be enthusiastic about it. You want the other person to be excited about it. And yeah, I have a really bad marketing game for sex. I'm just always like, you know, you can leave. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Sandy Squatch says, "Whoops, God, our chat just it's just flying, flying, and now I can't find it." Uh, please, don't you want it? I know you want it. Please, oh, come on, let's do it. I know you want to. Please, no, that's it. Case closed. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, look, that guy, uh, Andrew Callahan, apparently has a more persistent game. Uh, could he sue her for slander because she said yes and gave consent eventually? No, I don't think he can sue her for that because... Because if that's what happened, it's not right. slander. If that's what happened, right. She's not saying that, you know, the guy should be in jail or anything. Uh, Marshall McMarshallson says they both have regrets. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're thinking. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling like... They it, both regret it. It wasn't as fun as someone thought it would be. And like I said, I think one person very much had a one-and-done sort of mentality, and someone else thought maybe there was more to this. Frank Nutterbutter says, your, all, your eyes always give you away. You can believe her if you want, but the last clip proved to me she is directly making stuff up. Don't know how much, but some of this is fantasy. Psychiatry is amazing. Oh, okay. Well, I, are you a psychiatrist, Grank Nutter Butter? If so, that's frightening to me. And what are you doing Wednesday? I need help. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fat chick wanted a relationship. He banged her and ghosted her, and she regretted it. Yeah, I, there might be some of that in there where she wanted to be with the Channel 5 guy. Yeah, she saw this as her, like, you know, oh, I found this person, and I like a lot of what he thinks. We're very politically oriented in the same way, so this is yeah, great. Yeah, that might be it. Uh, King Cold says, I'm telling you, if anyone is regretting this night of passion, it's Andrew. Oh, I'm sure, oh yeah, I'm sure now he is especially. now. especially. But uh, beforehand, I don't know. I, I'd like to think Andrew has a mirror and, and some self-consciousness. Right. Uh, Cornbread Casserole uploaded another TikTok video where she showed evidence that they knew each other. She shared a text message where the two were coordinating about the night they planned to meet. Her video also included a picture of them posing in front of a mirror. In the video, she shared the experiences of how other women anonymously came forward. Several stories included the 25-year-old Channel 5 journalist. He's 25? Yeah. That is the most shot-out 25-year-old I've ever seen in my life. I just And by the way, he's probably younger here in this picture. He's probably 23, 24. That's a 25-year-old man. He looks like he left uh, you know, audio video production class yeah. like last week, but I'm I mean, I don't know. This cannot be William Wallace. I am prettier than this man. No, that uh, was a woman. <laughs> Same one. So she here's another update from this lady. Uh she made another video about Andrew Callahan on reddit feel free to do that but i can't mentally handle this anymore this was andrew and i 
agreeing to hang out when he was in St. Pete. <laughs> this was us the night at the bar. Ew. Okay. How slutty are you dressed right now? Like, you, you got no upper shirt on? What, have you been drinking? Ah, like, that's. I got to be honest. That's pretty conservative. She doesn't have her it. ass out or anything like that. What What is this, 1952? She's posing for... A picture. In Look, a she likes guy. her titties. She wants her titties out. I get it. But my point is, if you're putting your titties out, don't be surprised when you attack someone who wants titty meat. Well, no, I look, I understand. Like, yeah, but well, then you get into the thing where, oh, if a woman dresses with her tits out, can she not hang out with someone? Uh, she can hang out if with she, someone. If she has her tits out like that, does she have to fuck a guy? No, she doesn't have to fuck him, but she has to be well aware that maybe oh. that's what he's after. You're so, oh, I, yeah, yeah, I see. You're saying that like, oh, don't think that he's just hanging out with you because you have a great personality here yeah. at the bar. Because again, your yeah. tits are out. The chopper is God, and I am his son, Jesus Christ. He does, he looks like Steve Coogan from Tropic Thunder. Tug Speedman, he can't cry, he can't cry. Who's the grip? The lead grip. The key grip. Punch you Hit punch. that director in the face really fucking, fucking hard. hard. Sorry, man. <laughs> Great going, Fats. You just got us all killed. Um, we went into the bathroom to take a photo because this bar, it's the bathroom has its own Instagram page and it's just something people Ew. do at that bar. Um, also, so you guys go to gay bars together. That's adorable. So wait a minute. You wanted to pose for a picture in a public place where a lot of people post pictures and share them on Instagram because you want to join this whole. It just seems like you wanted to be part of a social thing. And like I said, if if it was a one and done scenario, especially if he did, like she said, like kind of push for it, like maybe she was right. like, I'm going to save it for the second date. He wanted and, to fuck. Yeah. And he's like, there's no date two in this equation. <laughs> This is, again, this is one of those scenarios where it's just, there's so many things in life where you go, all right, you go that way, you go that way. You two just don't talk to each other ever again. So, like I said many times before, I trusted him, um, you know, and people are blaming me for trusting him, and I did, you know, and it is what it is. This is a comment um, from someone who I've been speaking with about what happened to her. This is a message I got um about a year ago from someone who said that he uh, has no been known to associate with underage girls. This is the story from- well, I, I don't I, like these uh, has yeah. been known to, has been, like I, I saw your story and I finally gathered the courage to, to share mine on Insta the other day. Like right. there's too much of this, like it has to be me as the center of attention. And, and it's vague, like all the accusations, all the shit is vague. Like. Cosby, it's different because they're like, he put a drug in my drink and then he fucked me. That's an accusation. That's like coming out. Now you got people going, oh yeah, someone sent me a message which could be complete and utter bullshit saying, oh yeah, he's been known to hang out with underage girls. That sounds like something a woman who wanted to date you and it didn't work out would say. Like a, a smear rumor they would make up about you. I don't know, man. This it, It's too easy to jump on the bandwagon. There's no evidence. There's no... Like yeah. I don't count I don't count text messages of you saying this happened. That's not evidence. That's right. you saying it happened. That's hearsay. The same person of her experience. You can pause to read any of this stuff. No. Uh, this is about how he was canceled on his uh, French Quarter confession show when he went to Loyola because of the same sorts of allegations. You can pause to read that. Just another story. Um, Look, Andrew is a fucking lefty dude. A progressive lefty dude, so he probably tries to fuck progressive lefty chicks. And all of you guys, just, you're not direct with each other. You're not open with each other. You play these weird games where, like, you can take back consent later. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can do this. I, I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't feel bad for the guy. Look, I'm innocent after the fact. Like, but no. But I don't feel bad for him at all. Oh, I don't feel bad for him. Like, you you did this to yourself. You hung out with these, uh, these fucking chicks. You, you you don't hang out with a woman that you kind of have to really, you know, work on to, to fuck them if you're a famous guy. Well, I'd say just in general, don't date your fans. Like, try to meet somebody is somewhat organically. Like, I just right. feel like, oh, I've got a lot of people that like the stuff I do. I'm going to hit up my fan base and be like, hey, I'm in this town. Who's, like, open to get some, you know, deep dick? And, like, it's just, that's a bad I'm sorry, were you reading Chris Instagram? You son of a bitch. He's got a list 
uh, you know, women who he gets to give them head, give him head. Um, another instance of sexual assault. And I'm keeping these people private, and they've all consented to me sharing their stories. Yeah, because and I'm doing so because private. I've already put my face out there. I'm already getting all the hate. It is what it is at this point. There's another story. More people saying that they've heard about this before. Yeah. Another story. Um, my inbox is flooded with people saying that they are proud of me for speaking up because they're too scared to. So I'm sharing their stories for them. Um, this is absolutely taking a huge toll on my mental health. Okay, but uh, she's saying like, look, there. Uh, look at all these messages I have. Those messages aren't girls saying that he's doing this to them. A lot of these messages are people going, oh, I knew him when he was in high school and he used to do this, that, and this, and that, and the other thing. It's like, none of these things are crimes. Like, he might be a, I, I, I totally believe he'd be a creep. I think he's absolutely a creep. But he's not a criminal creep. And I, I <laughs> is it, is it okay for me to not like anybody in this story? Oh, yeah, totally. Okay, because I don't like anybody in this story. I, I, I don't know Andrew Callan. Callahan, Callahan, or Callan. You don't know Andrew Callan either. I don't know Andrew Callahan. I just know he makes damn good brake pads. But um, <laughs> here at Callahan Auto, I'm just saying, uh, it, he, the guy might be behaving inappropriately. I could totally see that. But one thing I don't like is this: like, oh, I'm coming forward with these accusations. Oh, I'm telling these people's stories, and I'm hiding their identities to protect their identities. Yeah. No, you can't share their stories now. I'm sorry. Andrew Callahan's name is on this and his life and career get affected by what you're accusing him of. So those He has people, a right to defend himself. Yeah, so those yeah. people don't get to namelessly be put up through you as more hearsay proof that, oh, this is totally true because everyone says they've heard the same thing. Yeah. Um, I can see that a lot of you don't want to believe women when they come forward about things. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. Pump the, this is why you, you fucking don't be a lefty guy and don't fuck lefty chicks. Just fucking don't. Stay away from them. Left of center liberals, fine. Moderates, fine. Conservatives, fine. Far right chicks, they're fucking crazy. Um, keep it within the, you know, Overton window, if you I will. Just, but like this whole thing about, hey, I'm coming up with this story that's very low on details and very low on specifics and very low on any kind of evidence. Oh, you just don't believe women who are victims? Like, no, I believe a shitload of them. I uh, I believe women who are victims, but you remember that part where you said you eventually gave consent? Yeah. That's where you waved goodbye to victimhood. So I'm sorry. It, like You made a bad decision. You got bamboozled, whatever, but you're not a that, victim. That's some so... Yeah, yeah, like every bad sexual experience is not worthy of a cancellation or a crime. But like... That's some sociopathic shit where you go, oh, you don't believe every word I say about this very vague story I've thrown out there? Well, then you must not believe women. It's like, no, 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 no. I can believe women, but also go, hey, the stuff you're giving us is like really vague and it seems kind of shitty to end a guy's career over this. Like almost this should be fleshed out more before it's presented. But. I don't know. That argument just kind of, I don't know, triggers me, pisses me off, whatever you want to call it, just because it's like, oh, you don't believe me? You must not believe victims when they come forward. Like, that's the same people go, oh, you don't want to fuck trans people, you trans folk. Yeah, it's like, right. no, I just have rules that you're ignoring. Um, I can see that a lot of you don't want to believe women when they come forward about things. And um, well, I believe you. I believe the story you're telling me. But what I'm saying back to you is, what do you want me to do about it? Like, it's not a crime. What happened isn't a crime. You had an awkward sexual encounter with a guy. You had bad sex. It, you're young. It's gonna happen. The best you can do out of this is go, I'm not gonna bring these strange fucking creeps into my home anymore. I'm certainly not going to let them into my bed. And if a guy's trying to fuck me and I'm not feeling like fucking, I'm gonna kick him out. Silver lining, at least you got sex. You got sex. I've just got to say that says a lot about your personality and oh, who you oh, are. Oh. Um, this is the hardest I thing I've say, ever had to do. And if you think I'm making it up. I don't think you're making it up. That's on you. Yeah, I, but I don't think you're making it up. I don't think you're making it up. I think you're exaggerating. I think you're embellishing. And I think uh, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Because, uh, you know, I was forced to come onto TikTok and share my story through a handle I have on TikTok. So it's not like, you know, 
I'm actually saying, hi, my name is so-and-so, and and this is what happened to me, and now I've got people combing through my life or calling my place of employment saying, you know what, you better cancel this lady because she's a lying, like, you, again, there's a very big difference between going after a public person and then saying, oh, well, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna admit to, like, what happened or what's going on. I'm just gonna say it's not really my fault. I was, I was coerced. I was pushed into it. Yeah, uh... The worst part is because she's only a victim, she won't learn a lesson, says Skeezy. I mean, look, people should behave themselves. Absolutely. But you also, it doesn't hurt to kind of to protect yourself as well. It doesn't hurt. Uh, an ugly fat chick got me drunk and took advantage of me. I woke up the next day ashamed. Should I have gone to the police? No, he had a bad night. Yeah, but that's the thing. How many guys have done this? Like, look, all right, she got consent from me eventually because I was half asleep with a chub and she just kind of climbed on top and did what she wanted. Yeah, right. Like, it just doesn't... Uh, Brittany Martini says, I'm tired of people conflating regret sex with rape. And that does seem like what What's this happening? was. She fucked a famous guy. Uh, she didn't get what she wanted out of it. It was an awkward night of sex to begin with. So now she's like, well, I clearly regret this. I wish I hadn't done this. So I'm going to out him for how our sex went. You're going to out him for a bad fuck, basically. And that to me is a little... uh... I mean, if he was just somebody at your office and you guys were talking about this with like all people, you know, then fine, whatever. But like I said, the whole like, I've got to go on TikTok and I've got to jump out in front of everyone and be like, look, pay attention to me so I can tell you about how I was victimized. Yeah. Back to the lab says, I don't even think he's a creep. He lacks game and he barely scraped by into consensual sex. Big whoop. I mean, that's pretty accurate. He barely scraped by. Uh, The one thing. Okay. I'll own my shit. Uh, Instead of me trying to criticize this guy or criticize this woman, I'll own my shit. There is something about the asking multiple times and the getting the no and continuing to go and continuing to, you know, uh, try and get it. That's a little off-putting to me. But again, just because that's off-putting to me doesn't mean that this guy should lose all his jobs and he should be canceled and me too and all that shit. I, I have a little shame in his game. That's it. But again, she said it herself. She did relent. She did end up consenting. So... I don't know. I've known women that are like, they'll like sit there and tell you like, no, I'm not interested in that. I don't want to have sex with you. But then they'll also be physical with you. It's like this weird fucking mixed signal thing. Yeah. And I, I, and, and I don't like that. That's probably why I get so like, Ugh. but for Andrew, I will say this. If you're in that situation, you got to go. Nope. Never mind. You said no. We're done. Like, yeah, to me, like, no. If you're going to say no, you can't do the making out thing. You can't keep being affectionate. Because if you're still affectionate with the guy, once you start making out... It's it's game on. It's not like there's this firm line between making out and sex. It's a gradient. Like, when you're making out, there's a gradient. You're going to the tits. You're taking clothes off. You're squeezing an ass. You're maybe, you know, sliding a finger down. You know, whatever. Sorry to give everybody boners. Slipping a didge. You're slipping a didge. Um... You know, there's a gradient, and you stop him at different points on the gradient. So if you say, he goes in for the pussy, and you say no, and then you guys keep making out, you can rest assured that he's probably going to keep going down the gradient again to see what he can get. If you got if you're going to say no, it's got to be no. Yeah, it's got to be all the way. And it's, again, no yeah. means not staying over, not being in right. my bed. No means no. Exactly. Uh, let's go to Mikey. Mikey, what's going on, buddy? Yeah, I think all these broads need to go back and watch Paper Tiger because Bill Burr laid it out perfectly. No means no. No. Right. That means no. No. Stop. No. That doesn't mean no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no means no. I agree with that 100%. But no, and let's keep making out. That no then becomes a let's table this for a later discussion. Yeah. Yes. So. True. uh, All right, man. Thank you very much for the call. Bye. All right. That, by the way, I got to say this about Mikey. Perfect call. That was a perfect call. Uh, That was nice, concise, to the point. There. You know what? I'm. I am interested in people's opinions on this particular topic. This one's always a, a, a hot button issue. 
mm. uh, this kind of stuff in general. So I, I just put the phone number in the chat uh, if you'd like to uh, if you'd like to chime in. There's the uh, the studio line if you'd like to call into the program. But you're right. That's uh, I was trying to figure out what my actual take on this was because it is really confusing. And you're right. You kind of nailed it with the look. If you're saying no, you got to cut off all the physical activity. Yeah, you can't give him no, but then have him have any sign of hope on this. Because then he's like, oh, well, I just got to wait this out. Right. I don't know if men and women see it different or this woman just sees it different. I don't know. But it's not making out this sex. It's, it's intimacy and then it's on a gradient. Like I said... Intimacy is on a gradient. There's not, hey, there's a hard line at making out. There's a hard line at fingering. There's a hard line at oral. There's a hard line at sex. She proved there was a gradient. She even said he wore her down. Right. Which and then, meant you were willing to eventually just give in for whatever the reason. But again, if you don't want to give in, kick him out. You gotta, Yeah, you got to cut it, all the physical stuff off. All right. Uh, sorry to anyone calling in on a restricted number. We can't take those because people have like shouted the N-word and stuff before when they have the anonymity and whatnot so you gotta you gotta call in with uh you gotta call in with a phone number that's all uh what'd you say i said i just screamed shaka zulu and i's come running for my good buddy john he's a good man and he's really jealous of my footwork when you're right you're right uh, Keith Sartell says, do you know why we are having sex? Because I'm stronger than you. Jesus, man. That doesn't sound like a consensual relationship. Doesn't sound good. I'm sorry, Restricted. I can't take the call. If you want to call back on a, a number, you can do that. I'm sorry, bud. Uh, back in high school and college, the girls would ask me if they could come over and give me some Scaldini. I don't know. They offered. There's something about the term <laughs> Scaldini that I never want to stop using. Does that mean, like, I assume that means a blow blowjob? Yeah, blowing them. Giving them some Scaldini. I've never heard that before. I don't know. I haven't either. I've never heard Scald. I've heard Skull, but I've never heard Scaldini. But I want it now. I want to keep it, hold it, and embrace it. Uh, I want to thank you guys before, uh, we got about an hour and, and change left in the show today, but I want to thank you guys very much for uh, not only getting past the uh, Tuesday evening goal, but getting past the Wednesday evening goal. Uh, and uh, we're now uh, or getting into the Wednesday evening goal, 2.05 away from Wednesday evening. So thank you guys very much. Uh, yes, if you do want to call in, uh, people are saying, should I call in? Well, don't. Well, either do or don't. There is no try is, uh, would be my opinion on the matter. All right, uh, we'll go through a few more comments, and then we'll go to the next story. Uh, and yes, RGZ Mac is right. Uh, hit the like button. Uh, I, I'm hearing we're close to 400. Uh, so let's go ahead and fire off that like button if you're enjoying the show. Hit like, and let's get her up to 400 likes for the day. Uh, Balls Deep says, some women just really need to be mentally and physically dominated in every aspect, right up to consent. Just say sorry afterwards. Well, shit, I don't, I don't think that's where we were going. Yeah, that's definitely not how I... Uh... Uh, yeah, that's that's going to end up getting you in trouble, buddy. Event down the road eventually. Call from Curly Adam. What's up, Curly Adam? Hey, you're hot. Thank you. Which Just, one of us was he talking to now? Now I need to know. Clearly me. Fine. I'm the hot one. You're Joey Fatone. <laughs> I'm the fat one. That was a perfect call. Uh, Rads of Chad says, if you keep kissing and shit, your first no isn't a no. It's a no at this minute. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. If if you keep being physical, if you keep being sexual after the no. You're giving him a yes sign and a no sign. That's a, like I said, that's a tabling dis uh, of the discussion, in my opinion. Uh, some really great news on the uh, uh, political front. It seems like uh, the House Republicans, they, they like change the rules. So... I don't know if you were following this weekend, but they were trying to pick a new Speaker of the House. Mm -hmm. They had a horrible time with Horrible. That. Okay, so you do know about that. Yeah. Because all these, like, really libertarian conservative Republicans didn't want the establishment guy, McCarthy, in there. So what they did was they... Uh, they held out. They held out, and then finally the, McCarthy and his people basically went, all right, we'll give you this, 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 and this. They gave this list of concessions... They said, this is what we'll do if you give McCarthy the votes and make him speaker. And they did. One of those things was they said, hey, we're the House of Representatives. We control the purse strings. 
Right. We can rescind funding to things. It doesn't have to go through the House, the Senate, the President. It's just, hey, we control the purse strings. We can say this is no good. Uh, the House Republicans have axed $72 billion from Joe Biden's plan for an 87,000-person large army of IRS agents as they make good on a campaign promise. Uh, the passage of the bill, which will die in the Democrat-run Senate, makes good on a pledge to voters to repeal 87,000 IRS. Oh, so this isn't going to happen. Well, I said it'll die in this, the bill oh. will repeal it. I thought that this was I thought this was one of those funding things like it wasn't a bill that could become a law. I thought it was like they this was some kind of uh procedural thing. No, I uh Oh wow, so this isn't going to do it. Well, that's fucking stupid then because then all these idiots who sold their vote then got nothing because it's just a, a Yeah, cuz we're going to make this freaking empty gesture of like look we made this law that we want to have and then this it's a they symbolic up, vote yeah as soon as it gets sent up to the senate the house republican majority passed a bill monday night to claw back 72 billion dollars from the irs making good on a pledge to repeal eighty-seven thousand irs agents well the legislation called the family and small business taxpayer protection act would take away all but $8 billion of the $80 billion passed in the Inflation Reduction Act to bolster the ranks of the IRS. The bill would be dead on arrival in the U.S. Senate, which is still controlled by the Democrats, 51 to 48, as Republican Nebraska Senator Ben Sass left to become president of the University of Florida on Monday. So it's 51-49 mm -hmm. at the moment. So the Democrats gained one in the Senate in this last election. And yep. So Fucking hey, Republicans are awful. Are you, are you ready for a whole bunch of laws that were or bills that we're gonna make to stop all this horrible corruption that goes literally across the room and yep, dies right and in the dies. Pocket? Even if twelve Senate, you know, the only good thing you can say about that is at least we can stop the bleeding of the spending in this administration and all. Oh, that no, no, they already wrote the checks. That law already went right. through. But at least for the next two years, like when, it when it's time for budget bills, I would really like to see Republicans start being actual Republicans and conserve something financially. Like, fuck it. Shut down the government then. Shut down the government and, uh, you know. You know, if you're saying, hey, we don't want any more debt. We want to get the debt under control. Then don't agree to pass a single budget until the fucking president agrees with you that, all right, we're going to get the budget under control. We're not going to raise taxes. We're not going to do any of this. Uh, you know, uh, we'll, we're willing to shut the government down for that. I think that would be wonderful. I think it'd be I, wonderful if they cut the military spending. That would be great too. I, I, every time the news is like, oh, but if they don't do this, uh, they'll, uh, th there'll be a shutdown. I, I pray for a shutdown every time. I don't care if the federal government shuts down. Well, plus for I'm us a libertarian. I, I don't want a government. We've so, been through two or three shutdowns oh, already. Oh, yeah. It wasn't that bad. Fuck it. It's great. Lockdowns were worse from COVID, actually, if you yeah. think about it. Exactly. You went through lockdowns. You can go through a shutdown. Uh, yeah, uh, Kane J says, one of the Democratic senators is now an independent. Yeah, what's her name? Uh, uh, Cinema. Kristen Cinema. Cinema. Uh, but I don't think she's... She didn't flip-flop, though. I think she still caucuses with the Democrats. Yeah. She Cinema. just doesn't want to be part of the party. But I'm going to watch her. Dude, if I'm the Republican, you're going to watch the cinema? I'm going to watch cinema. Uh, if I were the Republicans, I'd be, it'd be like a free agent in football. I'd be throwing every offer at her. I'd be like, hey, just vote with us on everything, and we'll make sure you get billions of dollars for your district <laughs> ah, <laughs> or your your state. That'd probably just piss her off. I mean, she's a white lady. She's probably used to a bunch of like overweight dudes walking up to her often or anything. They can't. That's, she's, you know, that's I think she's true. open. If they could get her to flip and Joe Manchin to flip, then they'd have the majority. Then we could get... Some, well, that, then you can't get any shit done because then the president will just tell you no. Because mm -hmm. now he can just veto shit. Isn't divided government awesome? It's like it's built to go nowhere. Right. Uh, even if 12 Senate Democrats voted alongside Republicans to override a filibuster threat, the legislation would be killed by President Joe Biden's veto pen. The Biden White House called it... so. You know, people were all talking about after the midterm elections. They're like, oh, the Republicans didn't win because they didn't get the House and the Senate. Well, even if the Republicans did get the House and the Senate, it's the same as them just having the House. Yeah, because they're still the president to right. deal with. And they were never going to get a veto-proof veto majority. That was never on the table. So 
you know, uh, whether or not the Republicans have the Senate doesn't really matter. And they need 60-40 to override a filibuster anyway. Uh, the Biden White House called it a reckless bill that demonstrated the House Republicans' top economic priority is to allow the rich and multi-billion dollar corporations skip out on their taxes. Yeah, because I'm sure those 87,000 IRS agents are going to be fucking with companies. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to go after Amazon and Google. I'm sure you're not going to use those to go after the mom and pop shops that you kind of try to Or people getting down. fantasy football money on PayPal and Venmo. That's that's what they're going to go after. Those 87,000 people are going to be tracking Venmo and PayPal. Cash App and PayPal transactions. That's exactly what they'll be doing. And they'll grab billions of dollars from it. They don't want to go after the big, rich corporations. Number one, they pay their salaries. Number two... They'll have lawyers fight it just for just out of principle. And while they do that, they'll also hire your replacement. So it's just, yeah, you go after the regular people who are stupid enough to keep voting for you anyway. Yeah, it's definitely going to become an audit on you know, they're saying while the number of audits on middle income earners may rise, it will rise in line with the audit rate of high earners, said Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. So how do these Fucking idiots vote this way for these people. They're saying they're going to audit more of you when you already pay enough taxes, but you're going to be tricked into voting for it because they'll be auditing the rich people too. How about less audits for everybody? How about less people paying taxes? How about taxes are evil and government is evil? Can we go back to that, please? I'm tired of people thinking that if you pay the government your taxes, they're going to do good things with it and paying your taxes is good. Show me one time in our fucking history where that's happened, where you've given the government your tax money and good things have happened. Social security is broke. Medicare and Medicaid runs at a loss every year. So even the things you would point at and go, they are good, they fucked them up. They're shot to shit. They're finished. It's over. You know what, uh, in my retirement plan, uh, my investment retirement plan, you know what my investment guy puts my social security income at when I'm uh, a senior citizen? Hundred percent, zero dollars a month, because in the investment world they don't believe Social Security is sustainable enough to give you a fucking dime when you're older. They've thought that for a while, but yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, they're going after the six hundred, says Raz of Chaz. Exactly. They passed a new law, basically, where you now have to report mm -hmm. anything over six hundred on Venmo, yep. PayPal. That's why I, I tell people all the time: get incorporated, become a corporation, create a pass through thing. Because if you, they even have PayPal business and Venmo business. If you start a PayPal business account, you don't have to pay the taxes on that. Uh, you, you know, you start a Venmo business account, you don't have to pay the taxes on that. I've if, got two things to do today. Yeah, if you don't, you pay 40 fucking percent on those in Minnesota. 40%. It's nasty. I know I have to fill out uh, tax forms for Jonah because he's like, yeah, I paid you $660, so I have to include you in my tax forms that I'm filing. He probably has a corporation. Mm-hmm exactly what it is if you yeah it if you go in there and you go and take paypal if you take a lot of venmo and paypal money out of there you got to make sure you're a corporation because with a corporation if you lose like so now last year we or the start of last year we started with a certain amount of money business wise mm -hmm. that number was way down by the end of the year because steel toe lost money last year uh, now you can write that off of your taxes. You know, instead of, oh, we started at uh, $500, we ended at $2,000. Well, now you got, the only thing you pay taxes on as a corporation is that $1,500. Now, if you say, I started at $5,000, I ended at $1,000, you now write that $4,000 off your personal taxes. So, whereas if you have PayPal or Venmo and you make over six seven hundred bucks. They're going to send you uh, a 1099. You're going to report the 1099. And then they're going to take up to 40% of that, depending, depending on how much you earn. They're going to take 40% of it, say, uh, federal and state. So with all of my earn increases, there's just no way to save me on that one. Uh, did I just scare the shit out of you a little bit? Just a little. There's just like no way to bail out. I'm just earning too much money now. Well, there was, uh, you know, before we... Uh, created all our incorporation stuff. When I was making money on Twitch when we were on radio, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize you had to pay all the taxes on it. Yeah, you were paying all the taxes that on it. That stuck money. with a big fucking bill Thank from you. that Twitch. Have you ever paid Twitch taxes? Sure. 
And you haven't ever gotten anything in the mail? No. Nope. Oh, they always fucked me. They always fucked me on that. Now, thankfully, in 2021 is when the corporation started and it went through. So I'm done with that, thank God. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those were awful to get. I got two of those in two years back to back. Yeah, Twitch ain't, Twitch ain't hiding this year. I, uh, I've made too much money on that one. And Maybe that's what it is. When it's a certain amount of money, they come yeah. after you. Nobody uh, looks at me because I'm, I'm a small fish. The body says the Venmo limit was canceled for 2022. Oh, Okay. I I did not know that. Uh, so it's still 20K for another year. Okay. All right. Well, that's very good to know. Thank you, buddy. Uh, but still, if you're a corporation and you have a PayPal business, they don't fucking worry about it. Because, again, if you're a corporation, that, that's what I love. They're like, these corporations don't pay taxes. Yeah, dipshit. Corporations don't pay taxes. They don't. There, There's, there's, a, <clears throat> there's a, a tax on income you make from a corporation like if you take money from your corporation you know how they always like to do that thing where like amazon paid zero percent taxes right because the board members paid the taxes uh jeffrey bezos paid the taxes you know amazon doesn't pay the taxes from the corporation they pay they pay payroll tax they pay sales tax they pay all those kind of taxes but they don't they don't yeah i don't know it's fucking I just hate when the news gets shit wrong on purpose and they know the, the truth of it, but they're trying to but, get uh, people we to We want to sell this message, so yeah. fuck it. Sorry, I didn't mean to fuck you up with all that other shit. No, I just, I'm screwed. I, 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 can, tell, I can tell when I brought it up, because we were talking about the IRS and shit, so I figured it I just it started was, doing math and the smoke came I, out. I just yeah. kind of saw your eyes just kind of go like this. And I was like, well, I forgive him for not being present in this conversation because I'd freak the fuck out. A little well, no. Bit. I didn't mean to freak. I wasn't trying to freak you out. But you got you to incorporate. Oh, I'm, I'm an LLC, so I just. Uh, there you go. But I just say to general, I, I, I write off all my expenses and stuff. And that's what really saved me last year because yeah. like, I don't mean to brag, but this, this boat's going up. Uh, so, <laughs> so at any rate, uh, I was like, ah, well, you know, all this equipment saved my ass last year. I have all the equipment now. No more expenses. Shit. Yeah, oh, that's right. I don't have that this year either. Yeah. I just have uh, I just have the fact that I lost money. All right. Yeah, I actually have the whole, like, I got a pay cut from you thing. I'm like, that's going to help. <laughs> that's going to help. Steel Toe, uh, Steel Toe Media made a shit fuck of money in 2021. And then our sponsors went, oh, yeah. Our local sponsors from radio went, you're okay now, little bird. You're out of the nest. There you go. Fuck off. And we went, well. Looks like we'll eat our dicks for a year <laughs> and readjust. Tax it. season will be easy, though. Yeah, tax season will be easy. Next year's going to suck. Oh. Uh, Gino Bisconti says, uh, Twitch taxes. I know NFL players pay Twitch muscle taxes. Oh, it's too goddamn soon, man. Too goddamn soon. Uh, so then why did you say it was good? So then why did you say it was good when you became a corporation, says Ben Horseman? I thought I laid that out. Yeah, the whole the tax thing. It's great for tax. Uh, like now the corporation takes all this money and then you spend it. You spend the money, they don't tax you on it. Uh, if you don't spend the money, what's ever left at the end of the year, you then give to yourself and then it gets reported on your personal taxes. Corporations don't report taxes at the end of the year like people do. Uh, we report, we make sure we paid our quarterly taxes. We make sure we paid our um, payroll taxes, you know, state taxes, shit like that. But as far as like the money in the business, it's a pass-through tax. It's called a pass-through tax. So I take, uh, let's say if I were to just get it without a corporation, I would have that 40% tax. Mm -hmm. Now, if I transfer it to myself as a corporate pass-through, it's taxed at about 18% instead. All right, so about half. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, simple. Incorporation is a game of pass the tax. Not only pass the tax, but shorten the tax uh somebody says uh why would would be why you see business owners buy shit at the end of the year so they don't get fucked on taxes right but they can also take that shit they bought report it write it off so you get uh you kind of get it both ways you get your new equipment and you get to go oh look so, well it's not people say write it off i shouldn't say that that's a shorthand you don't write it off it's just it's spent you report your spending you report your income Psh the numbers match up. Don't you have to justify a lot of the stuff though for it to be a deduction? What you do is you, in your personal records, you classify your spending. Okay. You classify your expenditures, travel, taxes, insurance, 
uh, payroll, things like that. You just keep them, and then you keep that locked away. You report it uh, to the government. You keep your files locked away. You keep all your stats and your data locked away. So if they ever come and they go, okay, we'd like some specifics on this, mm. you can show them. Okay. That's what would you file a flashlight under? Investment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's for savings. I've been banking loads. <laughs> Darth, but you need comedy in some of this shit. We're not, we're, I'm not being funny enough. We're talking about taxes here and people, you know, like the Andrew Callahan thing, people get interested in this shit. Uh, smart people don't pay income tax. I'm enjoying the new tax talk segment. It is it's like, I, uh, what did you learn from all this, Aaron? Real question. Oh, where did you learn all of this from, Aaron? Real question. Uh, my aunt is a very good accountant. And uh, and also, you can go online and you can find this. Advantages of an S-Corp. Uh, it's, you can, I mean, look, anybody can do it too. You can incorporate yourself and then you can go to the company you work for and see if they'll pay your corporation. You're allowed to do that. You go, hey, pay my corporation. And then you from your corporation will pay yourself a salary. And then you pay yourself, you have to pay yourself what the government calls a reasonable salary. Oh, and then that's what you pay the regular, you know, payroll taxes and everything else on. Then the stuff that's left over, you take, and that's what you pay 18% on. It's, yeah, you can't, if I were to pay myself, like, you know, like just all of my income was paid in, like, regular income like taxes, right the taxes would fucking mutilate me. Mm -hmm. It would mutilate me. Because I have to pay... The business has to pay the 7.5% payroll tax, and I as an individual have to pay the 7.5% payroll tax. It's fucking... The worst part about being a business is that if you try to do something good for the economy, like hire people, it costs you a fucking fortune. Every dime you pay a new employee, you have to give the government an extra 15%. Because they earned it. On pay, right, because they earned it. It's fucking terrible. Uh, I thought a family member couldn't do corporate taxes. Chance of being audited go up. She doesn't. She set. She helped us set up the tax system, the, the corporate. She gave me all the advice. In fact, she told me when I came to her house to talk about it, she goes, look, use QuickBooks accountants. for a." She basically said for a company your size, you could basically just transfer your QuickBooks info into your tax system and you can there just you do go. your taxes that, taxes that way because it's not a big company. But she did say, yeah, just look. I'll help you set it up. I'll give you everything you need. And then you can just go do this. You know, if you were a big company who had sales taxes, get a fucking accountant, have them do the whole thing. But if it's a really small company, like ours is the smallest of the small, it's not difficult. Uh, Atomic Citizen says any uh, monkey is allowed to do it. Yep. That's about it. Any monkey can do it. Uh, you're going to get a strike for financial advice. Oh, well, this is just my advice. No, I'm not telling people stocks and shit. Yeah, we're not giving people financial yeah. advice. We're explaining what happens with the tax system. That's not financial advice. I'm advising. explaining to people, yeah, how corporations work and how individual. And I, my personal opinion, not a financial expert, but my personal opinion, if you can, incorporate. That would be my person. If, if you make a, a decent amount of money, uh, in my opinion, not a financial expert, incorporate look if you can again, yeah somebody not, says this isn't financial advice yeah how is this financial advice yeah not not advice guys but if you can cheat uh aaron's not and aaron's not a uh, il yeah i don't know how can we trust his accounting advice i think he's trying to say jew in a really sneaky way uh the ghost of demar hamlin says it's for entertainment purposes the bad part is it's not entertaining well then fuck me ghost of demar hamlin I'm sorry. Wrong on both counts. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me honest, bud. Uh, oh, speaking of taxes, in uh, Hungary, they're having so many problems with people not having babies that they're now saying if you're a ma, if you have a kid under 30 years old and you're a woman, you don't have to pay taxes anymore. Well, I mean. Ever. Like the government's got plenty of money from us, so I'm sure they don't need theirs. Oh, don't worry. This is Hungary, not us. Oh, no. I was no, I was thinking of, uh, you said Hungary, and I my brain was hearing Ukraine. Oh. So I was just. Tomato, 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 right? They all look the same. Hungary is one of the many countries facing a falling birth rate. Well, I mean, would you want to have kids if you lived in Hungary? Uh, that will lead to catastrophic societal breakdowns in the next few decades. 
but it's one of the few that's doing something to turn the trend around. Yeah, I mean, not only do you have falling birth rates, but all of a sudden you're going to have all these people dropping dead of heart swelling for no absolute reason at all. I mean, you're going to need to replace these numbers. Uh, it's, Why would you mention that? Well, you know, I'm just looking at health trends, okay. you know. Just a random thing. Uh, by the way, Stormy, thank you very much for becoming a member. New members on this channel are crucial to our growth and success. I really appreciate that. So thank you, Stormy, for becoming a member. So uh, Hungary, one of the many countries facing a falling birth rate. Moms who give birth before they turn 30 will never have to pay income tax again. Now, I mean, in fairness, that's going to just take whatever income tax you would have paid and you'll just spend it on the kid. Mm -hmm. But hey. So, uh, it's awfully sexist rule. <laughs> right, exactly. What if I dump cum into a chick before I'm 30? I still have to pay income taxes? Son does it matter bitch. whether or not I call her after I do it? Like I just Look, all I'm saying is I don't want to pay child support, but I'd really love that discount. Well, as long as you stay with the mother and you take care of the children, all right, I'm you don't have to pay taxes, and all of a sudden you hear a bunch of people in Hungary go, Oh, man, that's some bullshit. What? I don't know what that accent was. That was my hair Hungarian accent. I got to get some cigarettes. I'll be right back. <laughs> got to walk a long ways to get menthol. You know what sucks? It's really shitty for 29-year-old women right now. They're fucked. Well, they missed it by more that ways much. Than one. Yeah, missed it by that much. 29-year-olds uh, are planning this out, trying to squeeze one out before the time is up. Right. Like you're a, you, you know how many women in December are going to try and induce early pregnant or early deliveries in Hungary? It's like, fuck Get out of me. I turn 30 next week. Get the fuck out of there. I don't want to pay taxes anymore. You have it like right after your 30th birthday. And they're just, they're just like, sorry, you got to pay your income tax. Like, fuck, I don't want you anymore. The hell? Uh, where are we at? Likewise, boys and girls. Where are we at for likes? I'd like to know. So, because uh, what what were we trying to do before the end of the show? Four hundred. Yeah. Ghost of Demar Hamlin says all single men are flying into Hungary today. Well, no, because I think you got to take care of them. Yeah. So, I mean, if it was just a matter of dropping loads, yeah. then they'd just be paying dudes per shot. Exactly. Uh, Brown Candy says we're at three eighty two. All right, hit the like button. Let's uh, jack her up to four hundred by the time I'm done doing this. Midland Armory in downtown Foley, Minnesota. MidlandArmory.com. Of course, no matter where you live, Midland Armory can deliver right to your door. We're talking lower receivers, handguns, rifles, shotguns. Looking for something to protect your home or go hunting with? How about Midland Armory and Foley? That's MidlandArmory.com. House protection, hunting, sport shooting, whatever. They also have optics, magazines, knives, parts and gear, suppressors, and NFA, and much, much more. Of course, our friends Derek and Tracy at Midland Armory can answer all of your questions. Contact them online today or in person at midlandarmory.com or Midland Armory in downtown Foley. If you use the promo code Steeltoe, you get a nice discount. 10 to 20%. It's going to take care of your shipping and take a little bit off the bottom line for you. That's Midland Armory in downtown Foley or MidlandArmory.com. And Stoney's Bar in downtown Rockville. Stoney's Bar with a great selection of uh, beer and liquor. Great place to go for your cocktails. Not only that, the best Bloody Mary in town. Great place to watch the playoffs this weekend. Live bands all weekend long. They're going to have great live entertainment for you. That's Stoney's Bar in downtown Rockville, Minnesota. Stoney's bar in Rockville. And finally, All Care Towing, 320-253-5203 for All Care Towing of St. Cloud. If you go in the ditch, you get stuck in the snow, no matter what it is here in Minnesota, nobody gets there faster than All Care Towing. 320-253-5203 for All Care Towing of St. Cloud. All right, guys, looks like we're at 392 for likes. So let's fire off uh, eight more of you to fire off those likes, and we'll get up over uh, 400 and call that a great success for the day. Uh, also, I'm going to say this again. God damn you, YouTube analytics. I really want to get to... Uh, I really want to get to the point where my the, the counts are back again. Oh, I thought you'd get to the point where you don't worry about numbers or focus on numbers. Like, hey, I, will, I will always worry about numbers. Are you kidding me? Yep, it's still showing me at 148 for the Jesse Lee Peterson interview. And it's still showing me at the same number that we ended the evening show at last night. So, oops, it doodles. I don't I want them to get their view count shit straight. They're fucking around. They monetize those shorts. 
So now they're fucking around with the short counter because I'm sure they're probably trying to fuck people over on short so they don't have to pay him as much. And now, uh, now it's dicking with the analytics view counter. Oh, well, white people problems. What do you do? Hey, congratulations, guys. We got up over 400 likes today. That is awesome. Uh, also, really hope you're uh, thinking of hitting that subscribe button. Uh, Kenneth says, autistic Aaron always thinks about numbers. Yes, autistic Aaron does always think about numbers. It's part of my charm. Uh, KF says, yeah, lots of people on Twitter bitching about view counts going down since yesterday. Yeah, they're like taking them away. Hey, the people who watched your video didn't watch your video anymore. So wait a minute, when they left, I lost the view? Well, bring that fucker back! Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be... I hope it's not a permanent thing, because then it's like they're trying to fuck the view count on the regular videos because they have to pay for the ad revenue on shorts. I don't know. There isn't a lot of ad like ads in the shorts, though. Like, right. Most of them, they just they play straight out. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. Uh, let's watch... Uh, a Jimmy Fallon video. This is uh, this is from the Tonight Show. I think it's last night. I've been, I haven't watched this yet. I've been told it's extremely cringe. Apparently, Jimmy Fallon is still on the COVID brainwash bandwagon. Uh oh. Now, of all the the late night COVID brainwashing that happened, I always found him to be the least egregious. I you know he did that catchy ass song with Ariana Grande, the mm. "We'll Be in Line for a Booster." Now propaganda, completely and com total horseshit, but yeah. at least he made a catchy song. He wasn't like uh, Stephen Colbert dancing around with a bunch of gay men in needle costumes, uh, doing a tequila parody. Or or what's what was it? Uh, freaking the other the British one that I don't care for. James Corden. Thank oh. You. His Cordon Ariana Blue Grande with the, song? Or not even Grande. He, he, James Corden did a thing where he had like people dancing and holding out a giant flag with Fauci's that face on That was the it. Ariana Grande song he did. Okay, yeah. So Ariana Grande was like on loan to late night shows to do their COVID parody songs, apparently. They paid her a lot of money. Yeah, Corden, you're right. Corden did the one where they unfurled a, a flag of Fauci's face Ugh. and like sucked his dick. It's horrible. I believe in the outtakes they did actually suck its dick. Uh, but let's watch uh, Jimmy Fallon. You know, Jimmy, I feel like, wanted to be a lounge singer, and it didn't work out. He wanted to be Adam Sandler. Yeah, he loves doing musical bits. And uh, Jimmy always either plays sleepover games with his guests, like they're having a big slumber party, uh, or he's got to do karaoke. Does that feel creepy to you? It's just a sleepover so... bit? You know what's creepy to me is the fact that these shows used to be, like, for adults, and they were really good and funny, and they had personalities who had some balls. Uh, like, even compared to Fallon, Jay Leno has balls. Oh, yeah. Huge balls compared to Jimmy Fallon. Now everything is, like, so... Like, you can just watch the progressive dumbing down of everything because it went from these late-night shows had a little bite to them to now it really does feel like baby food. Yeah. It feels like mush. Let's put on our onesies and sit here and sing campfire songs. Oh, it's so bad. Like, Conan O'Brien had a masturbating bear. We had... Uh, we have s'mores that we made in the microwave. And now we're singing songs about masks. Let's uh, check it out. There was Alpha, then Delta, then Omicron X. But this latest variant might be the best. It's XBB.1.5. Another friend of COVID-19 has arrived. It, aren't these shows supposed to distract us from bad things in the world Is and like make us be laugh? The Love Shack? It's, I don't know. I, I can't like tell. Shack. Between his Lyle Lovett hairdo that he's starting to sport and his Harry Connick Jr. vibes that he's putting out, I don't know if this is supposed to be Love Shack or something different. I'm not sure. It sucks either way. Your name is not sure. Sorry. I've been watching a lot of Idiocracy lately. I don't know. It just seems to be fitting. I can't tell why. It's weird. I thought it was a comedy. Turns out it's a prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> now I come into rooms and I go to be like, ah, how's it hang, I say? You talk like and you're all you talk retarded. like a f again. Your shit's all retarded. <laughs> There's that f talk we talked mm -hmm. about. Oh, uh, yeah. Between watching the Purge and Idiocracy, I'm like, I think I'm getting some ideas. <laughs> I watched that second one though. Uh, we're we're not quite done with it. Mm -hmm. uh, where Rumlow's in it. Where Crossbones is the star. By the way, the next one apparently uh, Rumlow starring in it again. Yeah, Rumlow comes back. Rumlow uh, has done more Purge movies than Ethan Hawke. How about that? Yeah, when you go from Ethan Hawke and Lena Headey acting in your movie to then to you Rumlo? go, who'd we get? 
We got Crossbones from the Marvel Universe. It's like, oh, well, he's big in the comics. It's like, yeah, he's in the movies for like eight minutes. Sorry. Yeah, it's not really going to be the thing you think it is. Yeah. But all right. Yeah. No. I mean. It's a new strain, but it isn't the same. Sounds more like Elon Musk, his name. It's XBB.1.5. Not UB40 who sings red, red wine. Put on your mask when you're inside a facility. It could be a robot from a Star Wars trilogy. It's I, I, I just, I'm looking in his eyes while he's doing this, and I go, do you feel good? Can we get Sing back? Yeah, can we get Lily? I mean, honestly, I think I might rather watch a Lily Sing bit because at least with Lily Sing, I know that she's doing the best she can do. She doesn't have the ability to pull off anything better. I know Jimmy, I hope Jimmy Fallon doesn't want to do this. I hope this is like, hey, motherfucker, you wanted to be the host of The Tonight Show. Guess what? This is what NBC wants you to do. Nobody applauded that. That is fake. You cannot had, tell me that room full of people had that uproar for that song. That had better be, yeah, that had better be a sound bar or a, a sound button. Holy fuck, was that awful. Tell me where the, the punchline was in that. Like, just, okay, yeah, COVID uh, propaganda, you know, still be afraid of these letters we're showing you. Okay, take all that and put it aside. Okay. That, I know that's hard, but take that part, put it aside. Tell me why that was funny or interesting, because I, I, you know me, I'll give people a break from if not funny. If you can explain to where it was funny, if you're, yeah, if you're, if you're interesting, if you can draw me a map to where the joke was. Uh, I think honestly, the only funny thing about it was like if you were making fun of the COVID thing, like if you were making right. fun of its name. But if you're telling me that this is a danger and you're scared, like the, yeah, there's nothing funny there. It's just Jimmy Fallon just thinking. Uh, the whole time he was singing that song, he was like, oh, tens of millions of dollars a year, tens of millions of dollars a year, tens of millions of dollars a year, tens of millions. Like, that's the only way you can salve your soul for doing this horse shit. Because if you're a comedian, the fact that it's propaganda is not as bad as the fact that it's not funny. Yeah, that's actually the big sin is that it's not funny. And he gives it. I'll give Jimmy Fallon this. You give him the propaganda, he will throw his heart and soul into it. He will sing his fucking balls off because he's a little gay and he likes the show tunes shit. You know, he's not James Corden gay, but he likes the show tunes shit. He, like, he always wanted to be a singer. I hope he's still drinking and doing drugs. At least he can get some enjoyment. Yeah, at least he can get some enjoyment out of it. Because I looked at his face while he was doing that bit, and I'm like, I watched the comic inside of him go, I'm not getting laughs. This is unnerving to me. This is too much. I just hope it wasn't his idea. I think he does every bit on that show now. Just in, in his brain, it's just a repeating monologue yeah. over and over. It pays for the cocaine. It yes. pays for the cocaine. It's a means to an end. It's a means to an end. It's a... I want him to have one of the little, like, Omar from Scarface salt shakers with coke in him thing where he's like, and just on it at his desk, he's like, hey, guys, coming up now, we're going to do COVID talk. And then they put a graphic on the screen so Jimmy can just grab his thing and go, and then throw it down. And then the graphic's gone. He's like, all right, we're pumped, right? We're excited to talk about COVID. Because he does. He has that energy. Yeah. He has coke energy. He's bobbing around and singing his like song. Like I said, I figured that's what's keeping him going at yeah, this point. Yeah, that's the thing that keeps him in propaganda is he's like, can I still do they coke on the show? They him in white powder. Yeah, as long as I can still do blow on the program. I mean, I still got my money from uh, Fever Pitch, so I just need to be paid in blow. I'm still getting those uh, those kickback checks from that Queen Latifah movie I did. You know, taxi, taxi is really drivers. Taxi no, driver? not taxi drivers. So just taxi. No. I thought it was just taxi. Was it just taxi? I think it was just taxi. Uh, Grant Nutterbutter says, I think this is the best thing I've ever seen. I hope he has to do this character for the rest of his career. Oh, yes, he does. He will be doing this for the rest of his career. This is literally all he has left. They are not going to leave him alone at all. Uh... The propaganda is terrible. Yeah, it is. It's really bad. Really bad. 
Uh, a little gay. His turds are rainbow colored, says Angry Mango. All right, so I skimped a little bit on the gay. I apologize. Uh, the body says, and now Chuck, Chucky and Megan are having a Twitter war. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about and what that has to do with what we're saying, but please try to reiterate. I heard Talon, uh, Fallon was texting, flirting with a 14-year-old girl. Honestly, I'd rather be caught doing that than be caught doing that song. Like if Jimmy Fallon the day before, Wording. look, if the day before Jimmy, oh, no, they didn't say he fucked her. No, I just, I'd rather be caught doing that than be caught doing that song. Like I said, wording. Yeah. Oh, you're wording. Okay, fair enough. Um, but if, if if he was just about to record that song, mm -hmm. and then they said, oh, Jimmy, I'm sorry, but we got to cancel you. They found you text messaging a 14-year-old girl. I'd be sitting there going, yes, it worked. All right. And then you run out of there. You take your settlement check. Perfect. We and found then, you texting a 14-year-old. Finally! And then you go God. to that 14-year-old girl. You write her a check for 500 grand. You go, thanks for playing along and get me out of that. Appreciate it. And then you... Never speak to me again. Never speak to me again because this is about as fucking creepy as I've ever seen anything get in my entire life. But then the 14-year-old's hooked. She starts sending you cooter shots. And then oh, no. Now, in. yeah, now you're fucked. Now you're fucked. <laughs> uh, James Gore says, to quote Mike Staclaza... The, uh, from Red Letter Media, the only thing Jimmy Fallon should host is a parasite. I th There was a time there during this COVID shit where I think he was the least offensive of all of them with the propaganda. Because he had, he does, I don't know, I just feel like he doesn't care about his show and right. everything in general. Kimmel was crying mm -hmm. the whole time. Uh, Colbert was like balls deep, like he was like letting Fauci butt fuck information into his asshole. Yeah, he's gurgling the shit out of Oh, him. my God. It was like it, it, Colbert, when COVID happened, he's like, finally, the show I always wanted to do, just simping for the government the entire time. Oh, that'll be really funny. But, like, Fallon seemed like, I don't know. He he just kind of was going along with it. Like, didn't seem to give a shit. Mm. I, I feel like that is his attitude on the show, though. He just doesn't seem to give a shit. Yeah, the the pain, there was pain in his eyes during that song, though. There was definitely pain in his eyes during the song. He's like, oh, Part of him still remembers that we're recording. Well, the problem is they hire these guys who are desperate to be famous and desperate to have a really well-paying gig. So when they're that desperate, they will give you total control of the program. So now NBC completely owns that show. One of the, reason they, the reasons they wanted Leno over Letterman was Leno would be a good soldier. Yeah, Leno will play. Leno would toe the line. Letterman's like, no, I'm going to do what I think is funny. Letterman wanted to own his show, and CBS let him own his show. NBC didn't want that. You'll never see anyone get as much control as Letterman ever did. None of them will have the balls. They'll all be so happy to be getting this high-paying gig, they'll sell out everything they own just to be able to do the show. Because they're well aware, just like how they got to where they are, there's someone right behind them who's just as hungry. Like, right. oh, as soon as I'm not useful. Uh, Rusty Pipe says they wanted Neil Patrick Harris before Colbert for the late show. He would have done a good job, I think. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris for what they want. A good dancing gay guy. That's what they got in Colbert. Neil Patrick Harris is a better dancing dancer and gay guy than Colbert is. I mean, it's close on the gay part, but, mm. you know. Well, Colbert's beard is Jon Stewart, which they aren't getting along anymore because, again, the whole COVID thing. It would be funny to watch, like, to teleport Johnny Carson's Tonight Show into 2021, 2022. And just watch and the go, world blow up. And just watch them go, uh, Johnny, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we need you to do a COVID song parody today. And it's just Johnny in there with his empty bottle of Jack Daniels. And he just smashes it on the desk. and goes, uh, you will kindly get the fuck out. Thank you. All right. So anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to murder my current wife. I found her cheating on me the other day, Ed. Ha-ha! <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. Uh, just imagine Lorne Michaels stroking Jimmy's hair as he rests his head on his shoulder. Yeah, Lorne Michaels kind of owns late night now. He's got Seth yeah. Meyers. He's got Jimmy Fallon. It's a nice and little it's not his shoulder. It's part. his lap. It's his cock. Yeah. Let's be very... Uh, let's let's be very uh, uh, very thorough about what it was. It was the cock. Uh, let's uh, talk about uh, speaking of sensitivity and being kind of gay about shit. Uh, I guess the Pittsburgh Steelers, who played their last game of the year la uh, this week, this past weekend here. By the way, Steelers. I was so rooting for them. They started the year two and eight. They won their last seven games. Oh, nice! And they missed the playoffs by just that. All Miami had to do 
was lose their game to the Jets, and they almost lost it. <laughs> they almost lost, and then Pittsburgh would have been in the playoffs. I was rooting for Pittsburgh to get in because their coach, um, Mike Tomlin, has never had a losing season. Okay. And he started the year 2-8, and eight, and people are like, he's fired, he's done, like it's the end of the line for Tomlin. They run off seven in a row, and he gets another winning season. So that was cool. But apparently they did a, a sack celebration that, and again, you should be so busy watching football that you forget about the sack celebration five seconds after it happens. Okay. But uh, I guess people on social media and, you know, we, we invited women to watch football now, so now we get shit like this. Uh, we, we wanted football to be for everybody, so now we have to listen to everybody bitch. Apparently, the Steelers did a sack celebration that some people felt was insensitive to DeMar Hamlin. Now, I, I would argue DeMar Hamlin has bigger things to worry about. Yeah, I don't think a sack celebration really has dick to do with DeMar Hamlin. Right. I feel like he's kind of got his own issues about, you know, making sure he can learn to live on his own. I would say medical treatments he's had in the last two years have had more to do with uh, impacting him than the Pittsburgh Steelers sack dance. But you're allowed to, the only difference is you're allowed to criticize the Pittsburgh Steelers sack dance. And we will demonetize and deplatform you if you talk about that other stuff. Exactly, you fucking commie. All right, so this is, uh, let's see what people got their, uh, their tits up for uh, with the Steelers here. This week, Western Pennsylvania will pay its... Oh, shit, I got to hit refresh because they like to autoplay these videos on Yep. Me. This week, Western... What? Pe Pennsylvania will pay its final respects to fallen Brackenridge Police Chief Mount St. Peter. What the... This isn't the right funeral. fucking story. This. All right, fine, piss on it. Uh, with about 39 seconds left in the game... Linebacker Alex Highsmith sacked Brown's quarterback Deshaun Watson, which, by the way, that trade, that, what, two, two or three first-round picks, two or three third-round picks and a fifth-round pick mm -hmm. that the Browns gave up to get Deshaun Watson. I know that they only got him, like, 12 games into the season this year, but I don't think that worked out for him very well. Good luck to you guys. As Highsmith was on his back, another Steelers player came over and attempted to give chest compressions as part of the celebration. Fans on Twitter quickly pounced on the move as insensitive. Yeah, now, and I'm sure they weren't, you know, lackeys that are afraid of COVID. And not only that, it's not like they were like, oh, let's make fun of DeMar Hamlin. I'm sure it was meant as the guy's laying on the ground, the game's almost over. Oh, my God. Oh, my heart. Oh, it's so tense. It's so... Come I'm on. pretty sure it was a, oh, we all had to be vaccinated whether we liked it or not. Oh, <laughs> So here's the uh, celebration that people are bitching about. And that's Alex Highsmith. How many sacks has Highsmith? I mean that's it. One I mean, and a half seconds of a guy doing fake chest compressions on a guy. I wouldn't say that it's directly associated with DeMar Hamlin. I say it's probably more associated with that thing DeMar Hamlin's dealing with. Oh, yeah, the, the whole, you know, side effects thing. Side effects of nothing. There's no thing. To, there's no side, side effects, effects thing? Oh, no. well, then I don't know what the no, deal is. Well, there's no side effects of anything, and I love having a YouTube channel. There was a, He took a Botox shot. He took a Botox shot. And it got weird. That's all it was. That's why I don't mess with that stuff. Yeah. And that's Alex Highsmith. How many sacks has Highsmith? I mean, yeah, that, I mean, Jesus. I can get if you were like... If you were watching that game and you went, whoa, guys, read the room. All right, we just had a guy go down a week ago. Not, eh, not, not maybe the most timely celebration, but certainly not something worth remembering and, like, complaining about on social media. Do, do we really care? Like, uh, does it change the game if he doesn't do that? Yeah, who gives a fuck? If DeMar Hamlin would have died immediately after that happened and he would have went, they're so insensitive, and then he died, okay. Maybe they could have backed it off. But I promise you, that had nothing to do with DeMar Hamlin. It had nothing. It was just a dumb thing that I'm sure they've done before. Jesus Christ. I, I, I can't imagine getting so upset over a sack celebration. If that shakes you up, you shouldn't be watching football. I love how these people will watch guys get their heads, uh, their brains broken in. They'll watch did guys, something offensive. Yeah, they'll literally, these guys are getting years knocked off of their lives right in front of you, but the thing that offends you is a funny little celebration they did. 
Well, I, I mean, it doesn't seem weird to me at all. But it was derogatory. Yeah, and he has CTE. <laughs> <laughs> right. That guy's going to die at 50 if he's lucky. Leave him alone. Uh, if, if you, yeah, if you're going, oh, the sack dance, and you're like, what about the brain damage all these guys are getting? It's like, yeah, but the sack dance that they did reminded me of a kind of a thing that happened a little while ago, and it made me feel weird. It's like, all right, well, that's where it starts and stops then. I feel like this whole story is like, all right, so how did DeMar Hamlin feel about it? He didn't give a fuck. Well, then neither do the rest of us. Like, I feel like that's how it's should go. Yeah. Yeah, DeMar Hamlin, how do you feel about that celebration? I have no idea what the fuck we're, you're talking about. Well, then it's settled. Perfect. There we go. And we're done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or you show it to DeMar Hamlin. He goes, I mean, kind of gay, but whatever. All right, there you go, guys. The ruling is kind of gay. That's it. Uh, speaking of people getting outraged at very simple things, uh, there is a there was a woman who was speaking at a university. Okay. And they were having a discussion about pregnant women. Okay. And when they were having a discussion about pregnant women, uh, a bunch of people in the room got really pissed about it because they said, well, not all people who are pregnant are women. Oh, no. So let me guess. She didn't want to play their little game of let's imagine the rules or whatever we want. And- uh, that does not seem to be uh, oh. where the room wanted to go with her. Let's uh, Let's check this one out. It doesn't say what campus this is on but let's uh let's watch the what about, uh folks who have wounds but uh are not women uh like trans people gender queer folks why do you keep saying women when this issue affects more than women because there are two genders male there and female. are this issue affects more than women it affects trans men it affects gender queer folks women have wounds i am not a woman and i have a womb you are a woman and i you know do have a womb. I- Next question. This is what happens when you tell these fucking children that the, all their opinions matter. No one can ever question them. And if they question anything they believe about themselves, then uh, then they're, they're allowed to go spastic. And they did. You can see all of them going, no, you're not supposed to do that. We've been told you're not supposed to do that. If someone says something that you're not supposed to say and you haven't been brainwashed, you don't respond by turning into a harp seal. You don't respond by jumping out of your seat like they just said, I'm going to kill your mother. Like, right. And why is it the lady in the front looks like she's like simultaneously in her 50s and also the only one who finds this funny, except there's, the girl behind her. There's also a few people in this room who agree with what this woman is saying, and they're just being quiet because they don't want to get their head caved in by a brick. Yeah, there's a few people who are obviously like, oh, this is a stupid thing we're about to deal with, but we have to for you people. Right. Again, if if you if your ideas college used to be where you go to have your ideas challenged and then you would talk about them. Now someone comes in and challenges a college kid's idea, the rest of them all pop up and go r r r r r r. It's like ah, that's about where we're at. So from now on, you should only come into college classes and go, "Hey, how's it hang?" I say, <sighs> that's it. That's the end of that clip. So she are these all the same clip by the way? I think they are. I think they're all this the same clip same over and over. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's the same clip. Shoot. I was hoping there was more of that. Why would you cut the camera off? I want to see the rest. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure after that it was just a calm, rational discussion. You know, right, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we had like differing an, opinions, just trying to make a, make a middle ground. Yeah, I'm sure we had just a nice conversation where everybody calmed down and there were points and counterpoints and they all compromised and came to an understanding. But uh, I think I think I, I feel pretty confident in that. I mean, maybe if he gave me nine thousand to one odds, I'd feel pretty confident. Trans men have wombs. Yeah, if you're delusional, <laughs> that, that would be funny if you just get in there and you're really. That's the key. You have to be really calm while they lose their minds. You go, trans men have wombs. Yeah, I mean, if you're retarded, <laughs> they all go. Ah! They're all Donard, Donald, Donard, Donard, <clears throat> Donald Sutherland in uh, Revenge of the Bo- or the Body Snatchers movie. Uh, that's Puppet Masters with Donald Sutherland. Oh, was it Puppet Masters? Ah. Yeah, I thought that was no. It's it's a Body Snatchers like movie, but the one with Donald Sutherland where the alien ship lands and starts taking over people is Body Snatchers. Oh, but Body Snatchers isn't the one where he makes the noise. No, they make the noise in that one too. It's a very very. When does copy. Donald Sutherland make the noise? In Body Snatchers, when they figure out he's an alien. That's what I was referencing. That's what I said. You said Puppet Masters. Oh, wait. 
Uh, no, that is Puppet Masters. That movie's called Puppet Masters. God damn it. Invasion now, of the Body Snatchers. I'm sticking by it. Uh-huh. And you're saying Puppet Masters. I'm saying Puppet Masters. I'm going to IMDB this shit. They're saying Aaron, he screwed you up. Mm -hmm. I Maybe. always thought it was Invasion of the Body Snatchers where Donald Sutherland at the end, she sees him and she's like, oh, and he goes like, oh, and she's like, no, they got him. Fuck my butthole. And then in the sequel, they do. Mm. Uh, the very end of Invasion of the Body Snatchers is where the yelling occurs. <clears throat> they are telling, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. They are saying that uh, they're saying that you are right and that he is in Puppet Masters, though. I I'm pretty sure that he does it in that movie uh, too. Uh, what, what what was that like? His gimmick? Like he just made that noise? It was like a bob. Well, everybody did it in Puppet Masters. As soon as the they realized you weren't one of the puppets, they made the body snatchers noise. Yeah. What? How does that work? You shouldn't be allowed to do that. I don't know, man. They fucking did it. That's because I've never seen the body snatchers. I've seen the Puppet Master movie. Puppet That's why I'm on Masters. This. The Puppet Masters from 1994. From 94? Oh, no. Mine's from like 1970. Something. All right. So then, yeah, yours is uh, right. Body Snatchers. Wow. This was a completely key point. This was, uh, don't worry. We're in overtime. Uh, let's talk to Mikey. Mikey, hey. what's up? Hey, um, I'm a little behind in the chat. I apologize that the show's moved on. But about the Damar Hamlin thing in that uh, celebration they're all up in arms about. Yeah. There's actually a petition going around online to get rid of that same celebration in Madden, the football video game. Ugh. And on top of that, uh, American Scientific Magazine published an article on their website saying that the DeMar Hamlin injury highlights the violence and danger that black men are facing in sport. I did oh, see that. Ridiculous. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you for the call, buddy. Yeah, there's an article that says... Uh, the DeMar Hamlin thing is a great example of the violence black men face in sports. Well, I'm sorry. Black men are better at sports, and they play a lot of professional sports. And professional sports also tend to be violent. We so, have no idea they would respond this badly to Botox. Yeah, it's not that, uh, you know, the sports aren't violent because the people are black. The people are black playing violent sports. It's I remember when we had white teams, there was no tackling or hitting in football. It was just hugs and, hey, how you doing, high fives. Although Kenneth points out, he says, black men are better at violence, too. All right, look, that is not true. I mean, you give us nuclear weapons, we're way better than anybody. Thank you very much. But you're right, I suppose. Um, yeah, the, the, the fascination, the obsession some people have with needing to get everything to that racial boundary of like, oh, how can we tie this in with, with it being about black? It's like, you can't. There's no way you can. Well, that's not going to stop me from doing it. Like, I'm, I'm aware. I'm aware. Look, if we could just make everything about being white or black, then we've limited it to one problem with an easy solution, bleach in the tap water, and now everyone's white. Oh, man. I Yeah, I saw that article. We were going to do it yesterday or uh, last night on the evening show, but we were, well, April and I thought we were having fun. Apparently, we were, you were ruining, marriages. ruining a lot of people's marriages by having some fun conversations, April and I. But um, it was, uh, th there was that story about Damar Hamlin and how it highlights the problem for black men in sports or whatever. And it was so fucking stupid. And we were having such a good time that I just went, no. I'm just going to click out of this one. It's, it's just too dumb to bother with. It's, it's, yeah, it's more dumb than I can handle. Uh, here's oh, a, I talked about this one, too. Here's a weird story. Uh, a 17-year-old Wyoming basketball player died suddenly after a medical event. That, oh, happens, all, that happens all the time with 17-year-old basketball players, doesn't it? Yep, they're just freaking... It's like being an athlete as a teenager is putting your life in your hands. Yes. Right? You know that when you take the job. At 17 years old, everyone understands that if you play sports, you could just drop dead at any moment. Look, you might catch this football, or you might die. You might die. Max Sorensen died unexpectedly at his home in Gillette on December 26th. He was pronounced dead at Campbell County Memorial Hospital. Campbell County Coroner Paul Wallum told the Cowboy State Daily that the teen's sudden death would not be investigated as a suicide, homicide, or caused by the use of illegal drugs. An autopsy of the junior high school student. That's not junior. That's high school. Oh, junior. High school. They should have put a comma in there. Junior high school student. No, they just shouldn't have put that word in there because it doesn't fucking fit because there's junior high school and there's junior yeah. high school student. Should there have been a comma? 
There should have either been a comma or no junior because yeah. again, the autopsy of the junior high school student. It's yeah, just get rid of junior. Yeah. Uh, the Mayo Clinic explains that. Uh, oh, Wallum said preliminary findings show that Sorensen suddenly died from peri peritonitis. 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 Should we find out what peritonitis is, Johnny? Oh, they're about to explain it. It explains that peritonitis it happens when the thin layer of tissue inside the abdomen becomes inflamed. Periontitis can be caused by infection by bacteria, typically when someone has liver disease or kidney disease. Hmm, interesting. What was that thing they were saying children were suffering from uh, in the last couple of years here? Uh, it's, uh, I think there was some, some liver disease. Li I believe it was liver disease, yes. Okay. So Scarring you, or some shit? If you contract some kind of liver disease, that can cause inflammation in your abdomen, and it can fucking kill you. Mm, apparently. It's interesting. I wonder, can we go back to like 2018, 2019 and find out if this kid ever had any liver issues? I'd like to know. Uh, other health conditions that cause periontitis are liver cirrhosis, appendicitis, stomach ulcers, diverticulitis, Crohn's disease, and pancreatitis. Periontitis can also be caused by a rupture inside an organ in the abdomen. Oh, injury related to... Uh, injury related to... Related Wallum to a told sport. the Cowboy State Daily, we're assuming it's from an injury related to a sporting event. You know, because in basketball, all those hard checks and hits, you know, I can't think of all the times where I'm like, I see a dude take a hit on the court. I'm like, oh, right. he's dead tonight. All those liver shots you take in basketball. Yeah. yeah. Those br those big, bad liver shots, I can tell you, they're, uh, they're <laughs> nasty. I've been punched directly <laughs> in my liver multiple times. I thought you were about to say your face. <laughs> sure, it hurts, but you're not going to fucking die. Might pee some blood. The, the way this doctor is talking, I feel like it already answers this question, but uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and ask it anyway. Are we going to talk about it at all? No. no. Well, he gave you a clear explanation of what it is and how it could have sure. been caused. I mean, they're not sure of what it is or what caused what they think it is, but if it was what it, they think it I is. I mean, there's only one thing I know that's uh, uh, that's happened in the last few years, and that is young people have been seeing a rise in uh, liver problems. Uh, in the last couple of years. So do we want to have a discussion about anything in particular surrounding what may be? Look, if you want to hold Chris D'Elia accountable for this, that's on you. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, he is 17. <laughs> so there is a chance that... Uh, uh, <coughs> there is a chance that Chris D'Elia... <clears throat> he wouldn't do downward dog. May be involved. Oh, man. I... It's just, again, like... I don't, I'm not even going to ask seriously, are we going to talk about it? I know we're the not. answer. We're not. One guy dropped nearly, well, did drop dead. They had to revive him. One guy dropped fucking dead on Monday night football in front of the entire country. Nobody wants to talk about why. And nobody knows why. And how quickly we got that whole, uh, you know, sports injury is causing this thing now. Like, once again, oh, it must have been from a sporting event. Yeah. And, and not only that, but... How immediate people were on YouTube and Twitter and the news going, it's certainly not anything any conspiracy theorists are talking about. I'm like, wait, we don't, but we, nobody knows what it you is. You just said you didn't know what it was. How can yeah. it, you don't know what it is, but you know it's not this. Right. What? We don't know what it is. We just know what it isn't. The gays. Okay. Uh, Kenneth says, we all know why. We just won't say. Speak for yourself. I might say it right now. I might say it now. I might say it right now. N Netherlands. <laughs> Nissan. Nincompoop. Nigeria. V vacation. Vacant. Vahina. Vacuum. Vaxital appropriation. There. We'll figure it out at some point. I'm sure this kid probably just died, like you said, from all those tough shots you take on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. Those seem to always kill 17-year-olds. Seems the biggest leading cause of death for their age. Pretty group. normal, yeah. A Chicago lawyer was forced to apologize after she called sheriff's deputies those motherfuckers and used a racial slur in a live-streamed court hearing. I mean... It's pretty fucking based. <laughs> it's, 
Donna Makowski groveled before Judge Dominique Ross, who is black. Yeah. Uh oh. Can't can't believe that's a thing we're saying. That's not good. Well, now we know what the racial slur was. Uh, at a contempt of court hearing on Friday for her remarks the day earlier, telling her, quote, I'm shaken and I'm humiliated. Uh, Mikowski was not sentenced to contempt of court. As Ross argued, her public humiliation was punishment enough. I kind of like that. We don't do enough of that anymore. Yeah, just let them feel shame. Yeah. No, nobody gives people credit for their shame any longer. I just miss the good old days where we could tie you down at the market square and pelt you with bad food. Those were the days. Uh, Mikowski was not sentenced to contempt of court. Uh, oh, good Lord. We'll show you her in a second. But she can now face discipline by the Illinois Attorney Registration and Disciplinary Commission, which last year reassigned a judge and ordered him to undergo sensitivity training after he was caught on a hot mic making sexist comments at another live-streamed court hearing. You know what the problem is? You see how old this lady is? These old people don't understand live streaming, and they don't understand that mics are kind of like always on. And that we can see you. And we can see you, so... You can't pull the same shit that you pull in normal court. With the live stream, there's a live mic. You got to treat it like it's live constantly. Uh, so she, according to court documents obtained by CBS News, Mikowski could be heard in an unmuted conversation while waiting for her client to sign on to a live streamed court hearing on Thursday, saying those motherfuckers at the sheriff's office and do it all the time. Wow. Can you please show me this? I would like to hear this, please. Why can't we share this live stream? <laughs> um, hold on. I would really love to see this story. Oh, we got to see an ad first. Oh, it's an ad for like a, a charity. All right. Well, I'll watch that. Well, I mean, you know, there, there's lots of like sick kids. And stuff. I'll watch a charity commercial. I just Free CBS News app. Be a parent with balls if you have a sick right, kid. Moving on. New at 10 here. A Chicago attorney accused of swearing and using a racial slur during a virtual court proceeding. Let's go to CBS 2's Charles. None of us are waiting for the facts of this case or to be upset. We all just really want to hear. We the heard the, the word slur and we were yeah. in. We went, oh, I want to hear the lawyer say it tomorrow. Charlie, that lawyer had a hearing of her own today. And those comments were allegedly made during a Zoom call and that attorney is accused of Speak not up. being muted during that call and the judge in this case, that Cook County judge was extremely critical of what was said in court. Chicago attorney Donna Mikowski finds herself in the middle of a hot mic controversy. During a virtual court hearing this week, documents say that Mikowski, quote, remained on Zoom and engaged in an unmuted conversation. Uh -oh. Mikowski is accused of using a racial slur and profanity in court. The judge called those comments unprofessional, disrespectful, and contemptuous. Also accurate. And not only that... We're not going to play it for you. You're really going to blue ball me on this whole thing. The news has to start making up its mind. Because on one hand, they love this salacious, controversial stuff. On the other hand, they'll go, we'll report all the salacious, controversial stuff. But we don't want to show you. But we don't want to cross the line and show you. No, no, fu fuck you, you gossip merchants. You all, th this story has no news value to it whatsoever. There is no intellectual, nutritional value to this story. The story is literally, a lady said something. So unless you're going to show the video and let us hear the fucking thing she said so that she's embarrassed because that's the only reason you're doing this, then fuck off. You're being a pretender. Look, but don't touch. Yeah, exactly. I feel like uh, I'm a John Milton uh, prodigy. I do not believe that her uh, statements were contemptuous of the court. I do believe, however, they were certainly... They were certainly contemptuous of black people. Hens do it all the time. Yeah, how much you want to bet after this interview ended, he didn't realize his computer was still going. He's like, well, I got to agree. She's right about the end. Yeah. <laughs> Unprofessional. They were disrespectful. Uh, attorney shouldn't be saying those things, whether they're on Zoom or not. CBS 2 legal. Oh, he covered himself there. He's like, they shouldn't be saying those things when they're on Zoom. They should be saying it in their uh, study like I do. They shouldn't be saying those things whether they're on Zoom or not. I only utter it in my car when I know I'm alone. <laughs> Analyst Irv Miller says he expects Mikowski to face consequences. There may be certain uh, professional consequences for her with um, the agency that regulates and disciplines lawyer uh, for inappropriate activity. 
Uh, but I don't think that she should be held in contempt of court. Mikowski has been an attorney since 1984. Holy and shit. And has not faced any discipline with the state's regulatory board. That's pretty impressive. That means she's gone almost 40 years without dropping N-bombs in public. That's a long time to not say the N-word in public. Look, I know you want to hold me accountable for this, but I've been helping it all day. Yeah. I mean, I started out as a public defender. You don't think I've helped a lot of... Whoa. Guess we're not going to... Uh... I've helped so many... My apartment is called Storage. <laughs> I've helped so many... My middle name is Sharpton. <laughs> oh, man. I, I've helped so many that they show up at my house on Thanksgiving with a truck full of turkeys. <laughs> Last year, Cook County Judge William Raines was reassigned and ordered to receive sensitivity training. He's accused of making sexist and offensive comments during a live stream court hearing. Good thing they See, I'd like, I'd like to hear those too. What was the guy's name? Let's Since go back a little bit. Cook County Judge William Raines. William Raines. Let's take a break from this story for one second. Let's go look up. I want to hear what William Raines said. Uh, William Raines. No, I don't see it. I see black people. <laughs> I do see black people. Uh, William Raines. I don't see color. Lawyer comments. Lawyer upset after Cook County judge other attorneys caught on hot mic making disparaging comments. Yes! County assistant state's attorneys caught on a hot mic. Yeah, they were allegedly making disparaging remarks about a high-profile attorney who was in court thinking their microphones were off. WGN's. All right, I will fast forward. Bunjean says Cook County Judge William Raines has been presiding over the case for about 18 months. After things had wrapped up. What kind of months? fuck? It? This is a Chicago news station. What are we. Up for the day, it seems a YouTube live stream was still She's rolling, imported. And comments that were caught on a hot mic have landed some in hot water. They were. Come on. You know, like it's a closing up shop, if you will. And the judge out of nowhere. For did you see her going nuts, glasses off, fingers through her hair, the phone's galling all, all over the place? It's insane. And then the biggest problem comes when he says, uh, can you imagine waking up next to her every day? Oh <laughs> I love him. Come on. He's just having some fun. He's just saying what we're all thinking, like uh, doing the math. Donna Murkowski comments. That's Lisa Murkowski. Oh, damn it. What's this? What's the other woman's name? Isn't it Donna Murkowski? Uh, oh, Donna Mukowski. We might go. Don't worry, guys. We can salvage this yet. Look at what we'll do. to uh, Murkowski comments anything to hear her say it. Yes. Caught on tape using live slur, Weinstein, blah, blah, blah. Son of a bitch. Do you guys not save anything anymore and put it on the internet? You guys don't have balls. Come on. This is fucking heartbreaking. Uh, it's not like you called them, Nick. Yeah, exactly. I didn't say it. You guys said it. Hey, why are we timing out my buddy Consider? I like him. And why are we timing out uh, Kenneth Pogue? Come on. Kenneth's a good dude. All right, who's fucking doing this? Ladies, man, cut the shit. Leave him alone. He's the, They're both good guys. You just timed out two really good listeners of ours. I might have to uh, snag that old uh, that mod wrench. badge from you if you don't fix your, clean up your ways, as it were. Well, shoot. So, you know, to me, you know, judgment call here is the host. I um, I don't really feel like doing the story if you're not going to show me. Yeah, like, we don't have the dirt. It's That's what we showed up for. It's like the Samuel L. Jackson Django interview. Just say it. Yeah, where the, the guy's like, uh, the guy won't say the N-word. Sure. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding the usage of uh, of the N word in this movie, and, and no, of... nobody, none. The word would be. Oh, I don't want to say. I love it. you. Why not? I don't like to say it. Have you ever said it? No, sir. Try it. Bullshit. Bullshit. Every time I watch, we've watched this interview one hundred times on this show. Bullshit. Glenn Beck's nephew is right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, Sean Hannity has said that on his show before. He's like, I've never even thought the N-word. I'm oh, like, bullshit. You don't watch football? <laughs> like, how do you entertain yourself if you've never thought that word before? Dude, I'm a fan of NWA. Like, <laughs> Here's the it difference. might as well be my vocabulary. Here's the difference between like a white guy and a black guy. You ask a Sean Hannity, 
You ever thought the N-word? No, I've never even thought it. They're so terrified. You ask a black guy, you ever thought the term honky? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, like at least once a day. I say it under my breath to yeah. all you honkies. Say it all the time. Like if two white people are talking, they're like, have you ever said the N-word? And the white person's like, yeah, they go, oh, terrible. But if a black guy goes, hey, man, have you ever said the N-word? I'm like, yeah. And he'd be like, yeah, I know. I was just seeing if you'd be honest about it. <laughs> Whether you said no or yes, I knew what the answer was. Have you ever said the N-word? Have I? Thank <laughs> you for the invitation, my <laughs> You sing it. You fucking stand on top of a car and you sing the fucking... <laughs> oh. And then the guy goes, yo, man, that's actually my car. Probably not. You stole it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Now we're getting too You're like, now I went too far. Like, yo, I like honest white boys, but you, you know, you're getting a little fresh. That's all. <laughs> Yo, man, my kid's in the backseat. That's a good one. No. <laughs> Have you ever said it? No, sir. Try it. Liar. I don't like to say it. Try it. it. Really? Say how, do you know, how do you know you don't like You just said, I don't like to say it. How do you know you don't like to say it if you haven't said it? When Samuel Jackson asks you to say, you say. You shout it at him. I don't like to say it. Try it. Really? Seriously? We're, we're not going to have this conversation unless you say it. You want to move on to another question? Okay. That was like that was kind of the point of this whole movie, though. Like all the cast members, white or black, were all saying the same thing. We want to have a conversation about this word. We want to talk about it. And all the white people and the Jewish people in Hollywood just went, "No, just watch mm. the fucking movie. How about that? Just, we're not gonna have it. Just discussion. go see the movie, and we'll just be like, ooh, but they said a word, right? And meanwhile, Jamie Foxx, Samuel L. Jackson, and Quentin Tarantino are all going. Would somebody talk about how much we all said that word because it's a frightening amount of times? Don Johnson is like, I didn't try to resurrect my career by shouting the N-word at slaves just to not talk about it in interviews. Well, I mean, he wasn't trying to resurrect his career. Sometimes you just do it for the fun. That's true. You know what? You do it because you love it. Okay. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't like I don't want to say oh, it. Come on. Can, will you say it? No, fuck no. <laughs> no, fuck That's no. not the same thing. <laughs> Why do you want me to They're say gonna it? They're going to bleep it when you say it on, the, know, on your show. So say it. I, I can't say it. If I say it, we, we, this question it won't make air. Okay, forget it. Okay, I'll skip it. Sorry, guys. It was a good question. No, it wasn't. It was a great question. It wasn't a great question if you can't say the word. I wanted to ask about... He's not going to trick you and like punch you in the face. Yeah, I don't know what the deal... Like As he said, they're going to bleep it. He's right. begging for you to say it. The only way you'd not say it is at first because you're worried that, you know, Samuel L. might get offended. The minute Samuel L. tells you he's not offended, that's when you say, oh, yeah, the word is, and you just, you ask him. And especially, like, I realize we don't want to bother to take context into consideration here, but they're having a conversation. Clearly, he's not leveraging that word at him as some sort of hateful thing. Like, right. I don't like you. You Like, no, it. He just literally asked him to say a word. Right. He's like, you guys said the word a lot in this movie. I bet you even if he hadn't asked beforehand, Samuel L. would still hear him say it and go, oh, okay, yeah, that's the word that we used in the film. Okay, I'll, I'll answer the fucking question. Uh, by the way, uh, Lemmy really wants us to get to 420 likes before the show's over. And the it show's means over. the world to her. The show's over in a minute. So if you want to hit the like button, that would be really huge. Also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, that would be fun too. So hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and guys, let me know when we get all the way up to uh, 420. 420. Uh, Lemmy wants to get that. Yeah, we just broke it. For all right, we're there. Very good. Thank you guys very much. All right. And then by the time I talk to you next, hopefully YouTube has the counter situation taken care of, and I'm not losing my shit over our videos we put up. Uh, tonight, we are going to do the evening show at 6 o'clock Central Time. We're going to do it an hour early. Because we have a very, very special guest uh, that I have to record at 8 o'clock. So uh, I, I hope that uh, you guys join us for the earlier evening show. Otherwise, we have a very special mystery guest that we're going to be recording tonight and putting out tomorrow. Does Bill know uh, all the personations you've done of him? Ah, uh, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. So will Kanye. All right, guys. Thank you very much for uh, all the help, all the assistance. We loved it. And we'll be back again tonight. And then tomorrow morning, Corey and I will be live at 6 a.m. Central. Johnny, thank you very much. You're very welcome. There's a premiere on uh, my channel happening right now. If you oh, want to throw, give up, that a look. Uh, throw up the link to uh, Johnny's YouTube. channel. YouTube, yeah. YouTube.com slash We're like just eight people away from 100. Nice. Keep subscribing. Throw Triple the link digits, up there. bitches. Keep the link up there. Or throw the link up there. Keep those uh, triple digit sub dreams alive <laughs> and subscribe to Johnny's channel. Uh, we will talk to you again tonight. Johnny, thanks again. You're welcome.